Hello and welcome back to day two of COTS 13 Internationals. If you were here yesterday with us, you saw some incredible games of World of Warships. You heard some incredible commentary from some questionable characters. You had a good time. You may have even picked up some Twitch drops while you were here. Get ready for day two, everybody. This is it. This is where we find out who is king of the seas of all the seas. So, what do we have in store for you today? Well, first, let's talk about Twitch drops. Because let's be honest, it matters. For Twitch drops, what we have for you guys today, we have the last day to collect any of the COTS collection containers. This is important. You need to finish this uh, collection in this patch to get the mission in 0.10.10 for the Bane of the Sea camouflage for the North Carolina. This is a very, very sexy camouflage. Try to get your hands on it. If you haven't been able to finish the collection by Twitch drops, you can go to the armory and you can pick up up to three of those containers for 2,000 community points per each. Uh, this is the camouflage. It's beautiful. It's uh, once again, something amazing from the art department. It has uh, wonderful 3D modeled golden tentacles around the front and the back, along with various pieces of the King of the Sea uh, logos on the front and the back and skull and crossbones across it. Um, do try to get that. It will be available in a mission once 10.10 drops. Uh, for prizes, there's also things in the army, Screezy. There's also things in the armory for uh, COTS themed camouflages and commanders, which you can pick up as well. Um, but what are our teams playing for? This is extremely important. Well, before I, I go, I should mention you do need to be watching for at least 90 minutes today to pick up your uh, COTS container drop. So don't touch that dial yet. Uh, but however, our contestants are playing for something very different. They are playing for money. Money, 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 money. So let's take a look if we may real quick. We already have our fifth through eighth place winners. As of yesterday, clans KSC from uh, KSC and 07, Devastating Strike and Kill Steel. Convoy mains from the North American region have already earned themselves a cash prize of $2,500 to be distributed amongst their players. Paid from EU, PayPal enjoyers the same, and minus one S cute boys in dresses have also earned $2,500 to buy all the dresses that they want. Um, coming up today, we will find out who takes the fourth place prize of $5,000, third place prize of $7,500, second place prize of $10,000, and the first place international prize of $17,500. Who's it going to be? We're going to find out today. So here are our brackets. Today, we have four teams remaining. That's going to be Shaft from the EU region. It's going to be Vor from the Asia region. If you recall, Vor was actually our international winner in COTS 12. Ban CV TWA from the EU region. They will be going up against Smile from CIS, the Russian teams. Our first match of the day is going to be Vor versus Shaft, followed by Ban CV versus Smile. Then we're going to take a short intermission, uh, during which we have some very, very exciting information, special news, and new content available for you. Do not miss that. That will be coming up at 1040 CST in the North American region, 1540 UTC here in Europe. So um, do not miss that. We have some very, very exciting exclusive stuff that has not been mentioned yet, and I cannot wait to share it with you. So stick around and make sure you watch that. Later on this afternoon and this evening, we'll be uh, doing third place right around 11 CST, 1600 UTC, and then on to the grand finals, which is going to be a best of five. Once again, TBD versus TBD. Can't wait to see that. So, in the meantime, we have returning with us here in the Prague office in the European Union, our two analysts who joined us yesterday to talk all things World of Warships. Please welcome once again, Seraphis and Painzor. Gentlemen, hi, what's going on? Hello, I am Seraphis, you saw me yesterday. My voice seemed to have magically deteriorated from yesterday to today. And why is so that? With me. I, I wouldn't know. It just magically deteriorated. Prog. Prog happened. <laughs> <laughs> and with me is... I'm Penzo. I am an EU community contributor. I have casted King of the Sea for last King of the Seas, and I've been getting slightly, you know, more prominent, apparently, because now I'm in Prague. How did I get here? Because you brought us Googly Eyes. I, uh, I did bring Googly Eyes. And you brought hey, us a, a, a lovely concern for us. <laughs> yeah, I drew that. 
which is currently available in BTTV Awards. We have uh, added a nice little selection yes. for you guys to... Uh, what's the appropriate word? I was going to say a word I don't think we can say. <laughs> for, you, for you to uh, meme away with in, to your heart's content in Twitch chat. Lovely. Well, uh, glad to have you back with us, gentlemen. We're going to be talking to you uh, a bit more. We also have... Well, we have another special guest. We were doing interviews yesterday with some of the participants, and uh, we have actually two for you this morning. We have... Um, we have, well, it's Quagsire on the pond, but we're just going to call him Quagsire. Uh, he's a veteran of the King of the Sea tournaments. He's going to be joining us. He was also, if you recall, he was the third commentator for um, the actual live action commentary. We're going to be talking with him, as well as Vert from Clan Shaft, correct? Why don't I have Vert here? Is it because I need to select the right window for Vert? Or is it because... There he is! My apologies, folks. So, let us introduce Vert and Quagsire. We are hello, gentlemen. How are you this morning, afternoon, evening? Um, Conway's uh, voice from the off. If you unmute your microphone before speaking, uh, we can uh, hear you better. Oh dear! Oh dear! There's one every cot, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, we have Quagsire coming in. He's one of our uh, commentators. You were hearing him yesterday. He's a veteran of King of the Seas. So, Quagsire, I'm curious to know, um, you've you've actually won regional cots before. You've participated in international cots. Uh, you've been casting this time. Has you noticed anything different about this version of cots? Maybe because of the ships, maybe because of the maps, maybe because of the meta. Uh, how does this cots international so far stack up to you compared to past cots? I mean, every cuts usually plays uh, dif uh, plays out differently than the last ones, simply because they. We lost his audio again. We did. Yep. Have you hit your mute button, my friend? He has. <laughs> yeah, I did press the mute button, which is, <laughs> which is, which is very great. Uh, I thought I actually didn't. No, never mind. Okay. Yeah, um, right. every cards usually plays the, uh, out differently than the last one because of the introduction of new ships. In this case, uh, we have the Wagner and the Napoli being the most prominent ones that we basically see every game. Uh, Wagner obviously uh, brings up a lot of firepower on a very, very healthy basis. And it kind of acts like a small and replaces in a, ba uh, in a sense. Which is why it's very popular a lot uh, among the top teams. Uh, this King of the Sea. I, you know, this was a this was a, a thought uh, when the Ragnar came out. There was a whole bunch of uh, comparisons between that and the Smallland. So before we go and speak to Vert, I'm curious to know from you if Smallland obviously is not available right now because uh, for play in King of the Seas Internationals because it is not available for purchase at the moment. If the Smallland and the Ragnar were to both be in the tournament at the same time, how common do you think it would be for people to take Smallland versus Ragnar? Actually, I would actually say Ragnar would still be the most prominent pick because it brings my health to the table. The yeah. speed is basically comparable, and uh, I don't think the smaller tops are that influential usually. So I would just say Ragnar is a way more comfortable pick in that. So you're still going with Ragnar, I see. Okay, well, thank you very much for weighing in. Let's um, make sure we get on to Vert here. Vert is our player representing Shaft, which is a relatively new a uh, competitive clan coming from the EU. So, welcome to COTS Internationals. Congratulations on making the top four. Uh, how has the experience been for you and your team so far? Hello, thank you very much. Uh, the experience has been amazing. We really enjoyed our games. Most of our games went quite smoothly, maybe except the finals against Bon CV, but obviously they are probably the best team in the world, so it's not a shame losing against them. And every time we get to play against them, especially in a competitive environment, we always learn a lot. Uh, but other than finals, the games were going quite smooth and we had a really good teamwork going on. We've been working on it very hard for the last month and I'm very satisfied with the results. Well, you guys, I mean, certainly have made it to uh, the... Uh, we've certainly, sorry, you've certainly made it to the top four in the world. Uh, that's an absolutely incredible achievement, so congratulations to you. Um, was there anything you guys learned about playing against other teams internationally this time that maybe you wouldn't have picked up from just playing regionally? 
Um, I would say every single region has its own meta in a way. Uh, generally speaking, the playstyle at the very top uh, level of competitive is fairly similar, but each reg region has its own approach towards specific maps. For example, Asian regions heavily favor setups with tons of Nepalis or DD heavy setups. Um, I would also say that when I was watching uh, King of the Sea regional finals uh, and previous rounds on Asia and NA, I would also say that their playstyle, especially early stages in the game, is significantly more passive. I would say on EU, we fight much more for early positioning and uh, objective control, whereas they, to, uh, they like to take more time assessing the situation and then react to it. I feel like both playstyles have its advantages, so whenever we get to clash against each other, uh, it's always fun to see which one comes out on top. Can confirm, it is fun to see. We uh, In this studio alone, we've been having a great time watching. I'm sure everybody's having a great time watching at home. So good luck to you today and to Team Shaft. And uh, Quagsire on the pond, also of the pond, excuse me, also known as Darth Henning, also known as I take brisk on my Kremlin to the 10 line. <laughs> <laughs> Who told good luck, you to say that? <laughs> good luck on your commentary today, sir. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, uh, Seraphis, Painzar, we have uh, some fun things for our chat to do today. We would like every one of you in the chat to please take part in our player predictions, uh, from which you can earn yourself some COTS camos. So please participate in that now. It will be closing after game one is completed. There are links in the chat. Get in there, decide who's gonna win, what people are gonna be in what places. Win yourself something at home. Um, all right, gentlemen, I think, um, do we have the info for the first game yet? I believe we do have at least bands we, and map. We do, uh, let me, hello, Mr. Conway. Ladies and gentlemen, how Mr. Conway here. I am also here today, uh, once again, pushing buttons and running things in the background. Um, I'm gonna try and keep things running as smoothly as possible. I think yesterday, you know, Touchwood um, went quite well. And let's hope we can continue the, the, the theme today. I was just gonna say, before you guys talk about the upcoming matchup, I think we maybe run people through, um, you know, because we might have some new viewers around who um, don't know yet what the format is. Um, and then we've got our casters to come, and I think then we talk about game one, right? We've got a bit of time, so game one is going to start in 12 minutes. Oh, 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 yes, of course. Sorry, everybody, I got a little ahead of myself there. Um, so for those of you who don't know, we can actually talk about the format here. Um, these are going to be best of three series until the final, which will be a best of five. It is 9v9. Um, 9v9. On the following maps here, you may have up to two battleships without any restrictions on the other classes except for CVs. There are no CVs. You can have as many destroyers or as many cruisers as you'd like. Maximum of two BBs and no CVs. So um, the maps that are available to be played are going to be North, Land of Fire, Islands of Ice, the new map Hotspot, new to the rotation, Warrior's Path, Trap, and Northern Waters. Each team may ban one map of their choice. Sometimes they ban the same map, and they may also ban one ship of each type, uh, sometimes. Although I haven't seen it, they ban the same ship. So... It's, it's one ban per team, not one of each ship, one, not one of each type. Yes, excuse yes. me. Each ship, each team may ban one ship per team. Not yes. one ship of each type, not a cruiser, a destroyer, or a battleship. You are correct, Painter. Thank you. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> There are also two global bands, which I should mention. Uh, these were voted at the beginning of COTS entirely uh, from the player base as to which ships they would like to see banned. Those, unsurprisingly, were the Petro Pavlovsk and the French DD, the Kleber. So they will not be allowed in any map, and do people uh, teams do not have to actually choose to ban those. They are automatically already banned. So um, we have, of course, three fantastic commentators. We just spoke with one. We're going to speak with the other two here who... Uh, have been faithfully explaining everything there is to know about these matches as they happen. Please welcome back to me, Sea Raptor, and Statsbloke. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Good morning. He's Good not morning. muted again. <laughs> what a mute. No, everybody's everybody's unmuted this time. It's amazing. Oh damn! I forgot to mute. Oh, <laughs> oh dang it! I knew I forgot something. You're both fired. No, I can. <laughs> okay. So, uh, gentlemen, you obviously got to walk us through every single game that happened yesterday. You made it wonderful for us. Uh, thank you for doing that. We're looking forward to listening to you again. So, um, as as for the matches yesterday, 
What was there anything? Let's start with Sea Raptor, perhaps. Sea Raptor, what was some of the most exciting stuff you got to see yesterday? Maybe great plays or trends that you saw across matches coming from different regions. Anything that stood out to you? Um, I think for me, I, I definitely definitely really enjoyed the um, uh, the Asia teams, right? Like, uh, and I talked about this in the yesterday's stream. We saw them bringing in Napoli. Um, which is a ship that maybe some of the other the other regions haven't quite like latched onto yet, and um, and so I was really excited to see them use that ship. Uh, they had a great time with it. They had a lot of success with it. Uh, it it felt to me like the Asia strategies that we saw um, maybe played a little more aggressive, uh, and that some of the teams maybe struggled a bit with that. Not obviously, obviously not everyone because only Vor has survived to make it to the top four. But I know that, that's right, you're saying. But. Um, <laughs> but uh, we are we are where we are, right? And uh, and so I had a good time watching that yesterday. I'm excited to see what else uh, what else Vor has going on. So yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to that today. And then of course uh, we've got two EU teams in the top four. We we got three of the four regional champions have made it this far. And um, I don't know. I just I'm, I'm excited for the whole thing. It's going to be a good time. Oh, well, don't worry about the screen flicker. You are still our favorite animal of land and sea. Thank you, Sea Raptor. <laughs> We're looking forward to listening to your commentary during the matches. And uh, Stats Bloke, same question to you. Uh, has there been anything interesting or exciting for you as a caster uh, that you've noticed this term? New ships, for example? Um, yeah, so the, uh, Sea Raptor just said Asia um, bringing a lot of Napolis, which is something that we haven't seen a huge amount of on, on the other regions, particularly on EU. Um, and then... Also, yesterday we saw a couple of Khabarovsks, which was kind of interesting. I don't, I still don't think we quite understand why, but um, it would be interesting to see if we see any more of those today. Um, the other thing that was that stuck out from yesterday was all the matches went 2-0. Yes. There weren't any, um, yeah. It was, and so the teams that won were quite dominant. And so today, with the, the skill pool coming even closer together... Hopefully we'll get some close matches. Um, a few, there were a few moments yesterday where um, you know it could have been either way, and particularly that that fantastic Ban CV match at the end of yesterday was um, Ban CV versus O7. Right. Literally nine hundred ninety eight points. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That that was one of my favorite casting moments ever. I think with with the flick flack back and forth, it's fantastic. So hopefully we'll see that, and um, I believe we have a best of five final. Yes. Um, so that's going to be great. Um, that they have. A good potential for some uh, for some drama. So, yeah, best of five. Looking we were to. we were even saying here in the studio that we just we thought, man, we would like to see some of these teams just play more games because they're so interesting to watch and it's so entertaining and so much fun. So, um, glad we do get one of those here at the end. Thank you, Stats Bloke. Looking forward to listening to your commentary as well. Um, I think it might be time to take it back to our analysts to prepare for the first match. Is that correct? Great. That, that confused look says yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you in a little bit. Hello. Seraphis and Painzor. Hello. Yeah. Welcome back. We haven't so been, we've been back. on screen the whole time. It's great. We haven't done anything. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's true. Uh, well, very good. Um, so, I'm sorry. Have I jumped the gun? Are we... Are we able to go ahead and start talking about this? Oh, yeah. We have, yes. six, months. We have six minutes. Brilliant. Go ahead. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Our first match of the day, ladies and gentlemen, from EU Shaft versus the former COTS 12 champions from the SEA server, Panzervor. Coming up already banned from Team Shaft is Warrior's Path banned from Vor Islands of Ice. I don't believe that we have seen even a single match played on Islands of Ice in internationals today. We have um, not. It's been, I think this is the first tournament we've had this version of Islands of Ice in, and uh, I think teams just don't have a solid strategy for it because the, there's there's a lot of cover, but there's a lot of, not a lot of way to push through that cover. So teams just don't really feel comfortable on that map, I think, is what's going on there. A lot of potential for cross-mapping uh, cross mapping from battleships as well. Makes it very dangerous. And it seems that the Twitch chat predictions is 76% uh, in favor of, of Panzer Vor, mm -hmm. with uh, 5.2 million channel points on Vor and 1.6 million for Shaft. I believe that is a new record. 6.8 million channel points. 6.8 million channel points put up as a prediction, 76% in favor 
of Panzer IV. Obviously a heavy favorite as they did win Class International last time. We'll see how they do against newcomers. Shaft. I think we need to get the EU teams on that hopium hype. Would you like we, we, we have to have hope. We believe in EU, isn't that right, Seraphim? Hopium. Yes, hopium. <laughs> Panzer falls asleep too and wakes up to a steady draught of Hopium. Mm -hmm. So, uh, gentlemen, let's talk about. Uh, we, we, we briefly mentioned there, but didn't quite get to chat about the two bands for the ships are the Marceau and the Ragnar, two mobile, hard hitting, nearly cruiser like destroyers that might slow down the gameplay a little bit. Um, but our first match is going to be on Hotspot, followed by Land of Fire and North Surface. What do you make of these ship bands? And then, especially on a map like Hotspot. So, I think Shaft has shown that they're very comfortable in aggressive banning rather than defensive banning. They like to ban out ships that the enemy uses rather than ships that could potentially counter their strategies. So I think that the Marsal ban against Vor is definitely uh, expected from them. And I love, I love to see a hotspot pick. I think games on hotspot are great to watch and uh, this will be no exception. Pinzor, what do you think? Uh, yeah, like you were saying, the Marsal ban definitely targeted at Vore because we saw last King of the Sea during the internationals, there were roaming bands of angry French destroyers that were just rolling all over the map. Now with the global ban of Colbert and now with Marsal being taken out of the picture, along with the Ragnar being taken out of the picture, we're probably going to be seeing a much more classic style of gameplay without the angry destroyer death squads, unless somebody has a secret strategy that they've not pulled out yet. The angry swarms of French DDs. Yeah. So, gentlemen, uh, we still have a few moments here. Uh, we talked about something that I found very interesting. I hope the folks at home found it very interesting too, which was sort of the trifecta of destroyers that sort of form a, a triangle of countering one another. Now, they're not hard counters, of course, but um, the three major destroyers that we, we've been seeing this tournament have been the Ragnar, the new destroyer that was released prior to this uh, COTS, the Marceau, a tried and true French destroyer that was not banned globally like the Colbert was, and... Um, Haragumo. Was it Haragumo? Yes, yes okay. it was Haragumo. Haragumo. So each one of these has something about it that allows it to work very, very well against one of the, at least one of the other destroyers. Um, Seraphis, perhaps we'd like to go back over this and, and catch yeah. everybody up so, who uh, maybe wasn't here for all of yesterday. So Haragumo does pretty well against Ragnar as it's very big, not too fast. And it does, of course, have the 30 millimeter pen, which means it can pen the armor of the Ragnar. Then the Ragnar with its good shell speed and um accurate guns can hit the marsal a lot better and marsal guns can't really penetrate the armor right so ragnar counters uh, marsal a bit and then marsal again uh counters hargumo a bit because the shell speed of the hargumo can't catch the fast dd that is marsal so you have this triangle and then daring comes along he's like i'll just do everything so he's like well yeah you know, something we saw yesterday was we saw several very daring, daring pilots, uh, captains, actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marceau's and Ragnar's at some points because these are really, really skilled players and they know that the daring has advanced penetration angles and short fuses for its AP shells and can just slap, slap, slap big, big hits into these destroyers that normally will out-DPM it. We actually saw several times in several games where those daring uh, captains got caught and were eventually killed, but made a really, really good account of themselves before they went down. Yeah, that AP does a lot of damage and it actually inflates the DPM of the Daring insanely because all of it pens. Right. And of course, those those uh, gunboats like the Marceau or the Ragnar, they want to be keeping themselves relatively broadside to keep as many of their guns on target as possible, which allows the advanced penetration angles of those Darings to, to, to find purchase and to bite into that armor. So, um, Hotspot, before we begin, Panzer, do you have any predictions of how this might go? Because we've seen uh, the successful teams attempt to, I would say the successful teams, attempt to push maybe around the uh, west side of the map, but not completely ignore the 9-10 line. Well, we saw EU teams play very heavily on the 9-10 line, so I'm expecting Sharp to send a few ships there. Vaux and the other Asian teams tend to migrate away and move out the 1-2 line towards the ENB caps, so I'm expecting a hard, unstopped, like an uncontested push to get around the decap for the shaft team, uh, because th that's just how the two regions have played against each other. So that's my initial prediction for this game. Mm -hmm. Seraphis, do you think with uh, the with the banning of these two very mobile destroyers, do you think we're still going to see people make plays for C, maybe with Darings or with Gearings, or do you think it's going to be sort of like a no man's land? No, I definitely think we'll see, be seeing a lot of Daring to contest C. Um, possibly with some Hargumo smoking mm. Des Moines or something like that into the cap. 
Absolutely. Well, Hotspot is, of course, kind of the wild card for the map pool uh, during King of the Sea 13 here, as this is its first entrance. It has sort of an unusual layup, and it has that Thunderdome around the decap, which causes a lot of people to maybe overcommit or overinvest resources into it and maybe not put them somewhere else. We have seen people make good use of the 910 line and also get stuck on the 1 2 line. Quick so, predictions? Quick predictions. Shaft. Vor. Opium. 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 <laughs> Let's take it to C Raptor and Stats Bloke. Take it away, fellas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome, welcome to the final day of King of the Sea 13 here as we start the top of the international bracket down to four teams remaining. The first match of the day will be this one. This is Vor, the Asia champion versus Shaft, the EU number two team. Spawning here into hot spot in the green, we have Vor bringing Ohio, Kremlin, Haoliu, Napoli, Double Moskva, Daring Shimakaze, and the first Vampire Deuce that I believe we have seen in this level of the event. Stats Bloke, what is Shaft up to down here at the south end of the map? On the south end, Shaft have double Ohio and Napoli, Moskva, double Nevsky, double Gearing, and a Daring. I think that might be the first. Did we see? Oh, no, we saw, we saw quite a few Daring. Oh, no, yeah, we see quite but a the, few Daring yesterday. But the, the Vampire 2, that's, that's new. Um, maybe we could talk to Henning a bit about um, why you might bring a Vampire 2. I does serve the same purpose as Zed if you want to use it as like a high wood ED in a cap. It just has more damage output with its, gu with its guns. Uh, I'm not oh, sure. I, like, it, I it looks like they're sending over to the 10 line. The, yeah, the 10 line looks is like this kind yeah. of odd. I mean, you can use the, hmm. your crawling smoke in combination with the cruiser, obviously. The problem is you kind of have to stay close to the cruiser in that, in that case, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, which cruise is it going to be? It's going to be the Howden Leo. It's going to be the, 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 the Howden Leo. Yeah, it's, that's absolutely who it's going to be. The, the Mosque of the Dark Temple is already positioning himself kind of a little too far back. Looks like he's going to play behind that if that is indeed what their plan is. I wonder what the target of the, uh, of the Dutch cruiser is here. Like, do they expect the like Russian raider on the F9 position on that island? Or do they just want to ask like the BD and the cat? Could no. be both. Now that, they're now expecting that you look a nosing cruiser at, um, you know, like in G9, right up against the island, perhaps, then that makes sense. But I, that's not a common position to play in this tournament. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that what that's aimed at, but we'll see how they use it. Um, they've got the Mosfar radar there as well um, to try and catch that gearing, as it turns out. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, Shima and Daring just about to both enter the D cap. Um, Shima from the north for Vor. Uh, stress possum in the daring from the south for shaft. Uh, the we were we were the making the assumption. I was say we were making the assumption that the vampire was going to be with the Howden Liu, but he kind of kept going west. He looks like he's going to pair up with the Moskva, and Aruha's uh, uh, Dutch cruiser is going to kind of maybe play behind the two of them. That's going to be really interesting to watch unfold. They're lighting, lighting up to actually get further forward with the quarling smoke here. That's yeah. what they're doing right now. So the gearing in the middle, Flow for Shaft, has uh, laid that smokescreen for Kamikaze's Nevsky, uh, just underneath the cap. Pretty standard strategy. We've seen this used by multiple teams over the tournament. Um, we've also got the Mosfar Napoli Ohio group of Shaft moving towards B, which is pretty much mirroring the daring Napoli Ohio uh, up in the north for Vor, but of course Vor have the extra Moskva up there as well. Well, and this is exactly how we watched Shaft start this map off yesterday, right? They brought the they brought the gearing, the Nevsky into C, and you can see just from their deployment, Vor wants they're they're basically going to just see the middle of the map of these guys. They want nothing to do with it. They're going to hold down the D cap for the moment with the Shima, allow them to pick up C while both teams grab their quote unquote home caps way over on the three line. The thing that's interesting on this map is once you've reached your home cap, so A and B. Do you then just turn those in and face the center and try and support your team at Charlie in the middle? Or do you carry on and do some kind of flanking maneuver around the 1-2 line, try and get some spotting, maybe try and get some torps across to the uh, the stationary ships that are around the home cap? Um, and it looks at the moment like Shaft are opting for the, the first option, although the Napoli is actually heading over to the side, uh, which is mirroring the Vor Napoli. So we might see a bit of Napoli versus Napoli action in a, in a couple of minutes. 
So we're watching this um, this smoke smoke push uh, from Vor down the ten line start to materialize, and they're keeping the the Houdinlu in the smoke of the vampire, but the Moskva is trailing behind. And I, what I love about this is that you know there's nothing over there. The, sp the like the ships that would have line of sight on the Moskva, they don't. He's not in the smoke cloud, but the line of sight is still broken just because of how close he's maneuvering with that unit. And they are going to succeed in pushing this gearing Nevsky pair back a bit. The Nevsky had started to farm Yanyaya's Kremlin, but uh, they have opted to just pull out. Vor's going to fall behind on points significantly at the start here. They can't really contest D as long as there's two Raider cruisers around. They're not going to get D anytime soon, and the home, king, uh, home cap push will still take some time. So they will have yeah, to make that up at some point. They can block the points on D quite happily, but they are ticking, you know, only one cap. So, yes, you're quite right. They will go um, go behind. I'm wondering how far south this Vampire 2 smoke is going to go. They've actually got, gone so far south, they've almost reached the uh, the gearing smoke of Exodus Blaze uh, down underneath that island there. Um, okay, so both the cruisers have just been spotted. I think that was... Yeah, the, the thing is, because this is a you creeping know smoke, it's quite difficult to That's keep exactly. Behind. That's exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna move down here and 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 try to steal oh, what, what's left what's left of this gearing smoke. You almost get the impression, look, because we watched Shaft do this yesterday. You almost get the impression that this this kind of strat might have actually been sort of tailor made to counter this kind of thing. Maybe not maybe not Shaft specifically, but seeing teams that did this with the the smoke on the edge of the map. Moscow radar now catching out watch. Exodus. Yes, indeed. Uh, and the Mosfer is going to have to be very careful because obviously it has quite a large smoke bloom and so it is spotted firing. Um, and Vampire's smoke is not going to last forever, so eventually the Howden Liu will be spotted as well. Torps in, is that going to be any hits? I think. Howden Liu's Looks okay. Looks like the Moss was going to take one in the stern, yeah. I'm a little surprised at that. I was expecting the Vampire to have his Hydro up to pick those up, but he didn't. I think he did, but uh, the Mosfer doesn't have any room to maneuver really oh big hit from the ohio there right through the moscow superstructure falling in through the deck they are really going after dark temple in this position yeah and if oh they lose big sense from the temple, other side yeah. of the map 30 29 temple, kilometers uh, Woo. rashia's in trouble if they yeah. if they lose dark temple i mean where do you go from there you can't make a turn and go and head north because you're just going to stay no. spotted you have to use they're going to lose temple already. i mean temple's already going out yeah, that's a bad start for Vor there. They're going to um, lose some power. I mean, this was their strat, right? This was their power Feels play like on the 910 line. Um, I, I just hope they can make something happen on the other side. They do have the beginnings of a push. Uh, you've got Ohio Mosfar Daring um, over on the 3 line, just beginning a move there. You've got Naomi and Diva heading south, although Naomi is turning in towards the center. I thought Naomi might go with the Mosfar, but no. Eight minutes so gone. This... Shaft shaft out to like a 200-point lead and growing pretty quick because of that huge cap advantage they have right now. Vor pushed off all the caps, although Renegade is about to get back in and at least block the D points. But B and C are not going anywhere for a little while longer. Um, Vor are extracting the Howden Liu. Um, Aruha has turned around, has made a, quite a dangerous turn successfully. The Ohio did not get a shot. I'm trying to do that on the reload. Um, Stress Possum's Daring push some uh, torps across to cover that retreat or try to catch Yanaya's Kremlin, but um, nothing happening there. Prize that as, as many ships as they have up next to this decap, that their strat, their plan doesn't include an option to get in there and and, and maybe do something about about the, the control of the decap, right? The ship is in there blocking the points, but man, it feels like they could have had the opportunity to get in there and maybe push him out. I wonder whether the the two cruiser and vampire push, whether that would have opened up the door for the Kremlin to turn in. I wonder whether the plan was to turn Yanaya into the cap, um, using those other three ships as uh, as the the push to push shaft away. But of course, that's now not an option because that's failed. No. Mm. Oh, Nebieski just took a big hit. That daring trying to get in here. We've seen pushes down here fail as well, so um, yes. that Mosfa yeah. is going to be sitting with a whole bunch of ships. Uh, it's not so bad as we've seen before. You've got the, the Napoli's there, 
Chameleon could maybe turn to do something, um, but Diva is going to be um, going to be threatening their home cap. Uh, here we see the the daring just getting that smack there. I don't know if Bo really has the pressure here to go for the home cap push though. They're like no. three ships worth of worth no. three. And Shaft I, has I, way more firepower here. Yeah, it, it feels like Shaft has, has organized their ships around this cap very specifically and Watch very well Naomi. to hold on to it. Watch Naomi turning across those torps that Naomi does not know is coming yet. Ohio in the center of the map. Gonna take two About of these to right take the some torpedoes. One, two. That will like, not help matters for Vor because they needed that Ohio being healthy in the middle for a bit of control. Yanaya also setting two tops here. In this oh, yeah, Yanaya yeah, is getting low there. Okay, so they're using Classic's Vampire to try and sneak him into the decap there. As he's gone dark, he is. He is oh no, the second fire tops. I was gonna say the single fire torps going in now, and he's gonna take at least one more of those on the bow. That's but a doesn't stick. That. No, it does stick a flood. No, he put it out. He must have, he must have avoided the flood from the first. He's sticking. He's sticking. Oh no, it is. There it is. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Now Kremlin does have They've fast got a... cooldown DCP, so you might be able to get to a DCP. He is healing. They caught a glimpse of him there as he got around the corner. So both Exodus and um, Zil's Nevsky are getting some shells in. They are going to finally succeed in pushing stressed out of the decap. Yeah, Possum hanging on for as long as possible before exiting the cap there. Uh, it's not too much of a problem if a daring takes a little bit of damage. It does uh, have the ability to get some of that back. But um, yeah, Possum being forced to leave. So Vor finally getting a second cap, but they are down 300 points. So they're... With, with even caps, they're going to have to do something, and that something might be the daring over on the B cap. Uh, it's just reversing into V, trying to block the points. Well, it's going to invite the radar from uh, from Kimmy over here. I'm sure they'll they'll pop that just so they can get eyes on him. But then again, it looks like at the moment, he's declined to go in. He turned around and, and bailed out of there. Might lose that family, though. I don't think he's safe. He's still spotted. Oh, no, he's not safe. He, they're going to they're gonna lose him because... Uh, stress has continued. They're, they've got eyes on him. As long as they've got eyes on him, Shaft's going to keep throwing shells in there. Yeah, the Ohio in the middle for Shaft is currently turning turrets towards Yanaya. Rear turrets have just come around. There's the shot. Now, Possum is losing a gunfight to this vampire, though, pretty badly. In fact, a couple more shells. There he goes. So, Vor claims back a kill. Points they badly needed. Still upside down over 200 points here. Seven and a half minutes to play. And Yanyai is dark out again. From Zando. Front turret's out from Zando onto the Kremlin. Yanyai gets to a heal. So it's going to be even harder now to get Yanyai out of that cap. Um, I thought they might be able to convert that kill, but nope, not so far. They're focusing the Napoli now, it looks like. Way down south on the bottom of the map on the J-line, trying to get him off the board. Radar out from Kamikaze's Nevsky um, by the B-cap forces Nibieski off the cap. Half might also use, uh, lose their Napoli on the J line now. It's about so, 6k. So not only did they bring the Vampire into the cap and pick up D, they've rotated Renegade over to the middle. He's capping C, and it looks as if Vibieski's Daring is going to finally get back onto B. In a moment, Vor going to be stepping, standing on all the caps, having pushed Shaft back all the way, well, all the way to the J line, literally, as Chat Band's Napoli still running for his life down here. Now, Vor have caught up. Um, they're now only 200 points behind. And that is going to uh, evaporate quite quickly as they step on all of the caps here. Yep. Uh, especially if they can get Chatban's Napoli down, because that's going to swing the points a little bit as well. Of course, every Kimmy's ship radar, that goes down. Kimmy's Moscow radar is up. That's got both Renegade and Nibieski spotted. So Shaft can well see what's about to happen to them. The question is, can they prevent it? Asphodelius is Napoli down here on the eye line. Does finally, well, they do, uh, he didn't get the kill, but they finally do kill Chapman. And Asphodelius turning into these torpedoes. He didn't know we're coming, and it doesn't matter anyway. The Ohio seals that deal, so we trade those kills down here on the bottom of the map. So that's two ships down a piece. The health pools are looking slightly different. Um, Shaft have more health on the board. Vor starting to run out of hit points on quite a few of their ships here. So we'll see if they can maintain this map control with that lack of hit points. 
Uh, oh, it looks like on the nine line we've got a, a bit of a, a counter push going on. So to try to get the Kremlin out of the D cap, uh, Vert is pushing up. We talked to Vert earlier. Um, Vert's going to try and get guns around onto Yanaya. Let's see if, as Yanaya starts to turn, let's see if this volley can come to anything. There are torps out from Classic Noun as well. That is Vor knows like, this yeah. is coming. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yanaya knew that was coming. Big hits there and all the torpedoes coming in. It's only going to take one. Mm. Vert is not going to survive this little play right there. Wow. Uh, did I... you notice Vert actually had HE loaded there? I'm not sure about this play. That was weird. And so um... now with five minutes to play, we've had a lead change. Vor in the lead now, 50 points, 60 points, and growing because they own so many caps now. Okay, we've got Moskva of Kimilil over on the 3-4 line uh, being slightly surrounded here by Shima Ohio Moskva. There's the Daring over still on the 2 line, um, but Shaft are beginning I, to reclaim the home cap. I really feel like that 9 line push was 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 Shaft's play, and, and having denied it, Vor basically owns things now. They can give up B, right? They don't need B anymore. They've got a lead. They've got a lead on both points and ships. So, you know, earlier we were talking about how Vor was going to bust back into the middle of the map. Now Shaft is in the position where they really can't. There's too many ships. They can't They can't get onto A. Shaft can't get onto A. They really can't get onto T. They sure as heck can't get onto D. You're upside down. Vor has a lot of low HP maps. ships. That's the problem. They can lose a lot of they, ships really fast. Yeah. I agree. Yan Yanaya looks like he's probably going to go out eventually. They've got plenty of time to secure that kill. When yeah. that happens, that's going to allow them to push back into D. They have problems spotting him, though. Yeah, he can't see him. He's dark right now. Yeah, Zando's just fire. taking a blind shot. They, that's they a got blind him on shot, fire. so the is terrible. They uh, might actually kill him. The fire might actually kill him. They're still throwing shells in there. They know where he is. He's, they just yep, can't Yanaya see him. is burning. He's going out. He would have put it out already if he could put it out. One last Final salvo, and there he goes. That should uh, that's allow Shaft back into Zil. D. Yeah, Zil yep. of, uh, Zil's pushed around in the Nevsky. That's going to threaten uh, the Vampire too, but the Howden Lee was still there. AP out from Rashia. Nothing much on Zil from Rashia. Mm, the daring goes down, gets chased down way over on the one line. That's another big kill for, for, for Shaft. They are still back in the game. So They've Shaft have 800. Oh, did you notice the points there are exactly equal? Yes. So um, yeah. it's tick, 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 tick. Yeah, 828 each. Two caps. Uh, well, in a second, it's going to be two caps. Um, if the vampire goes down, which I suspect is going to uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough. He can he can use that crawling smoke to maneuver a bit oh. and they're going to they're going to get Zill. Zill's going to go out here as soon as the Nessie's guns reload. I think Sorry, the, 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 is the, the, the gearing I think Exodus in the gearing will be able to there. chase down Classic Noun's Vampire 2 and finish the job. They're running, out time, though. they're running out of time and there's islands here that Classic can use to block that LOS. There's they're still taking out three caps under 2 minutes to play. I think that I think that Shaft got pushed so far back onto the the H and I line, they're not going to have time to get back on on, the, on these caps. Shaft's next play is to try to kill uh, Best Naomi's Ohio in the middle. You've got Kimilil's uh, Moskva and Zando's Ohio pushing up. Naomi just nosing in, not wanting to take a ram. Nine hundred and forty points on the board for four here. This is a critical moment for Shaft. Yeah, absolutely. This, 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 I was saying, oh my goodness, there it is, 988. They've got to get a kill well, now, and they aren't going to get it. It's too late. Nope, even no if they the ram, ram and trade ships, I mean, even if you have the ram, it's not enough. Wow. What a comeback. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a disastrous start for Vor, but they actually managed to um, to recover from that initial bad push, and um, and Shaft just couldn't hang on to to the possession that they had. I am I honestly love, passive. Shaft I, had all I the love, in the world. Yeah, I I love the initial push, and I loved how they basically when it failed, 
they were like, nope, let's just, it's, they, they, like you called it stats, they took the time, they extracted the, the Haud Leo out of there, and, and he was very useful later in the match between his bombs, his shells, his ability to pick up that kill, secure the kill on the Nevsky. Like, they didn't just throw that ship away when the push failed. And then, of course, the Vampire was instrumental in picking up D. Um, just a really well-executed kind of recovery there. Super fun to watch. Okay, with that, let's pass back over to the analysts in Prague, and they can talk you through what just happened. A very, very exciting game one on day two of COTS 13 Internationals. It all comes down to a Kremlin and a daring Seraphis Painzor. Vor threw a ship away. Shaft absolutely took advantage. They, they got rid of that ship. They nearly got rid of a Kremlin, and it just didn't happen. And then things started spiraling out of control. What happened, Painzor? <laughs> Right, so let's just start with the start of that match, right? We're going to talk about that, like, that 10-line push. I was a bit confused about what their plan was with this Moskva and Golden Lion inside Vor, that plan, Vampire right? 2 smokescreen. It was a, wait, it was a Vampire 2, and it was Vampire 2, the Golden Lion, and the Moskva in the smokescreen going down the 10-line. Yes. I'm not sure what the destination was, because there, there was a really interesting smoke train, the Vampire 2 blocks the concealment for them both, you get it all the way down to that island, but what do you do when you get there? That's what I was mostly confused about by this game. I thought what they were going to do was they were going to put the Golden Lion outside of the north of the Deca. So you put it ne next to that island, and then you have airstrike range over the entire cap. You can, you know, just harass destroyers out of there. Like the Shimakazi that was blocking the cap for a while against the Daring, like they could have just airstrike the island where the Daring was parked. Sure, you're not going to hit every bomb, but you're going to chip them down a bit. That's damage that he's not... Well, he's going to heal some of it, but it's going to be... A fair bit of damage to take him down. Apparently, we have the replay ready. Yes, so. we, yes we do have the replay. So, yeah, Sarah, why don't you, uh, why don't you guide us through this replay here? I have to find so it myself one moment. Um, Sarah, did yes. you mute your microphone? No. I think it may have died. Ah, technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I think it died. Well, Sarah doesn't have a microphone, so we're just going to talk without him. <laughs> you go replace your batteries, Jonathan. <laughs> we get more batteries. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, so, you know, Painzer and I have at least one brain between the two of us, so let's... let's... That's debatable. Well, we can put it to the test right now. Okay. Yeah. So, coming into this match, what Painzer was mentioning a second ago, we have over here... On the uh, east side, we have a Moskva, we have a Gudenliuv, we have, excuse me, a Haldenliuv, and a Vampire 2 coming down the 10 line for Vor, backed up by a Kremlin. This is a lot of firepower, but they fail to capitalize on the fact that they don't really have anywhere to go, as Painzor was mentioning. So, Moskva dies. Now, suddenly, we're looking at three caps for Shaft. One ship down for Vor. This is a very, very strong lead for Shaft. They're already 200 points up. It is eight minutes into the match, and here we go. However, look at Vor. There's still one ship down. Vor begins to create a perfect, a perfect line across the map like this. And they continue to push that. They push the Moskva up into a strong position right down here that says nothing can come help this Napoli. And as we can see, this Napoli just gets worn down by their Napoli. Now, Vor does end up taking D. Vor is on their way to be able to take C here in just a moment as the Shimakaze moves over. And now again, 400 points up, excuse me, 300 points up. Wait, what? 250 points up for Shaft. I can read. And don't, yet, don't try to do math on stream. And yet, look at, look at the positioning here. Watch this. It just becomes a completely Vor game. We are now sitting on four Vor caps for Vor. Sarah, is your mic working yet? Yes, it, it, I think Glorious. it works now. Glorious. So if we go back a little bit in the replay, if it works Bye for me, me. Yes, there we go. You're in control. I think the Kremlin right here from Vor not dying is absolutely instrumental in mm. Vor winning this game. Or rather, yes. Shaft losing it. As if they would have gotten this Kremlin, not only would they have been up a ship even more, this Daring here wouldn't have died. And later on, we can see that this Ohio also wouldn't have died. Oh, well, maybe he wouldn't have died. He would have died, but we, he would have taken the vampire with him. Yeah. I don't think the, the um, vampire has the alpha strike because it only has the one set of torpedoes. Exactly. So I think he would have rushed around, maybe died from like a flooding or whatever, or maybe he does die, but at least he takes the vampire with him. Or even if the Kremlin had been dead, the Nevsky could have gone in by himself and taken any vampire two apart. 
exactly. within seconds. That was the key thing is the Kremlin didn't die. So this enormous alpha threat from the Kremlin is there, was there, was used, white, wasted the Ohio. They ended up losing two ships for it and also not being able to take back the cap right. for a very long time. And the punch just ticked. And then obviously later on we see here there was that this fell apart potential. as well. Like, we have this comeback potential here, and then if we got the drive-by, we could have got a little bit more time. If we yes. got the ram off, we could have got into the B cap. Oh, sorry, the C cap. I'm not used to the poor cap layout. Uh, we were in D. We could have, like, there was definitely some comeback ability. But then the drive-by happened, and it didn't go very well, so that just didn't happen. Unfortunately, at the end there, that Moskva from Chef was not able to take the ram on the Ohio from 4. Got drove-by? Drive-by? Drive-by? Driven-by? Driven-by? <laughs> was summarily uh, slapped across the broadside there and was wasted to secure the win for Vor, who is now up 1-0 in this best of three series and our first matchup of the day. So let's go ahead and talk about number two. Uh, this is going to be on Land of Fire. This is a map that we uh, watched Vor absolutely take apart. F -F -F it's not FML. That's what I'm just thinking right now. F FPM. FPM, who is, is now minus one S. I have a potato. Um, it's this this potatoes, map, yeah. obviously, a very something that um, Panzer Vor is very comfortable on. We've seen them play extraordinarily well, especially with mobile units on this map. They are, however, not able to bring Marceau or Ragnar, so we may see if that works against them. Um, gentlemen, maybe Sarah, could you give us a, an idea here of how you think, without the advent of, um, uh, sorry, without the addition of Marceau, how do you think Vor is going to play this map? Are they going to play a little more cautiously, or...? But I actually you... think we might see something special from Shaft here, which might be a Minotaur. I think they hmm. are South Spawn. I will quickly check. Well, I know that it yeah. was both so, take this map. So. And Shaft is actually on the South Spawn, which is very advantageous. You can use the island under the B cap very well for a Minotaur. And I think it will be very crucial in Shaft possibly gaining control over the B cap over the entire middle of the map. Painzor. Shaft will obviously needs a win here to make sure they don't get knocked out to see uh, to see if they can go and face either Ban CV or Smile for the finals. If you're down one, if you're down one game already, you're up against Vor, former international champions. Well, you've already lost your picked map, so now you're playing on Vor's map. But this Land of Fire is very much considered to be widely South Spawn favored because of the positioning south of the A cap and also the accessibility to the the, the B island. Actually, wait, no, the B island for North Horn is better, isn't it? No, 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 definitely for South Spawn. Okay, that's what I meant. I'm smart. I, I'm definitely supposed to be. Again, here. between the two of us. <laughs> one full brain. One working brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's obviously going to be very interesting to see here if Shaft decides to take a an aggressive, uh, hard strategy push here because I feel like they were sort of handed... They were handed a huge favor by Vor at the beginning of the last game. So, predictions, gentlemen. Painzor. You are coming back. Hope you hope you hope you hope you hope you hope Let's take it to Stats Block and see Raptor. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone, to game two of this series between Vor and Shaft as we spawn into Land of Fire. Let's have a look at lineups here in the north in the green. Vor bringing Ohio, Kremlin, Des Moines. How new? Uh, double Moskva and triple daring. Ordinarily, you like to see, well, I don't say you like to see, but most teams opt for a little more variety in their destroyer lineups. Uh, Vor basically eschewing that and saying, nope, we like daring on this map. Let's just triple up. Stats, what's Shaft up to down here? Shaft have a double Kremlin, slightly unusual, um, with a Napoli, three Moskvas, two Darings, and a Harugamo. And both of the Kremlins are going the same direction. I don't think they're going to both go right over to the side. I think uh, Vert's Kremlin is going to be more mid, but they are making you know more battleship presence over on the AB side. Quick look um, over kind of some of that initial deployments like you like to to like to bring up there you can see that that double battleship moving over to the eastern half of the map who is that that's uh Pepega is kind of like you said taking a more of a southerly line along the h line headed all that way but you know with with triple destroyer you almost expect vor to maybe try to contest each cap but even now it looks like they're sending two darings to the center 
Yeah, and Shaft are going uh, more heavy over towards C, so they might actually have a pretty easy ride over on this C cap. Um, the Haru, which normally you wouldn't expect to be capping, might actually end up capping, although maybe one of the Vore Darings will rotate over towards C if they can get B easily. Um, maybe. We'll see how that goes. Um, Henning, can we ask you a quick question? So, double Kremlin versus maybe like Kremlin Ohio or something like that, why would you bring two Kremlins? That usually means they're going very aggressive. Uh, you want to put this, these Kremlins into like a very, very forward positioning. I'm actually wondering if they bring the Kremlin to the F3, uh, F4 island position there. Well Last, uh, or two weekends ago, we saw in, I think it was in the EU finals, we saw one of the teams, I forget who it was, they tried to smoke a Kremlin up to this island. Do you remember? It was a very, very odd play. Um, and we're seeing that here, but without the smokescreen. Um, you don't need so a smokescreen being done. to get there. No, Kremlin. exactly. Um, yeah. He's getting single fired though. Yeah, that's the problem. But I think Vert will expect that, because if you're going to do this in the, in the open, and you know there's a destroyer there, um, it's Will to be expected, really. That Well, that's the question. I mean, it is a cross torp. There are torps coming from the other daring as well. Oh no, Nibieski in the middle of the board doesn't have his Hydro up. He's about to discover that is a real problem. Oh. Oh, oh. that is... That's bad. Um, that's very bad for Like, like that wow. Stops, that's though. catastrophic. Now, Vert is taking a whole lot of torpedoes, though. Wow. It's gonna be like... Six. Uh, there's yeah, also a gun going on between more. Flow and Classic Noun are duking out. Classic Noun down to 7k and healing. Vert losing two thirds health. Oh, there's, there's a lot going on right now. Okay, Vert is going to get to the island with that Kremlin. Classic Noun is unspotted and safe currently, although down a lot of hit points. Flow will get that cap. I'm not sure how many tops shot. Vert took on the bell because his healing potential might be screwed now. Some of the late torps that came in from Nebieski, at least a couple went into the bow, and then yeah, he took he took probably at least three on the belt. But what would you so rather have? Would you rather would you rather have a half health Kremlin or would you rather be missing a daring? Um, I mean, I'd yeah. much rather have my daring back. <laughs> but I mean, just <laughs> definitely, you know the. <laughs> I will say bad trade for Vor, right? You lost, you lost an entire ship that you shouldn't have lost. Oh, the it's a hydro destroyer. It's a hydro destroyer. Um, watch the torps on. So, renegades from Vor. No, they they're okay. Uh, Rushia also got torps. Oh, uh, Ruha taking here. one. Yeah. And now here comes the Kremlin salvo. Oh my goodness. They're leaving just almost nothing behind here. Vor just melting ships here. Less than five minutes into the game. They're already two ships down. I'm surprised they tried to get that cruiser still into A because this current position, like this current position, is designed to prevent a cruiser from actually doing that, and you can't yeah. see why. Like that's why you put Vert there to, to deny exactly what just happened, and they weren't able to kill Vert. I mean, he's really beat up, but he's still alive. You know that. You know he's still on the board. Uh, here we go. Here's uh, Zill going past uh, the Kremlin of Vert as it gets dropped by the Haven Liu bombs. Oof, nasty bomb drop there. Um, and of course, I that's going to keep happening. Oh, no, no, sorry, it's yeah. not going to keep happening because they have no. Liu <laughs> I get, This is dead. why I'm so surprised however, about this. However, Yanaya is pushing south. <laughs> um, which is probably designed to put pressure on Vert, but Vert's got Yanaya's broadside, kind of. Yeah, Unless... I, I just... It's not going to be enough for Citadels. It's all... I don't know. I don't want to say this because this is a very, very, very experienced team, but it's almost like Force just like, here you go, you can have another ship. Here you go, you can have yeah. another ship. Yeah, um, I... Okay, so Renegade uh, in the Daring in the middle is trying desperately to grab B, but keeps getting forced off by Torps and Radar. Another set of Torps just going past the rear end there. Um, Vor are pushing a Des Moines into Charlie to try and stop that, but that's 2v4. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a two to four on the C flank. Like, C flank was already Vor's weak side. And I guess for the moment they've said, well, we're already down ships. We might as well try something. So let's go for it because Asphodelus there just getting hammered by Moss Napoli AP. And that's going to continue. I mean, they might pick up B, but if you're Shaft, do you even care about letting them have B right now? 
We have no reason not to uh, contest it, at least. Oh, no, contest it. But my point is, if they pick it up, you're not really sweating. You've got almost a 400-point lead, and the game is barely just still getting started. The problem with the Charlie side of the map, as Asphodelus is finding out, is that the islands over there are quite flat. And so if you are spotted, the chances of a cross shot coming in, just dipping shells over the island and hitting you is, is quite high. Um, chat band is also um, pushing up the 10 line, which is going to start putting a lot of pressure on the backside of uh, the Des Moines for Vor, who is being forced to reverse. Shaft is so far ahead. It is. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Shaft's game to lose. Shaft <laughs> definitely, they, they, they brought... But what... Go ahead. What were we saying, Henning? What were we saying? Just uh, uh, between the two matches, we were saying, well, you know, the last game was Shaft to lose as well. Yeah. Now, um, come, they brought Kamikaze's his Moskva over to push Renegade off. Renegade was probably 75% done with that cap. They radared him to shove him out. He'll, I'm sure he'll go back and try again. But, I mean, it's just, it's just the lead is continuing to build. We're coming up on 500 points now. Yeah. And none of the ships are in good positions either. The Kremlin is getting no. farmed by a daring of all things. The Moskva can't really do anything. He's actually down to 15k. And we have the Pipeline Moskva that's kind of doing nothing because... The Shark doesn't even need to go into B anymore, so this Moskva... No. ...doesn't really to, provide to, anything. To be honest, if I'm Shaft, I'm probably looking at getting Exodus into C, although he's lit for the moment. I. I'd still try to get him up there and get him on the cap because that just uh, speeds things up going. and puts more pressure on him. We've got a rush going. I think Renegade is going to go around on Vert in the middle on the Looks four like line. Um, Shaft have actually pulled Zill over to try to go towards C. I think I think they've said, you can have B. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Here we go. First shells do not kill Renegade. Nope. Here comes the lines. They should be able to get him. Uh, Ooh, uh, well, I say that, but they need to kill him before his guns <laughs> reload. They still haven't done it. Wow, that came way Shots closer than it should yeah. have been. They might say that. Wow. Coming. That was way yep. closer than it should have been. Okay, so Classic Noun steps into B. Oh, it, it looks like Shaft have just said, it looks like Shaft have just said, hey, you can just have B, we'll take C and A, no problem. I mean, we're gonna get as well. Uh, wait right now, so he's probably gonna die. And not uh, 250. Still got to land one. They're going to get him eventually. There he goes. I feel like Renegade was trying to, to kind of be a little too efficient right there and sh should have just kind of dumped everything. Like, you got to, if you're going yeah, to make a charge, you got to get that kill as quick as you can. That's the danger with a single lone top. So if, if you're doing it against a target that's reversing, um, they can quite easily just. Um, turn slightly and you end up missing so yeah yeah you've either got to get a bit more of an angle or you've got to just go for the normal spread of torpedoes um but against a healthy target that might not kill them so well we're 10 minutes into this game and it's a 600 point lead for shaft i just i cannot envision a scenario where they don't win this and force a game three Okay, Yanaya in the Kremlin for Vor from the two line is uh, pushing down into the cap against Kimilil and Zando and Flo in the Moskva Kremlin and Daring. I'm actually surprised they... Pepega Zando doesn't doesn't just go for the Wham here and ends it. I think I he's would. scared I... of the Daring coming over from mid, but nah. they have a way to support as well. And they know the Daring is low. These torpedoes from Flo look pretty good right now, so... Yanai is going to take a whole bunch yeah. more damage before he gets onto this cap. I think the plan might be, you know, hey, let's try it with the torps. If the torps don't work, then we can uh, push um, the Mosfer and the Kremlin around and, and just get him. Takes two on the belt there just to get into the cap. And I'm, I'm with you. If, I, if I'm Pepega, I just come around the corner and just take the ram. I mean, you got a 600 point lead. You can afford to trade ships. It's not a big deal. And, and critically, fast... you keep the cap. Yes. But it's the, the faster you pull their ships off the board, the faster you get to game three, you know? The longer you leave them on the board, the more opportunity you're giving them to potentially find a way back in, how, however unlikely it might seem. So uh, Zando's Kremlin will see those torpedoes going past. That's the first set of five. There is another set of five coming. Once that second set of five 
comes past, Zando will know that there's no more torps in the water. They actually just fought in Yeah, you know, yeah, forward here. He's getting spammed from two directions. Yeah, they know his DCP is down. I mean, they know he took the torps, so... Got at least one fire on him. I mean, if you're Shaft, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, we've talked about sending Pe uh, Pepe up there to get the ram. You don't have to, at this point, probably. Sando, uh, <laughs> probably panicking slightly, trying to dodge those torpedoes, but actually they ran out anyway. Um, All skill. So will, will we see the Kremlin of Shaft push forward now to try and get that finishing kill on Yanaya? The mind tries to contest C. That's I was gonna say, you know, hat tip yeah. to Boar because they are not, they are just like, we're gonna stand on all the caps and make you earn it. You First know? I need to so... be a bit careful here. You can get devastated. Yeah, I'm taking a big hit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that you've got to watch those angles against Des Moines for sure. Improve yeah. pen, pen angles on that AP. You almost, you almost get the sense that maybe Vor is... I mean, obviously, they're going to continue to fight all the way to the end, but maybe they're trying to draw these guys into making a mistake or two. I mean, they, they, the Ohio position, uh, now I'm way over on the 10 line, looking to maybe slap one of these cruisers out of the way. But uh, the points are ticking up so fast. It's it, You're over 920 now for Shaft. They do manage to bag the Moskva. Right there in the middle of the board, they get Kamikazes with a side shell, but... Asphodelus is going to go down to the Napoli secondaries here in just a moment. Yep, and uh, Naomi just took a torp on the aft end in the Ohio as well. Uh, nose in against Possum. Shells out. Yep, delete Gets the Possum. kill. Okay, that's a 35,000 hit point Ohio um, against a Napoli in smoke and a Haru. Here we see Kamikazes being ended in that replay. Talks out from Exodus Blaze in the Haru towards Best Naomi's Ohio. Game's probably going to end even sooner than that because over at C, Yanya, uh, uh, sorry, at A, Yanaya is, the farming is continuing. He's down into 10k. He's got to be getting low on heals at this stage. He's managed to avoid the torpedoes, but... Classic Nouns Daring goes down to Flo's Daring. Yep. If Yanaya Trying to get goes down, Moscow, but nothing. If Yanaya goes down, that is That's it. game. It's gonna be game in seconds one way or another, but there he goes. Yeah. Shaft comes roaring back on the back of what I would classify as a couple of critical Vor mistakes. Certainly the daring loss in B at the start of the match. A huge misplay for a, 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 a hydro destroyer to get torpedoed like that. Do you know what we have now for the first time this we weekend? Have, we have we a game, game three. three. <laughs> Yay. We have a one one. <laughs> Which is, which is of course, what every what every viewer and caster wants is a, is a one one. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're we're gonna go to a uh, a tiebreaker between Vor and Shaft one one. Uh, so we'll we'll head back to Prague uh, and prepare for that tiebreaker. Welcome to game three, ladies and gentlemen. It is our first game three of this internationals weekend. As Statsblok and Sea Raptor very correctly pointed out, Shaft showing some absolutely incredible, incredible placement and skill in knocking Vor down one to make this a one-one. Gentlemen, they did it. Hopium. Hopium. Oh amazing, God, amazing place right in the beginning. Painzor, what was your make of it? Uh, right, so, firstly, if you're going to play a Hydro DD at the top of a cap, and you're about to reverse into the cap, turn on your Hydro. Like, the, um... The, Why? I don't, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, that's not daring, that isn't there anymore, right? Yeah. But then that absolutely disgusting cross top onto the Kremlin. Like, he hit, like, seven daring torpedoes. Just, like, it's absolutely beautiful cross top. Lost most of his health, but didn't lose enough health. Because he was still able to slap the ever living crap out of the of the golden lion on its approach into the Charlie cap or the Alpha cap, sorry, a, a left one. Yes, <laughs> Alpha. Talk with your hands. This is good. This is good content. Woo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, I mean, even when Boar loses a ship early, as they did with the Moskva in Game One, as they did with the Daring in Game Two, they're still so dangerous. These guys are so capable and good, no matter what. Uh, no matter how far down they are. I mean, was do you feel like there was a moment when Vor could have brought this back? There was definitely a moment when he could have brought this back. 
Um, especially looking at the seaside when Best and Omi pushes is Ohio down. Yeah. They lost a couple ships there, Chaff did. And I thought if they don't stop this, Devor actually had a, a way of coming back. But in the end, Shaf did manage to pick up another couple kills on A, and it did end up uh, going in Shaf's favor. Oh, and also the uh, the daring rush on the Kremlin, the, the Vor's daring, yes. rushes the Kremlin and just barely misses those conga line torps. Yeah, I think he should have just immediately torped everything. Uh, he was trying to be conservative and save one set uh, so he could torp something else, but no, that... Um, no. And here we see the daring eating uh, three torpedoes oh, and God. instantly exploding. <laughs> <laughs> Which is um, less than ideal, I would say. But that here again, uh, Vor with That's the incredible cross torping action from two darings oh, on the it's Kremlin so landing dirty. seven torpedoes. Really exceptionally good aim by the Vor players here, landing that many torpedoes on a Kremlin right away. 60k HP evaporates, but they traded an entire destroyer to do it. Um, uh, do we? Uh, I, I think we're still waiting a few moments on the replay, so. Um, it's nice. We maybe... have this nice little B-roll highlight reel, which is like... It is. It's it nice. is. You're right. And yeah. here we see the Golden line also go down. Absolutely so smashed by the Kremlin, <laughs> by yeah. the Kremlin that was parked up at the south of B, because despite the yes. seven torpedoes, it's a Kremlin. It doesn't care. The Howden Liu of the Dutch Butterball just getting obliterated there by the, uh, by the Kremlin. Really amazing stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the brackets real quick here. Guys, this is the first... Game or sorry, not first game three, but this is the first best of three. How, I'm saying that oh, wrong. Dear. This is the first game three we're going to see. We're very excited about this. The winner of Shaft versus Vor goes on to face the winner of Bansi B versus Smile, which we will be covering as soon as this game completes. So uh, once that happens, we will go on watch Bansi B versus Smile. Uh, whomever wins that will move on and progress, and we will go to a brief intermission while we will talk about. Very exciting new content. New content that you have not seen anywhere. We will reveal exclusively on this stream. NBD, no big deal. Don't go anywhere. Don't miss it. So, so we have the replay ready here so we can see exactly what happened. Let me check. One moment, please. That is it. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now, Sarah, you made an interesting comment right at the start that you said that you think Shaft will make a mistake with their deployment. Yes, I actually thought that it was... A mistake to not have a cruiser on this island here, especially considering that uh, Vor was very light on this side, meaning that this is not actually an island they can they can punish at all. So you could put a Salem, a Minotaur, they're just scot free. However, due to the daring taking torps and dying, this situation turned out turned out very differently. Also, they did actually manage to get sea control by using the Masa and Haragumo right here. So interestingly enough, even though Shaft committed four ships to the sea cap against uh, Vor's two, they didn't actually press that advantage and attempt to take sea. Do you feel like they maybe didn't do that because they realized so many resources from Vor were piled up on the AB cap? Possibly. I do actually think they could have made a move way earlier on C and actually taken it for themselves. However, it was, uh, of course, the Ohio from Best Naomi right here that did end up making almost a possible comeback for Vor due to this. So you can see the Ohio and the Des Moines, even though they are outnumbered four, maybe even five to two, they take aggressive positions up here, preventing Shaft from taking the sea cap. This is something to really note about a, a team as good as Vor. Even though they're down on ships, they still manage to take aggressive positions and say, you cannot have this. Very, very skilled players who know exactly what they're doing, and that's why they have been so formidable, even when they happen to be down ships early. Um, let's go ahead and keep playing this. Let's take a look at the A cap. Yeah, let's take a look at this as well. We see here yes, that the, the daring. this daring, this is a full HP daring. If we go back a little bit. When he comes in, he's almost full HP, except he ends up dying for a one-third HP Kremlin. Yeah, right. he, he took a little bit of chip damage from the ships at the south of A. Um, then the Kremlin got one full broadside of AP in him. He didn't have the time to switch to HE. I think he just wasn't expecting it. But still took down most of his health. Didn't get any torpedo tube destructions, though. So the Daring was able to get his second set of torpedoes off. Yep, but again, he was whittled down by the Daring and the Moskva um, 
from uh, Shaft's east, sort of central east side. And then at this point, the point differential is so huge, uh, Vor just has no real way of, of coming back and taking this. But they do end up collecting kills on the east side. Yes, I think in this case, if Shaft was just running towards the J-line and they just hugged the border there for the rest of the game, they would have still won. I don't think, points-wise, there was anything Vor could have done to win this game anymore. However, we do indeed see that Best Naomi here on the 10 line does almost manage to get it back for Vor. Yep, absolutely. Well, fantastic game two. Going to game three for the first time in the series, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's see here. Do we have a moment to swap over to the next map? Map number three. Map number three will be North. Now, we've seen this played several times already during internationals. North tends to be a bit more of a passive map as there's lots of space for people to maneuver around the A side and lots of islands to island hop up the C side. Uh, B has tended to be only taken when someone has an extra destroyer to commit, but it's usually being covered by radar, so it's a bit of a slow process. We will likely see conga line torps from a daring, I would say, but uh, guys, this is it. This is uh, Shaft definitely being the underdog. There are 5.2 million channel points right now quaking in their boots in our Twitch chat, waiting to see if Vor can walk away with this as they did during COTS 12, and Shaft is showing they are absolutely not a team to be taken lightly. So, Sarah, what what, is, what does Shaft have to do to walk away with this and pull the biggest upset? I think Shaft has actually had a really strong showing against a team like Vor so far. I think that if they continue to play their style, continue to uh, assert their dominance around Caps early and play aggressively ha as they have uh, before, I think they can actually take it. It, they just have to avoid making some critical mistakes, which, you know, is always a good thing to avoid. Painzor. I think uh, the key to this is going to be how well Vor can rotate ships on this. Because Vor historically have been very strong at repositioning ships on demand. And if they can do that and reinforce the sides, like, like we say, they, the Asian teams like to play relatively passively, wait a bit, and then relocate forces to do whatever they need to. If they can do that well, I think they can take down Shaft. But I really don't want them to do that well because I really want Shaft to go through. I look, I'm not biased at all, but how oh, are EU? We, we need the EU. Don't Your colors are showing, Painzor. <laughs> so Painzor, the what happens, how, is how exactly does does how exactly does Shaft come away with this if they can't get an early kill? Both of these games now very close games, one going in Shaft's favor. Both had early kills on members of Vor. If Vor is able to avoid an early catastrophe, what what does Shaft have to do? Not over push. <laughs> not yes. over push. I agree. I think Shaft needs needs to um, be, be aggressive in the early positions, but they need to know where the line is here. I think Vor is a team that will very quickly uh, outtrade you and overwhelm you if you push too far. Understood. So what I'm being told right now, guys, is we're a little behind schedule because there are some training room issues. We're going to make sure those are ironed out so that nobody feels as though they're going in at a disadvantage. So let's talk for a moment briefly about Twitch drops again, for those of you who are here, maybe, uh, excuse me, those of you who maybe were not here at the very beginning. Um, so this is the last day that you can get Twitch drops by watching this stream. 90 minutes is all it takes. I held up five fingers to indicate 90 minutes. Smart. Not even <laughs> amazing. Wow. So it takes 90 minutes to collect yourself one Kotz container. This is the last day that you can do it. You want to finish that collection if you can before today is over so that you can collect the mission for the very exciting North Carolina camouflage called Bane of the Sea that will be coming with 0.10.10 .10 update. Um, you, If you haven't enough containers already to finish your collection, don't forget, you can pick up three in the armory for 2,000 community points each. And if you didn't realize this, because I didn't for the longest time, if you have duplicates of this collection saved up, these King of the Sea uh, uh, collection items, they actually exchange at a rate of one to one. So one duplicate equals one more piece of your collection. So don't be afraid to go and do that if uh, you are close to finishing this time. If not, and this has been asked a lot, if you haven't finished it this season, there will be more COTS collection containers available next season to make sure you can finish it. So, 
Uh, if you haven't seen it before, this is the uh, North Carolina camouflage, Bane of the Sea. Very, very cool camouflage. I played it myself. It's a delight. Really interesting golden 3D textures of tentacles representing the Kraken with the Kotz logos at the aft and the, the fore and the aft. I almost said the aft and the stern because I'm a professional. And uh, the lovely <laughs> skull and crossbones, the new Kotz logo imprinted in white across the black camo. So do try and get your collection finished this day if you can i'm wondering if we can go like an entire intermission here without one of us saying something stupid i mean would it be no. any fun if we did it was, it was no that's literally why they flew me out here we need somebody to look really stupid so that the average person doesn't feel too which intimidated by the game that's that's what it is we need the resident buffoon the resident and i'm doing a really good job of it <laughs> <laughs> You know, fun little fact, folks. The most exciting thing about me being uh, able to come to Prague to help cast this was because I knew I was going to meet Painsor. <laughs> I literally asked, I said, wait, wait, what day does Painsor get in? I want to have a beer with Painsor. I'm so excited. You said that you want to have a beer with me, and then instead you've been spending the weekend with your girlfriend. Oh, I've been spending the weekend with my girlfriend on our second anniversary. I know. I'm I know, right? Selfish, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> selfish man. I know. <laughs> How dare you have an anniversary during King of the Sea? He even brought googly eyes for me. Look at them in the back. He brought googly eyes. We also brought hopium. Yeah. <laughs> you also wrote hopium. We did. We did. <laughs> well, uh, we're still going through these a little bit. Uh, folks, one more thing to remember. This is the last match of this series. We have Ban CV versus Smile, both of the uh, EU and CIS. I got tongue tied there. EU and CIS champions coming up right after this. Don't leave because that's going to be fantastic. Smile and Ban CV, both extraordinary teams. And then afterwards, once again, what did I miss? B? No, I said EU and CIS teams, right? Where are the NA teams? <laughs> Where are the NA teams? The NA teams were. Uh... Too busy with uh, rodeos, barbecues, and uh, whiskey Tide making, pods. and they had to leave early. Um, we did watch uh, being teased by a room full of Europeans. <laughs> what, what chat and yet now? we're all we're all in here drinking this. Starbucks and Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your American calories, boys. Can I just point out? First of all, my Coke doesn't have any calories. But secondly, um, technically, Penzo is not a European. Well, that's right. Yeah, no more. Sorry. No politics in this channel, gentlemen. No politics. Yeah, I have to just leave that one well alone. Thank you. <laughs> we shan't be a part of this party anymore. We are going to float away and mind our own business. No politics. That's the rule. No mm. politics in worship, guys. No. Right. No. None at all. <laughs> hmm. No. What are we looking at? Do we still need a few minutes? Uh, we're waiting for one last player from one of the teams to join the training room and then. Can we, just, can we just offer them pains or? Uh, I don't. I don't think they want to lose. Yeah. I'm not, look, I, I'm an okay player. I'm not thinking to see international level player. <laughs> Bogsy, why don't you volunteer? Uh, because I don't think that collectively across all four regions there's enough strength to carry me on their backs. <laughs> it, it would take a team of twelve players, not nine. So, but thank you. I appreciate that, Sarah. What are you both do? <laughs> I don't have a voice. I'm sorry. Do you no, need a voice? They, they can't hear me. We'll just put you in the Kremlin. All you have to do is sit somewhere and not die and occasionally click your guns. Yeah. All you have to do is predict when 20 torpedoes are coming at you from two different directions. <laughs> Why? He didn't. <laughs> well, he didn't, and he was fine. <laughs> Why should I? Isn't it astounding that a Kremlin can just eat seven torpedoes right out of the gate and be like, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> Comrade, did we hit uh, to, like, mild waves? Mild waves, comrade. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, you know, it has been interesting to see so far is that I feel like the most common battleship choices we've seen have been Kremlin and Ohio. We haven't seen, I have not seen a Montana yet in uh, internationals. Don't mention Montana's to Quagsire. He doesn't like them. I haven't figured out why he hates them so much. But... No Yamatos yet, I don't think. Have we seen I think, I think we've seen one before on Angelstone. Oh, yes, yes, On yes, the okay. trap game against 07. And I believe it was Internationals. We did see a GK yesterday. Yes, we did. Yes, on we saw the path, GK. Yes. Battleship diversity. 
That's such a bad person. He's, when do he we was, bring out the Colombo strats? And he was, where are the Colombo strats? And he was kind of clutch. The GK literally sat behind an island, took an entire central position to himself, and blocked it. I almost burped at the same time. <laughs> 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 yeah. Boxy had a glitch in the matrix and he had to be reset. So, uh, well, again, this is the first third match of the entire week, and we're very excited. Uh, Shaft putting on a fantastic show against one of, if not the best, team in the entire world. Vor has uh, multiple COTS victories regionally and one COTS international in COTS 12 last time. Um, I think they were a heavy favorite to go to the finals. We'll see if Shaft can actually pull off the unthinkable and knock out this major favorite. Gentlemen, predictions. Can I just guess? As much as I would love to see Vor go through for a guaranteed international final final, I want to see Shaft beat them as the underdog. Painzor. I'm going with Shaft. Not going for TBD? Well, TBD, mm, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Stas Bloke, Sea Raptor, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for the first time in King of the Sea 13 International, Welcome to game three of this series between Shaft and Vor. And why was they, are they already shooting at each other? Surely uh -oh. we're not restarting. <laughs> Surely we're not restarting. Considering a bunch of ships aren't moving, I would say we are yeah. starting. Yeah, it looks yeah. like we're going should we for quickly read through? Should we quickly read through the lineup sure. so we don't have to do that again? Sure. So, Shaft, uh, Ohio, Kremlin, Des Moines, Salem, Minotaur, Moskva, Double Nevsky, and a Gearing. And then uh, Vor bringing Montana, Kremlin, Des Moines, Houn Liu, Napoli, Moskva, Moskva, Daring. Daring. So, uh, yeah, we'll be uh, going back to the studio for a second here while they do a restart. Just kidding, ladies and gentlemen. We have our first restart of internationals. Uh, all teams have up to five minutes to decide if they'd like to take a mulligan, if maybe a player DCs or some other horrible error. Uh, has happened so this is the first of the weekend we don't use the word mulligan anymore because it confuses yeah. the na people too much apparently it confuses we, the NA we had a an incident last cuts where one of the teams called a mulligan and the other team didn't know what it was so they continued to play the game and uh was the na team the one that didn't know what mulligan was yes i think it was a latin american team oh well that's because mulligan is an english word and is it though? Well, it's more of an American word. What word should they have used? Restart. Restart. Oh. We have collectively agreed from that point onward to call it restart. So yeah, we, we don't use the word mulligan anymore, especially now the official that makes sense. people are gonna get confused. So now now that you've seen the initial deployments, <laughs> what the ships were. No 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did we actually see the ships? We, we did, we did we, we get saw to the see ships. them, yes. Okay. We didn't see where they were going. But I can't remember what any of the ships were. <laughs> I, I can't really remember. I know that there were a lot of Moscow's. That's uh, that's all I know. A lot of Soviet steel. Yes. Yeah. We, like, we like the Soviet steel. We like to do the heavy Soviet military. Soviet steel seems to be pretty uh, common, especially when it comes to 12 kilometer radars. It was always called the Iron Curtain composition. Yes, the Iron like. Curtain. I recall, a, I recall a clan battles meta for a while there. I think it was season nine where you could legitimately bring a Kremlin and six Stalingrads and just walk forward yes. yes and i'm glad that that was eventually there have been uh, adjustments made so that that was no yeah they added cvs to the clown balls <laughs> <laughs> and it was one cv yeah. and six thousand grand in bed well a, a good um you know a very interesting thing about that is obviously the counter says something heavy like that would be lots of uh lots of destroyers with uh, lots of destroyers with either long range accurate guns like a kleber or something like that uh or we saw oh. a lot of Venezia that season also oh, well, to yes, counter that was the, the, Venezia the Stalin, Stalin. as Venezia had not yet been nerfed at that point. So it was extremely strong because the pen angles allowed it to yep. pen the Stalingrad deck at, I think it was 14 or 15 kilometers. Anything. Yeah, it, yes. was, it was out of control. And that was and that one had CVs as well, yes. Yes. But um, well, we're still waiting just a few moments here, folks, for the teams to get ready to back up. When um, does the next clan battle season start? Soon. Soon, TM. Is that like next week or something? I don't know. It will be yeah. during 0.10.10. So soon. And we will have like a regular clan battle season. Answer, answer me this. Where the hell did you get googly eyes? Uh, 
This, those ones specifically. No, and just as, as a general, as a, as a as a thing, as a character trait. Why the googly eye? I don't know. It, it kind of <laughs> happened and then it stuck. And I mean, now, it just, yeah. it may, like, may, maybe it's symbolic of his own eyes. You've I mean, made you've made wonderful emotes and wonderful <laughs> graphics out of the googly eyes, and they're so funny. And I'm just curious how they actually came about into being. I don't know. I think I just got, like I think it's because I learned like, I could put pictures on like OBS when I was like learned the stream, and then mm -hmm. I just like. That looked funny with googly eyes, so I put them on a couple of ships, I burst out laughing, and then it kind of just evolved from there. Did anybody else burst out laughing? Uh, no, because I was doing it just by myself. And then I showed oh. other people, and they found it very funny. This it was sounds, the Vessa's fault. This it's all sounds Vessa's very fault. sophisticated, and I'm just glad that it resulted in two googly eyes between you two googly boys. <laughs> and, and the hopium. And the hopium. It's better yeah. than island boys, well, anyway. Uh, we, we are ready to proceed into game three of the first match in COTS 13 International Sea Raptor. Stats below. Bring us the sugar. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again to Game 3 of Shaft and Vor, our first Game 3 of the International Bracket. I know we're excited to be here. We are excited to bring you this game. Let's have a quick look at the lineups. No, they haven't changed after the restart. You're looking at Shaft here on the north side of the map, bringing Ohio, Kremlin, Des Moines, Salem, Minotaur, Moscow, a huge mix of cruisers there, two Nevskis, and a lone destroyer, a very lonely gearing. Stats, real quick, look at the Vor lineup. The full lineup again is Montana, Kremlin, Des Moines, Haudenlieu, Napoli, two Mosfars, and two Darings. And just to recap, because um, this hasn't happened yet this weekend, when there's a restart, the teams have to bring the same ships. They are not allowed to change. They are allowed to change the players, just in case someone disconnects or something like that. Uh, but they have to keep the same ship lineup. So this will have given the teams a little bit of time to think about the lineups that they've just seen. Um, and particularly, um, we're seeing Shaft running a one destroyer lineup versus a two destroyer lineup on the Vor side. So, Henning, if you bring a one destroyer lineup, what is your goal? So the general idea of having less destroyers is to bring more cruisers, which gives you more firepower and more HP. Um, on the contrary, you lose a little bit of cap contesting potential. You can offset it by picking a bunch of radar cruisers and, well, look at Shaft's lineup. They have basically only radar cruisers, so that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, so you, you lose mobile vision, but you, what you lose, you gain in radar yeah. vision, which makes total sense, yeah. The idea is basically um, you will lose caps uh, early game, but you will just, with your increased firepower, you will start bullying away your opponent and take take all the map back at some point in the, uh, late in the game. So lay out and, radar traps, try and get some ships down, and then once you've got a couple of ships down, then you can start to exert some cap control? Yeah. And it's interesting to me to note that despite the destroyer disparity, right, Vor has a small edge here, they're still taking both Darings over to the sea flank. Yeah, they're going very heavy on that sea flank. They've got two Darings. Um, very. One is looks like it's heading over towards the nine line. One may be going towards the cap. Maybe going to dive for the island. We'll see. Uh, supported by Mosfar, Mosfar Kremlin. So only three ships on the other half of the map. We've got the Des Moines of Nibieski in the middle, um, and best known is Montana, and Asphodelus is Napoli going over towards A. Looks like Shaft Sea Raptor have got um, a bit more of an even deployment. They do. They've got four ships north of A. The double Nevsky gearing uh, kind of smoke train that I, you know, we're used to seeing on that side of the event. As uh, Zill over at C puts his radar up, catches Renegade out just a little bit here. Probably gonna get, maybe get a little chip damage in. Yeah, Renegades uh, daring, taking some incoming. But as we said yesterday, oh, if you are, oh yikes! <laughs> I was about to say, if you're facing shells from a Minotaur, you can easily uh, bow or aft tank those because of the bounce angles. However, that if Kremlin a salvo a though shoots at you, hmm. yeah, that Kremlin salvo was the uh, the big hit there. But back over, uh, back over, having a look at A. Of course, we've got. Um, Flo's gearing, working with Possum and Kamikaze's Nevsky's here, working a little bit of smoke train action. He's got a line of smoke set up for them. He's going to be able to dive down into that cap, and pretty much nothing that Vor can do about that. They're not set up to deal with anything like that on this side of the uh, the map. No, you know, we see some of the NA teams will occasionally use 20-kilometer Shimakaze torpedoes, uh, cross torps, and that sort of thing, into these smoke pushes. None of that over here. No radar nearby. So Flo should be easy to grab A, and then it's just a question of kind of what Vor's cunning plan is with this um, this push over here as they get organized on the 8, 9, and 10 lines. 
Yeah, with all these radars around, this is a bit like um, for Vor, like storming a castle. So you've got um, more mobility because you've got the two destroyers. But as we said earlier, you've got to push into these dangerous double overlapping radars and things like that. Um, so it's going to be very risky for Vor on B and C. There's nothing they can do about A, as you've just said. Um, we'll see if they try and make a play for B, although the Daring's are both over on the seaside right now. Okay, now with chat with Zills with Zills radar down, I just watched Kemi put his up. There's Exodus's Moscow radar definitely catching out Renegade, but they got to get shells on him for it to matter. And right now they haven't quite gotten there. Couple of the yeah. Minotaur turrets able to throw out shells. They are going to move him, push him off. Yeah, Zill just about to get some shells. Um, Renegade will go back in though. Yeah. So whether there's enough time to cap in between that radar and Zill's radar coming back? I don't sure. think there will be, no. Um, so that means that Vor might actually struggle to get some points on the board. Um, they might rely on kills. Okay, action springing up on the 9 and 10 line now. As that radar from Exodus continues. Classic now being forced to run away, having pushed Torps in towards Chatban's Salem. But Chat sniff those coming, although here comes the here comes the Dutch airstrike in on Chatban. Has the potential to do yeah. a lot of a lot of pain to the Salem here. So here we see that a diagonal drop, because of course um the Howden you can only drop uh perpendicular to where you are, if you see what I mean. So um Rashia is going to have to try and get around in front well, of Chatban to get the best drop possible. Chatban is going to be a little uncomfortable here because Yenyaya's Kremlin's about to come right around the corner and be in his face. He's this got a little bit of cover from the island. Well. Oh, nothing off that salvo. That island cover really working out for Chatban over here on the 10 line. Yenyaya can't really push here. The uh, burden of uh, Kremlin is actually on his broad side if he tries to do that. Well, he seems like that's what's going to happen. Here comes the salvo from Vert. I mean, not anything to get real excited about there. Yeah, Vert needs to go aggressive here. He can't leave the scrambler oh, to push around. Yeah, the trouble is, isn't which way is Naomi looking? Because if Vert pushes forward, is Naomi even in range? Uh, yes, Naomi is absolutely looking that way and is probably just about in range. I don't see a spotter plane from Naomi, but he is looking, you're right. Looking for that shot. Okay, Torps out from the Daring on the corner from four towards Shaft's Kremlin, but Congolan torpedoes there looking pretty nasty. Those look really good coming in right now. Vert's gonna be able to dodge and maybe only take one of these on the bow. No, the first nice. salvo's gonna miss completely. Well done. Nice rudder control there from Vert. There are some more coming, but that shouldn't be too bad. They also pulled Zill's Minotaur back off the cap to continue to throw shells on Yin Yai. They're, they're throwing everything they can to try and slow down this Kremlin push. I think Shaft are realizing right now, you know, we've got really good map control. We've got good radar coverage. The one thing that we have to do right now is stop this push. We've got to stop this push, but I just, I, I, ugh, I'm not sure it's going to happen. Just... Chatman. Is in a real is in a real pickle here. I think he might actually get around on the other side of the item before the Kremlin I, comes around. I think he's good. I think he's just about timed this perfectly. He's going to sneak out potentially and have good shots on Temple. He knows he's going to go out. The question is, what can he take with him on the he way? He might actually take good Temple sits. out here he's, with him. He's, if he takes Temple with sure. him, he's going for the Ram. That's actually not a horrible trade. If he can get it, forty-four oh, oh. hit points, and he oh, does. Oh. On big. my screen, he reached zero before he actually hit. On That's, 44 hit points, close. he that pulls the ram close. off. It's about okay. the best result he could have hoped for. Uh, Vert is now in trouble. Uh, stuck. Nose in to, to the, the two Darings and Yanaya. If they it's can trade Kremlitz here, it's fine. Yep. Now, like Shaft, let's, Shaft let's... is very fine with Kremlitz because they're winning the other side of the map. I would say, I want to briefly look away at the rest of the map, right? Because Shaft has not been idle. They're shoving... Uh, Zondo's Ohio into the B cap, and he's actually got decent shots down on Naomi, who is starting to look pretty beat up down there on the H line, the, because the push through A is continuing with all of the Nevsky sitting in smoke, just farming out the battleship. 
I don't even. I'm not even sure if Bird is dying here. He's really healthy. Meanwhile, Yenaya is. Yeah. I, I, no. Four's battleships are just beat to hell. Yeah, Vert has managed to get right up alongside this island, um, and so has the the right hand side of the ship covered. Shots out towards Yanaya. Yep, that's a nice little chunk there, down to 6k and healing on oh, Yanaya. How Liu drops some nasty bombs on Vert. Have a look at Classic. Oh, He's coming yes. in for another torpedo charge. Yeah, I think this might just be a straight up rush. Yeah, they're setting no. up for another one. They know they've got to get Vert out of this position. Vert doesn't now know he's coming. In the last game, we saw a he knows uh, now. not particularly brilliant daring rush. Let's see if not this one's sure, going to be a bit better. Not sure if Vert's guns are reloaded. They are. He's, he didn't necessarily have time to prepare for that. Okay. Six torps one, going in, two, all on the bow. There it goes. Vert goes out. They managed to keep Yanaya on the board, but just barely. There's the Moscow Raider. I don't think he's going to survive this. Nope. He doesn't. Good. <laughs> Fantastic shot there from X Displays. Wow, and two quick kills by Shaft as they take the other Vor battleship off the board on the other side of the map. So, Henry, no, I'm if, sorry. You are, yeah. if you are Shaft right now, are you worried at all? Is there anything to worry about on this minimap right now? I mean, you have an Apodi card out there, so you just take that kill as well if you can. Uh, the Des Moines on uh, south of B has an Ohio in his face, so that's also pretty good for you. And Vos forces are stuck in positions where they don't really do anything. The yeah, family they're, is basically they're... out of the game. The Golden Lou needs about two minutes to actually do anything anymore. Yeah, the end result of this board position for Vor is just really bad, right? You like got to deal with an Ohio in the middle of the board. You have nothing to deal with it with. He's going to be able to push Nebieski at his leisure. The Napoli is caught out on the eye line. Just not going their way today. Like Shaft is no. four hundred points ahead. It's up one po uh, up one cap, one hundred k yeah. HP advantage. The Moyne is going to die. Then after that, the Napoli is in a bad position as well. So, I mean, uh, the, the Daring and the Moskva for Vora are coming over to try and help the Des Moines. Um, I think the Moskva is going to turn up into the channel. Too late. It's way too late. Des Moines late. dead it's right here. Long. Yep. Already too late. Yep. Um, so now YBB's Moskva is going to... I don't know, what. where do you go with this? Because you can't turn that corner in front of Zando, who's already turning turrets, I assume. Yep. I, for that I guess... I guess one of the things that I've never been a huge fan of of these 9-10 line pushes, and, and we've both we've all seen them work before, but I, I've never cared for how far it takes one of your battleships out of the fight, right? And we're seeing and that a little bit. Well. And for how long? Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? Because Yanaya barely, barely managed to salvage his ship, and now three or four minutes later is just now, he's on a heal, he's on about a quarter HP, he's trying to get back into the game, when his, but his team needs him now, and he's not there. And he can't be there. Okay. Um, I'm going to call this a suicide charge. Suicide charge by Renegade on the Des Moines yeah, Kimmy Leal. For sure. That is not There's a no way he survives this. Yeah. He's not wait, even going to live to make it. When you're in the daring and your caller says, yep, you're going to rush the Des Moines. Yeah. Mm. That, only, that only ends one yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a call you want to hear. Oh. Sando. Oh, big sits on YBB there from Exodus. All the way 20 kilometers off to his starboard. YBB, I mean, go for the ram. It, it's not oh, good. But, oh, never mind. Never mind. No just end. that. This this game is just a complete disaster for Vor. Not, and I, I almost, I almost think this is worse than the first game, right? Than the, the game two, right? Game two may be attributable, yes, to a misplay with the loss of the daring, maybe a little bit of bad luck, right? But this, they they clearly executed the exact strategy they wanted to do, and Shaft was a hundred percent ready for these guys. I think the initial deployments, um, which, you know, is a combination of planning and luck, I think. Um, Shaft's initial deployments were just tailor-made to counter that strategy. You had the, the lovely, just easily take A, uh, contest B, and then you've got the beautiful, like, multiple radar set up to, to counter a push. Um, yeah, I think Vor were on the back foot from the beginning of this match, just because of the deployments. 
It was also traded really poorly on the 9-10-9. They had, had one ship yes. advantage there, but they ended up losing yeah. two ships and most of their battleship there, and only got two kills themselves. Oh my, the torpedo kill on the Nevsky. Wow. He did manage to, that Napoli did manage to take one of the Nevskys with him before he went out. Well, yeah, the Nevskys were focusing on the Des Moines while the Napoli was shooting him, so uh, no surprise they, they lose one of them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Shaft with the reverse sweep here in our best of three, claiming games two and three. They will be moving on to the big grand international grand final versus the winner of the next match. So stats, hope for EU, that all EU final you guys are dreaming of, still a possibility. Yeah, got, got that tingly feeling for a double just, EU final. But of course, Ban CV will have to do the work first. Just a little so, bit of pressure yeah. on those guys. Yeah, so, so we'll see. But fantastic news for Shaft. Congratulations to Shaft. Well done. Very happy to see them going through. Um, and we'll pass back to Prague to prepare for the next match. I've felt a great disturbance in the force. As if millions of Twitch channel points suddenly cried out in terror. <laughs> were suddenly silenced. I feel something terrible has happened. Channel. I feel something excellent this, this has happened. Channel. Sponks. Channel. Sponks people who voted for Shah. Channel. 5.2 million channel points were just lost by people who voted 76% to for Vor to win over Shaft, and the unthinkable has happened. I mean, imagine not listening to your resident experts. We've been saying all along that EU were going to win, and... Well, look at you now. Look at you now. You're sat there with no channel points. I'm sat here with a massive grin on my face because... EU are going to the finals, and we might even get a second team in the finals. We have Ban CV versus Smile coming up soon. Yeah, Painzer is talking about being EU all the way. I guarantee you he put his points on Vor for the Switch channel. <laughs> <laughs> you think I have, like, oh no, I'm not allowed to use my phone right now. <laughs> it's like down there. It's like, channel points, channel points. That's probably Sarah, on the other hand, has been sat there all just staring at Twitch chat, reading out the best memes to us. Sarah, uh, stats bloke, or uh, sorry, C Raptor mentioned it. You may have your dream of an EU versus EU final, depending on how Ban CV versus Smile goes, because uh, Shaft now proceeds to the grand finals for Cots Internationals 13. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's it would be great to see a, a replay of the EU finals. I mean, last time we had a replay of the Asia finals in War versus FPM. Maybe we'll have the same with the EU here. Was the Ban CV versus Shaft final 3-0 series? I think it was a 3-0 for Ban CV. Well, we'll see if that uh, if that is a rematch possibility coming up later this evening slash afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, I think our graphic is slightly off. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> there we go. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing TBD play. We keep talking about TBD, but they just they just of course. So we stop, will stop beating the dead horse, please. There we go. It has been fixed. Vor will be playing for third place <laughs> or fourth place coming up after the break, uh, as Shaft moves on to the grand finals to face the winner of Ban CV versus Smile. So, gentlemen, because you've clearly demonstrated your non-bias, would you like to have a non-bias look at this replay here in a moment as it gets rendered? Of course. So, what happened exactly in that match that? Shaft did so incredibly well to take up. A they stopped that 9-10 line push the incredibly well. They they managed to trade that 9-10 line push so well. Excellent positioning from the Minotaur early to deny the daring. Then we had that excellent stopping of, of both the Kremlin and Moscow pushing up to dislodge the Des Moines who got a ram off at 44 HP. Was it was incredible. 44 HP. 44 HP and a dream. And you know. Yeah. They say that 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Maybe they were wrong. Maybe it was 44. Hey, man, 40, 44 HP was 43 more than he needed. So let's take a look at this replay now that we have this. So um, why are we only seeing... Uh, because somebody hasn't rendered it properly. Ah, glorious. Um, so yeah, we, uh, I, uh, you can see the red team came up against absolutely no opposition. Tech support, can we... Uh... <laughs> Okay. Look at this. I've actually never seen I... play look like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's interesting. Uh, funnily enough, uh, many of you, all of you, don't know this, but we are actually joined by one extra person in this room, 
uh, our awesome King of the Sea coordinator, Riedemel, made his way uh, all the way from Germany to come join us here at Prague, and he did, uh, he, he, he fucked up. <laughs> well, have you, would you like to come and defend yourself? Wait to throw him under the bus, but we know it will um, have the replay up in just a second with both teams included. This was the uh, this was the moment that Shaft engaged their cloaking devices. But I, can, I, can, I, can I just I take see. this opportunity, right, uh, to give a massive shout out to Not Your Father, who is the creator of this excellent Discord bot that can turn any replay or, um, if you so choose, any two replays into a you know like watchable like with clicky things and drawing on it instant replay just from replay files it files it creates these videos and they're fantastic um you can find this excellent bot on the official discord server at a number of community uh, discord servers and um, if you are very nice and ask him nicely he may even let you install it on your own clan or community discord server um but yeah big shout out to him uh, for this great value that he adds to um all of our king of the sea broadcasts and of course the community i can see the it's, it's rendering now so i'm gonna i'm gonna pull it up as soon as it's ready and then we're going to head into the next series in about five to seven minutes, depending on how long the teams need to get ready and assemble. Excellent, excellent. Yes, I can confirm that if you folks have any interest in playing competitive, uh, getting a hold of or at least utilizing this replay bot is extremely helpful for having your team uh, after a match go over and see what worked and what did not work. It will level up your competitive game very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and take a look at this replay here before we move on to the next match. Sarah, do you wanna run us through it? Yes, I am loading it up now. Very nice. And I have it here. So let's look at what happens here. We see that uh, Vor is very light on A. There's mm. almost nothing here. Mm. Yeah, well, there's basically nothing here, though. Napoli is way too far. The Montana is very far. The Shaft is in full control of A. And this will be very, very crucial in gaining more and more map control. I see a spreadsheet. We, we do. Just... Does Twitch see the spreadsheet? I, I, I don't think so, but oh. uh, we can talk about it briefly. <clears throat> Sorry. So uh, I'll take the spreadsheet. Let's look at the spreadsheet. I'd love to read the spreadsheet. I can't read the spreadsheet. Have... <laughs> we, we will quickly stop our replay analysis and talk about some data. We have some cool info that's coming. Um, so let's talk about it real quick. So this is actually uh, data aggregated about whom you folks think is going to place where in these uh, grand final games here in these in this last day. So we have for Shaft, Salty Hombres, and Fairly Trash, 14.55% of you said that Shaft would take first place, while 29.56 said second, and 55.9 said third place. For Panzer Vor, 31.98 said first, 46.38 said second, and 21.64 said third. For band CV, 37.66 for first, 27.19 for second, 35.15 for third, 42.74% for Smile coming in first place. There is no number for uh, number two for some reason, but 29.23 said third place. So if Bogsy is going to do a little bit of math in his head, that should round out to just about 72 point... Wait. 70, 71 point... How many times do I have to nine tell you seven not percent. do maths on stream? It's, it's been going terribly for us. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will see that. It, it looks as though uh, Vor has no ability to take first place. However, Smile, Ban, CV, and Shaft all still able to do that. Um, so we didn't quite get finished with this uh, replay. Yes, let, let's keep okay. it running here. Let's go here. through that real quick before we move we on. We see indeed that this minute of position is very, very crucial in denying this daring, the C cap, which will be extremely valuable. Later, as this minotaur is, oh, they will be forced to move this daring over to this side and the minotaur can move over to that side. I would like to point out that at some point around this mark, this Kremlin had a salvo at the bow of that, is it a Salem or a Des Moines? Salem. Salem. The Salem, and nothing hit. And we were all just like, what happened there? Like, did he just miss? Did he eat the island? I didn't quite catch what exactly happened, but we were all thinking that should have like been punished because remember, that doing zero damage, the Salem gets the ram off with 44 HP. If it has he had hit even a single a hit, yeah. like a single overpen would have changed the game there as the Salem ends up running the Moskva. 
if that Kremlin on the Ten line had been Quagsire, do you think perhaps those shells would have connected? Possibly. I think Henning would have gone for the ram. He would have just rammed the sailor most. That's, you know, it's the most effective strategy. Well, uh, despite, despite my horrendous joke slowing us down here, um, you can already see right now that the, the amount of time it's taken Panzer IV to move up here and annihilate the Salem has just been too long. Something happens. This Salem gets around, rams the Moskva, takes the Moskva down with it. With only 44 HP, as Painsword just said, that completely lets the air out of the attack here on this line. Vor still does not have a cap. They are over two, or about 200 points down, something close to that at this point. But worse yet, they are in a poor position and they don't have the force necessary on the 9-10 line to punch through a Minotaur, a Mosva, and that Kremlin. Conga line torps from the Daring just barely missed that Kremlin, which could have been decisive for just not rolling uh, the numbers they needed to at this point. And meanwhile, we see here that on the 2 line, these Nevskis with the gearing are pushing up very hard and will be punishing this Montana. Also, we have the Des Moines and Ohio here. Also able to push out this Montana. So we see that not only they're not, they're kind of losing on the 10 line, they're hard losing on the one, two line and they're losing their spawn. So this push not working out as it should have is extremely, extremely fatal for the strategy. I'm wondering like if this all comes back to that targeted Moss ban we talk so much about, like, not having the option to run around with these um, French destroyers means they haven't had the ability to do rapid rotations. They got pushed out of AB and they didn't do anything to reinforce that side. Shaft, as we said, they didn't over push. They, they pushed, they farmed the Montana down. They didn't go too aggressively. And we said that was going to be the key to their victories, not over pushing. They didn't push. They let Vaux push into them and they capitalized on it. Absolutely, they did. And gentlemen, it is time we need to start moving on because we have coming up Band CVTWA, the first place EU regional champions versus Smile, the first place CIS or Russian server champs. Let's take a look here. Band CV, obviously, multiple times COTS regional champions, having placed high in just about all of them. Smile, four times COTS regional winners, placing in knockout and second place places in multiple uh, uh, multiple tournaments, Lord have mercy, uh, both clans extremely high placing in clan battles for the entire run of clan battles. Marceau coming in as the first ban from ban CV, uh, opting not to ban the CV, but to ban the Marceau this time. Alexander Nevsky coming in from Smile. That was a little joke. We like to have fun here. We do a little trolling. Hotspot being banned <laughs> from ban CV. Smile also banning Hotspot because F Hotspot in particular. Gentlemen, Marceau and Nevsky being banned for Northern Waters. Ban CV versus uh, uh, Smile. Sarah, what is that going to do to the strategies for Ban CV and Smile to have Nevsky and Marceau banned? I think we're going to see some Mosva and Ragnar mostly. Ban like C looking at Ban CV's history, I think those two ships will be the go to standard for them. Yeah, I want to talk about the Marceau ban from Ban CV a little bit. They have banned that in every series. That's not a targeted ban against Smile. They just don't like to play against French destroyers. They were very heavily lobbying for the Clabert to be the global ban. Like, I'm aware that they've like spoke to several teams. Like, you're all on board with making Clabert the global ban. Yes, yes, we don't want that. No, nope, none of that. None of that. So, like, banning the Master out, it means that they don't have these ships that can just come in and interrupt their strategies. They want to get to their positions without having to deal with early spotting, early contests, all that kind of stuff. Well, so without a Marceau and a Nevsky on this map, Northern Waters, what do you expect, gentlemen? Uh, Painzor, let's start with you. What do you expect in terms of DD play? What do you expect in terms of cruiser play and positioning since we don't have that Marceau to quickly maneuver between the caps? Do you see Ragnar, Daring, Gearing? I see a couple of Moskvas parked around, and I also see a one-line push. So I expect a gearing on this map, just for the smoke, uh, gearing or hard grimo, just for the smoke screen across the top of A or the bottom of A, depending on which spawn they have, to try and get something to the island. Because mm -hmm. I think they play for the island, especially without having a French destroyer available. Defending the island is rather difficult, so they might even throw a Minotaur down there. So, Smile will be spawning north. Okay, so actually, south side is kind of a... The south side approach is a little bit worse because of how much further up the southern island is, which means you have to make your turn earlier, I think. Gentlemen, I think we, we it's worth pointing out right now uh, that we have 
another graphic telling us about the uh, channel points distributed amongst all of you betters out there. 4.5 million votes or 72% believe that band cv will take this series over smile coming in at 1.8 channel points or 28 percent we did see a huge surprise in uh shaft versus four we'll see if some of you eat your own channel points as we get ready here gentlemen prediction seraphis smile or band cv if you say band cv because they're eu no i actually Not think it's band cv because really their, good. their showing has been so so strong oh are they good really like, I noticed. I think, yeah <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to throw to see Raptor in stats. Let's go. I actually think. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our second semifinal match of today's international bracket of King of the Sea. As we bring you Smile, the RU champion versus Ban CV, the EU champion. Here on the north side of the map, Smile spawning in with Double Ohio, Double Des Moines, Napoli, Moscow, Gearing, Daring, and Ragnar. Stats bloke, what is Ban CV bringing to the table? Uh, I'm not quite sure. We have an Ohio, <laughs> a Conqueror, a Des Moines, a Worcester. And now I know you saw some Worcesters on NA. We didn't see a single Worcester on EU for the entire Oh yeah, we're going to have a talk. <laughs> so yeah, so Worcester, Napoli, and then four Destroyers. We've got two Gearings and two Ragnars. So tactically, this is going to be a very interesting match um, because it looks like Van CV are going for a very mobile, high DPM, but quite squishy lineup. Um, whereas yeah, Smile a bit more of a traditional lineup. So Henning, I, I know you're confused about the Worcester potentially, but uh, have you got any insight into why they might have done that? Hmm, I am thinking about if it's actually possible to spam the E1 island for mid with a Worcester. Because that might actually be a thing. Considering so, the booster is going to mid, yeah. I think it's going to be early mm -hmm. cap support on B. But after that, with a gearing smoke to pair, I think that's what they're going to do here. So we've got that early smoke out from M. Brandis's gearing, um, which is going to smoke the Worcester in towards B, as you just said. There is the Mosfa radar there uh, from Smile to cover that center cap from that island in D4. And that is not quite going to be in range yet of Anlay's Worcester, but we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, the gearing is turning the smoke towards A, so it does look like they're going to move the Worcester eventually over towards A. Okay. Smile, um, so... Smile's opting for a pretty split deployment here, kind of a 4-5 split. They're not interested in the B-cap at all. They've got no ships in there. Nothing that's going to interest in picking up. They've got Stepan's Moskva. We saw him in this position yesterday on this map. Obviously ready to contest it. Maybe cost them, buy them some time. But he's not going to be able to keep Brandis' gearing out of there forever. Other than that, Ohio, Napoli, Des Moines, Daring headed over towards A. And then you've got Ohio, Des Moines, Gearing, Ragnar over at C. Ferries Ragnar already into the cap, converting it over. So it's not going to be long before uh, Band CV realized that there's not much going on at B, and I think we'll see the gearing just duck into the cap there. Um, I think certainly if uh, Stepan's Mosvar gets spotted, the uh, the Worcester will be able to lob that island and start to lay down some fire. Smile probably know that the Worcester is in that smoke. I would have it's it's a reasonable conclusion to draw. Like even if you don't, I mean, you see the smoke. You look at the attendant, the team lineup. The assumption oh, is probably the Des Moines Booster. Anlay takes a wow. top off the left end. Uh, that was just very very unlucky dispersion. There are cross torps coming as well from the other side. Uh, whether they've got range, I'm not sure because they were launched by the daring as it went across. Mm, they probably no, they do not. They do not. Don't. Yeah, they shouldn't. Yeah. Um, Blood Legends Ragnar is spotted in the A camp. There goes the radar. Okay, shells out towards Medusko's daring. Yep, he got he got Medusko Ooh. to fire. That's going to allow his team to pitch in a bit. Although he does smoke right away. Yeah, Sneaky Snake got a lovely shot there yeah. from Napoli in towards the daring. That's. Probably going to push um, the daring off the cap long enough for Blood Legend to to actually cap. Although they are trying to blind shoot reset. They are. They're continuing to blind fire. Mm. There, they do get and a reset right get, there. It did get a reset. And more. 
hit him again a couple of times. <clears throat> Blood Legend is reversing up to try to find a position where they're not going to hit. I mean, Ragnar is a fabulous ship, but she doesn't handle the best, so you got to be gentle yeah. with her in such those kinds of situations. Uh, gearing in the center spotted by Stepan's radar in the Mosfar, north of the B cap. Embrand is being pushed off in the gearing. But once that radar's down, um, the gearing will certainly reverse back and take the cap. Now, have a quick look over at the one line at uh, Radzewski's Des Moines here. He had started to break for the island, but Sneaky's got his uh, his Napoli torps out there, and he's actually going to take one of these right on right amidships along with some AP. That's a big hit. Mm. And now has to turn to reach the island, which is going to give Sneaky Snake a another AP a shot. shot. Yeah, because they can still see him. Mm. This is always the danger of this push. Um, at some point, you have to make a turn, otherwise you just end up nose into the island, which is a bad idea. Um, Okay, the first volley didn't really do that much. That is a double fire by the looks of it. Yep, double fire. Oh, look at the booster spam. It's actually bad. What the fuck? Yep, the Worcester of Anlay just ducking in behind there the island is. there, starting to drop shots. This is not yep. a coincidence. They will have practiced this. They will know that those shells can reach that spot. Why are they getting yep. vision, though? They need vision on That's them. The they don't That's have it anymore. The the way the mechanics of the game work, if you can't see the cruiser behind the island, you can't hit gonna, it. Yeah, it's very difficult to get. You, you pretty much can't get the shells to arc over the way you want them to. No. So they've got to have eyes on him. And right now they don't. There's they'd actually have a to way. Shove somebody up, they'd have to shove somebody up on the south side of that island to proxy spot him or something along those lines. If you have the spot on, on the guy behind that island for once, you can press shift and X to sure. lock on, on that position and I, keep spamming even after he spots. But then if you decide, like, so Anlay's just uh, decided to put a few shells into Stepan. Once you've done that, once you've changed your, your lock, that's it. You've lost it. Yeah. So, uh, but the, but Anlay is there as a threat now. So they, they know every time that Des Moines gets spotted, it's going to be receiving Worcester shells. Six and a half minutes in. Smile with the early cap control has up to about 140-ish point lead. Still growing. They own C. Well, they did own C as, uh, as uh, Shriver's Ragnar is ducking into that cap. But they've got a pretty good lock on A. I feel like I, I feel like the smile position at A is pretty solid here. It is. Would but you it was like also Ben to be kiting flank. Would you like to know the official cast, the English speaking official cast's audience's uh, predictions for this match? I'm oh look at the gearing, look at Smite's gearing here. Yeah. He's gonna take top. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at uh, WG Buff over here. He's reversing into some of these. He's gonna have to take at least he's gonna take at least one. He can't dodge him. Yep. Um, I'm 100% positive, and of course I'm cheating because I can see the result, but I mean, just for the fact that you mentioned it was the English-speaking <laughs> cast, that alone yes. tells me I that Van CV is heavily favored. Yes, I, I deliberately <laughs> pointed out that this doesn't include the CIS audience. So Van exactly. CV, 74%, Smile, 26%, but that audience may be um, slightly biased. Driver maybe taking a torpedo? No, he missed. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> they actually get vision on the Des Moines now. Blood Legends Wagner now went into the, the gap to get the spot yep. here. There it is. Yep, they can see him now. Blood's going to have to duck out of some torpedo routes. Yeah, they they, they, they pulled Medu Medusco's up there, his daring up there to try and preserve his health for a while. I thought that was a really... I noticed them do that a few minutes ago. I thought that was a good play. Yeah, they don't have a radar that covers that spot, so they're going to have to do line of sight spotting. Uh, in order yeah, to make they can't, Anlay's Worcester work. They can't get the Ragnar close enough to radar him in there, so they're just going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Hey, okay, so we have Smile drawing ahead, just gone over 200-point lead, having had two caps ticking, although C is now contested. They're going to push Shriver off the C cap again. You had Fairy's radar going up, but Fairy's not firing... Shells coming in from Zidrin, as then uh, he was. Uh, there was a counter radar from the ten line. That's Kinemod, but uh, they've got eyes on Ferry, but they're just now starting to get shells on him. As Vile's gearing is moving in. I don't think yeah, they can hold like... C for much longer. It's going to yeah, be a lot Vile's... of back and forth, I think. Vile switching out for the Ragnar. Um, much lower concealment now that the radar is down. That's going to enable them maybe to keep. Um, fairy and the Ragnar spotted. Like now that the Wagner radar is done and 
Uh, Seed Raiden is the minus is too far away. I think C might flip here. Oh, and uh, the Napoli on the one line took a top. Uh, Dino Gaming. So my it's giving took another top on the bow here as well. Yeah, Smiles Gearing is getting pretty low up there. He can't really afford to get spotted. They're definitely they definitely focus him out if they if he does. Ban CV looking pretty solid. I think you're right. They are going to be able to brag C. It's a question of if how Smile reacts to it because I mean Ban CV is more or less walking away from A. They've kind of looked at the board, determined that position is not going to work. Yeah, they've left the Conqueror and the Napoli in kiting positions. That makes total sense. Um, the Napoli and the Conqueror actually pretty close still. They're bringing they Anlay over. Yeah, they're bringing Anlay's Worcester over towards the center island. I'm presuming that's to target probably the Des Moines if they get spotted of Zidrin north of Yeah, Charlie. probably just to try and keep them out of these caps at this point. Because um, you'll have two Ragnars, a Worcester, and a Des Moines around two different cap circles. If you can just hold them out of there, and you ought to be able to do that, you can you can make up this deficit. Snackman's going to have to be very careful in his Conqueror here. Um, WCG Riders Ohio, just n further up north up the four line, is going to have a broadside shot very shortly. Snackman is Snackman. angling enough for this to not get Citadel here. Here comes the shells. Well, he is angling now. He's turning south in anticipation of the shells, I think. Yeah. Eh, that's a solid not hit. Too bad. Nah, it's a solid hit, but not a catastrophic one. You can always go stealth and then wait for the next year. It's a Kong. Nine minutes to play. Band CV working their way back into this game on the strength of their cap advantage, but still down on points here. Still looking. Both teams they, still looking for a kill. Band CV are smoking the Worcester and the Ohio into... Actually, not the Ohio, but just the Worcester into Charlie here. Mm-hmm. So that island, position. That island in about E7, I think, is where he's, he's probably going to eventually end up. There's one there in the middle that's got a little bit more cover. So Anlay, in the meantime, is going to start to lay down some fire on the Mosfar and the Ohio, get some fires running on those two over in the middle. So Smile here, they've got one cap. Uh, they still have a points lead, but that's uh, evaporating quite quickly. They need to try and get into B. C is definitely not an option right now. So they're going to bring the Daring over to the north of B. They've got the Ragnar there as well. Well, they've rotated They've rotated the Ohio back a little bit. We saw that earlier, WCG Rider. And they're bringing Medusco's Daring over to B as well. When Medusco steps onto the cap, he's going to still be outside of Anle's Wooster radar range. So it's probably going to be down to Blood Legend. In fact, they've just spotted Blood Legend now. Medusco knowing, realizing that he's there. I'm waiting for the counter radar, but I haven't seen it yet. I wonder if Blood's radar is already down. Interestingly, they've turned Angelstone around to the Ohio, uh, who's heading back underneath B. Oh, Angelstone just, just took a, a big hit from somebody. Yep. Um, I think Angelstone was repositioned to to add to the the weight of fire that's going against the Mosfar and the Ohio sitting north of B, but unfortunately paid for it. Less than a hundred points now as Medusco does step onto the extreme northwestern corner of the B-cap for the moment, out of the range of everyone's radar. Band CV has no way to detect him other than the old-fashioned way of getting up there and spotting him on the surface. I think Blood is think going he... in for a way yeah. here. Right, that's what I thought, but he's just turned away. I, I assumed that Blood would radar him when he got spotted oh, a no, minute no. ago, but he didn't. It's it's going to be Striva. Striva is going in from the seaside. He is, but is it going to come in time? Well, it's going to be dangerous on Medusco, actually. Sriva so doesn't uh, really uh, have anything that can prevent him from going up here. Medusco is about, he's grabbed the cap. He's going to bail out. There's the radar from Striver. A blind shot from Angel Stone's not going to come up with anything. I feel like they could have coordinated that a little better, but it is what it is. Striver's As now Striver to... is there. Yeah, this Ragnar's going to have to do some ducking and diving to get safe. That's going to be a lot of incoming for that. Yeah, a whole lot of shells looking out there for Striver as Medusco even swapped to the AP knowing his HE wasn't going to do a whole lot. So that dice oh, is oh. actually really, really good for Smile. It's huge for Smile if they can bag this kill. They seem to know it. Lots of shells going out that way. Striver trying to go dark. Hasn't managed it yet. They get yeah. him. That's a huge that kill was, for Smile. 
That was designed to be a double Ragnar trap for the Daring, but it just didn't work. No. And now Ben CB needs to actually do something really, really fast. Yep, over 900 points now for Smile. They own B, they own A. I'm not sure how Ban CV is going to get back into B. They can't get into A. They don't have the forces in position or the time to do it. They also I think need they're going to have to shove Angelstone. They, they they could use a kill, but I think they're going to have to shove Angelstone into this cap just to slow it's down. It's 60 points uh, until they lose here. They need to like get yeah. a kill right now. So Blood Legend will step into B. That's going to slow down the points very slightly. Yep, that'll give uh, them some time. But they got to get couple... a, You're right. They got to bag a kill. There, there's uh, low health Ohio, there's a low health gearing, but the trouble is getting them spotted. Uh, Zidrin is on 30k and receiving all of the focus fire right now. There are torps in. He's actually face spotted right now. By Kitty Mod. Zidrin could go down. I, the torps aren't a danger. If Zidrin could put out the fire, oh. he can go dark, but he hasn't managed it yet. Guinea mods Des Moines just got absolutely smacked. Zidrin's on 6k and falling. Smile at 970 points. He's going out. They're going to get him. There it is. A huge yeah, kill them, for Ban CV. Gives them a bit of breathing space back down to 920. But they can't afford to lose many ships. They need another kill, like, actually. They, yeah, so they, if they can't afford if to lose smile, anything here. If you smile, you take your low health ships, you make them go dark, and you take them away. Yes, absolutely. And I think it looks like they're going to focus on Anle's Wooster now, who's pushed up in between the A and the B cap. Sorry, the B and the C cap. Yeah, and he's on 2,800. He's going out. Yep. This when they, put them very when they get this kill, that's it. That's 980. They've given up B, but it doesn't matter anymore. They'll win on A cap in seconds. 990 points reached. Can Ban CV get anything? No, nope, it's not going to happen. Yeah, Everything is safe. Happen. Yep. Smile's going to claim game one here. One more tick. There we go. There it is. There it is. The RU champions looking really good today. A very, a very just methodical and technical game from both teams, right? We didn't see a kill until what the 16, 14 minute mark, something like this, fifteen minute mark. It was a really, really slow game. Controls that's by both teams. But I Northern feel like yeah. waters. And I, I don't feel like I don't feel like the Worcester strategy really paid off quite as well as they were hoping. Um, Agreed. I didn't I didn't really see Anley's Worcester laying down as much damage as I would have liked. Um, so maybe they'll they'll rethink that strategy. If they were planning to do something similar on another map, maybe they'll uh, rethink that slightly. Yeah, Northern Waters so seems well. to tend to play out that way in terms of just the very technical, methodical. Like I, you don't see a lot of. They do happen. I've seen some really interesting, exciting, you know, back and forth battles on this map, but it, they tend to be more focused on cap control, particularly over there on the one line. Well, let's uh, let's send it back to the studio and see what Boggsy, the analysis desk, have to say about this game. Game one concluded of Ban CV versus Smile, and Smile was too strong for Ban CV coming in with the win in this best of three series. Uh, this is this is amazing. As I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is so far the record for the most number of channel points put into a bet, with 9.2 million channel points being put into this prediction, and it was 76 percent. Is that right? 76 percent in favor of Ban CV, and they are 74. Excuse me, 6.8 million for Ban CV, 74 percent. That is amazing. And Smile coming away with a very methodical victory here. Uh, Seraphis, Painzor. Oh, hey, let's go to this real quick. So, folks, for those of you who don't remember, uh, what Ban CV and Smile are playing for right now is to decide whom goes up against EU's Dark Horse Shaft, who we just watched uh, incredibly beat last year's international champions, Panzer Vor from the SEA or Asian server. Right now we have Ban CV coming up against Smile as the heavy favorite and Smile going ahead to take game one. So, uh, Seraphis Painzor, please, did we just see, did we just see the ghost of NA coming up in this match? <laughs> we did actually. This was something I commented on earlier and this seemed to be a very NA style game that was played by both teams. It was very passive. Both teams were playing very far back. 
And also, they brought a Wooster, which we've only really seen on NA. We've not seen Wooster compositions being run on EU very much at all. Uh, I don't recall seeing in Wooster in any of the games I cast in EU regionals. So I'm very confused. Well, it it held down the middle for a while. I'm just not entirely sure what its purpose was. Is it some sort of like anti anti Ragnar device? I I think their their plan was indeed to dislodge the the Morn and the Island that you can see right now. Um, unfortunately, I think they had a little bit of an issue keeping him spotted, not being able to lay down enough pressure on the Des Moines there, and later just keeping pressure on the Ohio, keeping pressure on the Moskva behind the island. They just weren't able to do it constantly. Well, that's the thing as well. Normally, on that one line island, you would be able to provide vision onto it by putting your own Des Moines or something there. Instead, but, but, but through Hydro and Radar through the island, I mean. Instead, they brought a Napoli, but they never really got their Napoli up to the island for proxy spotting. Uh, so it ended up in this situation where you have this Wooster who can't get the salvos in the middle. We also had the Ragnar occasionally looking to try and find some salvos at the spot of the Des Moines, but he was just buried. Like, sorry, the Napoli. It was just buried, like, right at the back and unable to be dislodged. Smile certainly playing a very methodical, very calculated game, not allowing Ban CV to take any progress uncontested. Lots of really nice torpedo salvos, really nice shots, and uh, lots of trading, as you guys were saying, very reminiscent of NA, which is very much a control and trade style that they have going there. Um, unusual, as I, I tended to see Smile as a very aggressive team, but they were very calculated and very careful this time. Um, just a little too much for Ban CV to overcome in the amount of time that they had. Uh, I think it might be worth pointing out, fellas, uh, while we wait for the replays to come in, exactly where we're at in the tournament. Just a moment ago, we spoke about uh, what this matchup is for. Uh, if you don't mind bringing up that graphic for us again real quick, just to take a look at. Uh, this is Ban CV versus Smile. This is the second matchup of the day. The first was Shaft versus Vor, uh, EU versus SEA. Now we have EU versus CIS, or the Russian server. Um, the winner of this will go on to face Shaft. The loser will go on to face Panzerbohr to determine who comes out as third place and fourth place, respectively, as a good sum of money does, in fact, uh, depend on the difference. Uh, here we have, obviously, the, the difference between third and fourth place is $2,500 to, uh, to split between your teammates. That's a lot of Mikasas, fellas. That's a lot of Mikasas you can buy your friends and your teammates. Tier two Mikasas. So, obviously, uh, first place, which will be either Shaft or the winner of this match here, is competing for $17,500 US versus second place, which is $10,000. So, it matters. Uh, obviously, as you folks may have known, yesterday we found out our fifth through eighth place winners, which were Kill Steel con Convoy Mates, uh, KSC from NA, Paid PayPal Enjoyers from EU, 07 Devastating Strike from NA, and Minus One S Cute Boys in Dresses, each walking away with $2,500 each, as they were knocked out yesterday. So, um, I believe we have the replay. Seraphis. Yes. Would you kindly start up this replay and tell us how it was that the Russian wall prevented the Europeans from taking the ACAP ever? How'd they do that? Let's first let it play out a bit so we can see the deployment. Bad CV strategy mostly re relied here on this booster. This booster was supposed to put on the herd both on this island, on this Moskva, and potentially anywhere else that it could rotate to. Unfortunately, I don't think they achieved this here. So you can see already that Ragnar. You can see the Ragnar here getting pushed away by the aggressive positioning from this Des Moines. Even though that Des Moines took a lot of damage early on, this basically means that the Rag cannot, this Rag here cannot face up against that Daring. So, uh, which means Ban CV rotates the Ragnar knowing that essentially it's a lost cause, so the Ragnar comes on over. By the way, you can double click to ping. New technology just being discovered live this morning. What's that? What's that emote like? A funk? Is that what that one is? That's what I feel like right now. I feel like concern. Really major concern. Yes. Sorry, Sarah. Please continue. As as we let it play out, I think Ban CV starts to shift their focus more towards the seaside, where they realize they can get this cap, and they eventually do. After a long struggle, they do manage to cap this out, and now it's about holding, holding out. Unfortunately, for them, it's difficult to hold on when 
the the let's say the arms of the Russians are closing in around them. That sounds really sinister. That sounds the iron <laughs> the iron arms. Yes, 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 the iron arms are closing around <laughs> on them. We shall give you love. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, well, Smile definitely wanted to I, give some love there. I think I think our next game is almost ready, gentlemen. So I'm gonna go ahead and oops, sorry, I'm gonna let this uh, continue so we can just sort of see Band CV and Smile both playing very very well. Nobody giving up too much, but as you can see, Band CV just starts to get desperate. They have to make something happen. They do actually convert some of this push into kills, but Smile very wisely just melts back and causes uh, Band CV to run out of time. Uh, well, so first game of this series going to Smile. Band CV, obviously the heavy favorite here according to Twitch chat. So we'll see if they can pull up the second one. Next map is going to be on Trap. Trap, of course, is relatively new. It is diagonally arranged with its cap zones and the cap zones are huge. This is an area denial map. This is gonna be uh, heavily destroyer focused, but we oftentimes see pushes up around the sea cap. So. Gentlemen, we got to go right to predictions. Painzor, Smile versus Band CV. It's going to be exactly the same in the previous season. We're going to go down 0-1, and then we're going to take a 2-1. You sound very confident. Of course. Seraphis, what do you think? This is actually Smile's map pick, so I actually think this might go over to Smile, but I do want to see Band CV take at least one game so we can go to the game three. Fair enough. I'm not, I don't have a dog in this fight, so I'm just thrilled to see it, guys. Let's go to Statsbook and see Raptor. Take it away. Except we're still on. Game two of this international semifinal match between Band CV and Smile, as Band CV's looking for a win to keep their hopes of a bigger slice of the cash prize pool alive here in the international bracket. Spawning to the northwestern side of Trap, Band CV bringing an Ohio, a Kremlin, Des Moines, Napoli, Moskva, and four destroyers, Gearing, Daring, Double Ragnar. Stats What has Smile brought to the game? In the southwest of the map, Smile have Ohio, Kremlin, Des Moines, Double Napoli, uh, Mosfar, Gearing, and then two Ragnars, the same. Um, Henning, anything that jumps out at you? Actually, not really. This looks like a pretty standard no. lineup from both of them. Bansivy going with 40 Ds, which is also not super unusual. Like last cuts, we saw a bunch of uh, like Matsuo wolf packs going for C here. Bansivy is kind of doing... Uh, no, Smile is actually doing it here from the south side. And Band CV is also doing some kind of DD wolf pack, all going to see. So that's going to be interesting right at the start. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be and I'm... make contact. I think the it's going to be the daring that's the target for the smile Ragnars. Um, the other way around, probably it's just going to be the lead Ragnar of smile that gets focused. Um, three versus two. I mean, I know who I put my money on, but. And, yeah, and I'm going to be happens. curious to see how Smile uses their Napolis, right? We saw, we saw, I think it was, I think it was 1S or Vore. I think it was Vore yesterday on this map with the, the triple Napoli, the sharks that you talked about um, uh, swimming around the map. Might have been 1S. I can't remember. It was one of the Asian teams ran that little Napoli kind of wolf pack, the, the 2 0 in tandem. I'm curious to see if Smile has kind of taken a play out of that book or developed something new of their own to use with those ships. We're seeing gearing of Smile heading over towards the A cap. Uh, the gearing of Band CV also going up there. We've got Des Moines and Moskva supporting the Band CV gearing. Uh, the Smile gearing is supported by a Des Moines and Moskva and the Kremlin uh, because Band CV have left their Ohio mid. We're going to have first contact at sea here in second. Shriver's daring is about to pick up one of these Ragnars. There it is. He's picked up Fairy now. He's also lit on the surface. As the rumble begins at sea. So Blood Legend not in the fight yet. There we go. Blood Legend just opening up. Focus is on Fairy. And on point by the looks of it. Although Shriva before going dark took quite a lot of damage there in the daring. Does take a huge chunk. They're getting decent work in on Fairy. But probably not as much as they would have hoped for this little play. He is down to about half as the Napoli and Kremlin way up on the eight, the B line are also chipping in. Oh, there he goes. Blood now it's starting to really show. Yeah, Blood Legend uh, using the daring smoke there, but Point not able to get cover. Oh, Point so, looking rough. Yeah, and now the cruisers are turning up, so you've got the two Napolis dying. Fairy has started to be as well, though. It might be a trade. Yeah, yeah. I think trade. I think we're, yep. An early Ragnar trade here. Both teams down a ship just that quickly, <laughs> less than three and a half minutes in. 
Okay, so now we have two Napolis uh, just circling through the camp. We're going to get to see that uh, that sea server style double Napoli shark division. Um, I'm quite excited about that. We'll see what they can do with those two Napolis. Although Kremlin AP out blind on the smoke. Ooh, oh, lovely wow, look there. at that. Look at that. Now, something else Band CV's did, doing, right? The, 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 obviously, the Ragnar play was coordinated. They hoped, they didn't want to lose point, but they did. Bull Legend hangs around to work that cap. Survivor rotating back to B. He's going to pick that up uncontested because, well, Smile has nothing in the middle of the board. They've gone super hard to the J line as well. Buff clan mates down there with Des Moines, Moskva, and Kremlin as they try to envelop the A cap. Yeah, with the added weight of the Kremlin down there, um, this should be in Smile's favor. They they both have the ability to do, you know, gearing smoke plus radar. Um, it's both double radar, so but that Kremlin is going to tip the balance. However, you do have Angelstone sitting there in B. Indeed. Uh, let's just have a look. Which way is Angelstone looking? Angelstone is looking... Yeah, is absolutely looking down towards A. So... If you are Ryder's Kremlin, or you're either of those two cruisers, that is definitely a risk. I don't think as a Kremlin you're really worried about that. You're not going to take that much damage from Ohio, like maybe a bunch of pens, but that's kind of it. The Moskva and the Moi need to be careful though. Yeah, but they are getting some Go ahead, Tyrion. Ben? I was going to say, Band CV looking really strong here early. Five minutes gone, they own A, they own B, they're about to pick up C. A ton of pressure on Smile Hill early. They got to figure out what they're going to do to, to kind of to make a play and get back into this. They are upside down 100 points and continuing to fall. Looks like their plan is to abandon the sea cap. That is surprising yeah. to me. I'm wondering whether these two Napolis are heading towards Angelstone. Looks that way, doesn't it? Because Medusco is right there with them. So yeah, they're turning in. Shriva's just left the north of the cap, which leaves Angelstone all alone in B. Uh, two Napolis rushing in Ohio. That's definitely uh, dangerous for Angelstone, for sure. It's going to be... Let, let's just see what DNO does going into the cap. But DNO's actually slowing down. Probably waiting for Zidrin to catch up. I'm just interested to see which way around the island they're going to go, or whether they're going to go and park just opposite Angelstone. Ragnar's going in as I also well. Have to, I also have to wonder if they know what direction Angelstone's bow is pointing. They may not. They may not have spotted him for a while. Yeah, I don't think Angelstone has been spotted for quite a while. He's spotted right now. They've just seen him. Yep. There goes the Ragnar. Yep, Ragnar radar going up, so they can, that little bit of informational radar in B as the Napolis are spotted by Shriver's Daring. Okay. Kremlin shells coming in. Yeah, Snackman's got great shots on these Napolis. First volley not coming to anything, unfortunately. Uh, Pretty much going to drive Napoli. them to the south. The rear Napoli smoking up. Uh, Dino slowing down to get inside that smoke screen. Which is going to cover them before Snackman reloads, although shells out from Snackman's Kremlin. I, I, those don't look aimed to me. No, here they're blind shots. He gets a little bit of chip damage, but not much. But if in both. Look at him starting. trade off smoke. Right as Zidrin smokes expires, Dino puts his up. That level oh, of coordination. Going. Oh yeah, they're Angel's, going after they're going after going. Angel. There's talks going coming and Angelstone has already turned away. Yeah, I don't and of course Napoli doesn't have access to Hydro, I don't think, does she? Pretty sure she doesn't. Oh, they're gonna take no. a whole bunch of and, these. Yeah. Each of them okay, take a dwarf. But that's taken the momentum out of their push, and also Angelstone's has. Has turned away. Angelstone's out. He is he is going out here. They're going to be able to get him out of the cap. But this leaves... Blind with, Citadel. With, with Angelstone uh, removing the possibility of doing any kind of rush, these two Napolis are kind of... Well... High and dry. They got, a, they got a Blind Citadel on DNO, and then Zidrin is out of the smoke before it quite expires. Both of them, both of them lit now as the SAP secondaries start to chew up Angel as well. Isn't that boy's taking damage. a lot of damage though? Yep. Oh, there are, oh man, DNO with another huge hit. Now one from the south takes him out. Just like that, Zidrin. man, CB up a ship. Yeah, and Zidrin's not gonna be far behind, I think. Yep, there we go. 
but look how much damage they did to Angel on his way out of the cap. It's, it's not worth it, though. You traded two no, cruisers I, I, for that. I, I, I'm not saying the trade was worth it. My point is simply that in in the little bit of kind time they had him under his under their guns, they did a tremendous amount of damage to that guy. I mean, so, it smile smiles clearly on the back foot now. Like they're down two ships, they're off two caps. I just don't I don't know. So Ban CV will now uh, start to close that net around the top of uh, Bravo from Charlie. They might They'll still send... do his angel to the Wagner spam. Yep, actually. Kytus is going to have to try and hang on to that rock for as long as possible. I don't think they can extract Kytus now. I think Kytus is just there until that ship goes down. If Medusco can finish off Angelstone, that's a huge kill for Smile, but Angel's just running. I think yeah, eventually Angel's... he's going he's, he's gonna to be able to get away. Angel's trying to go dark. Um, the Ragnar is chasing, trying to keep him spotted. Well, and he, he took a shot at the Ragnar a minute ago. He is on fire again. Some more shells coming in. That looks like a Moskva salvo. Puts the fire out. Still not okay. dark yet. That is actually yeah, reversing to get shots here. If, if Angelstone knows that there's a heal coming, um, keeping shooting makes sense. Um, he's just gone dark. Shell's still landing. 2-7. Looks like he makes it away on 2,700 HP unless one of these last couple shells lights him on fire. No dice. And so now Smile has to try to find a way to clean this mess up if they can. They're probably going to get Kytus here. His Moskva north of A under a tremendous amount of pressure. But after that, you're going to end up in this fight over the B cap and you're down on firepower, down on ships. Yikes. Yeah, and Ben TV already relocated all their forces from the into the B camp. Yeah, I mean, you're 600 points down and you basically have to get in here and fight. And Ban CV are trying to take down Maniacs Ohio just south of the B camp before uh, Smile can kind of regroup at A. But that's that started off being, I think it was a 75,000 hit point in Ohio, so it's going to take them a while. Well, and now you see Sneaky's Napoli secondary is also ch also chipping in there. That's how close he is. I don't think he's gonna live long. It's a daring uh, like, uh, and Napoli and a Kremlin. Yeah, that's a, a lot. I, yeah, Maniac's getting like four on one. I just don't see him living all that long. By the time his team gets up there to bail him out, he's gonna be dead. Angelstone has uh, got to a heal and has turned around on twenty thousand hit points, running another heal. So when Angel Stones comes back in, um, that's a pretty decent health pool to work with. Yep. When you consider that he was down to uh, like 2,000. It's not bad. So he's down, down to 2K, back up to 30. He's on his second heal now. 32K and climbing. Okay, I think we're going to see Maniac go down. Yep. Any second now. Oh, no, gets to a heal. My yeah, he does get longer. to a heal. That'll, yeah, he'll live a few seconds I, longer, but... I don't think that's going to help, though. It's not. And the Napoli secondaries do finally seal the deal there. As we're over 930 points for Ban CV, guys, I think we're looking pretty good for that game three. Yeah, there's no way back. Even if Ban CV was like I just, two ships here, I just, like immediately. Well, I, just, I just don't see it. I mean, there's no way, there's no way Smile's able to step onto the B cap. That alone means the game ends in about 30 seconds or less. Yeah, and there's no obvious kills. Snackman is very, very no. healthy. Sneaky Snake is a long way away and nicely angled. Yeah. Um, the, the Angel Stone is probably the, the easiest target, but even then, ah, still 40k. That's, that's, that's still a 40,000 point battleship. You're not going to kill that. Yeah, Medusco. Medusco. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the Ragnar's going to go and, down anyway. I say, it looks like Medusco's going to go out, and that'll seal the game when that finally happens. One more shell, which happens first. Wow. Points tick out <laughs> the first. Time ends. Medusco lives with the shells that would kill him in the air and falling. Well, cost just is like game. That. I know. Back, Another back game to back game threes. Love it. So the second semifinal, uh, the winner of this, of course, will go through to uh, to face the other U team, uh, Shaft, uh, in the grand finals. So um, we'll go back to Prague now, and they can talk you through what to expect in game three of Bansi V versus Smile. Three, three, 
three games for you and me. That's right, number two. This is the second time we are going into a third game in this international series after an extraordinary game between Band CV and Smile that the Europeans have actually managed to snag and bring it back and not lose their hopes of going on to face Shaft. Very, very exciting game as two Ragnars bit the dust right out of the gate. Painzor, what do you got in your hand there? I think the Ragnars for Ban CV at the very start of the game might have been a little bit too uh, spaced out. The engagement started before the rare um, Ragnar could get into it, which meant that they lost a lot of health on point a lot earlier than they should. But towards the end of that fight, like they lost very little on point compared to how much the enemy Ragnar was doing. And they actually, like to get a trade out of that coming so early in the fight with so little HP, he did very well just to dodge those last few salvos. And then the game progressed from there and it ended up at a very interesting situation where Van CV were owning all three caps and then we moved everything to the B cap. Tell us about what happened to the B cap. <laughs> so we, we saw that uh, <coughs> Smile managed to uh, reposition all their ships from C all the way back to B where they pushed the Napolis and I think it was the gearing into the cap. Um, they rushed down Angelstone and they almost killed him, but not quite. And both of the Napolis ended up dying due to a great blind salvo from El Snackman in the Kremlin. So, um, yeah. The, uh, the it Napolis. didn't end up working out for them, unfortunately. The double Napolis from Smile uh, took several really gnarly hits from a blind shot from Al Snackman while in smoke, and then uh, getting essentially torpedoed by a daring. Although they each one only took one, they did uh, it did it put them into the fight with the Ohio and B at a disadvantage, and they were not able to actually translate that uh, push into a kill on the Ohio. So we've got the replay here. Gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, Sarah, do you want to go ahead and walk us through this a little bit? Yeah, let's look here at uh, the C cap. We see here that Point loses a lot of HP, but so does Fairy. And if we go further a little bit, they both end up going down. However, Smile decides to pull back completely from the flank and move on towards B. So right here, I wanted to just illustrate something. Um, uh, at this point, we have a we, uh, blah, 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 blah. Smile came up with two specific strategies for how to win on this map. One was to push double Ragnar, double Napoli up here, up to the, I'm pinging. Why can't I not ping? There I am, there I'm pinging now. Yeah. Um, was to push up the 9-10 line, perhaps swing it around C, make that very strong push that we've seen a number of times with those really strong breakthrough ships, which is double Napoli. We've seen this before in regionals, we've seen this in internationals, where two Napolis together are so, so, so powerful. Uh, while at the same time, they had a smoke train. They had a crawling smoke over here threatening the A-cap, which was slow for sure, but ultimately very strong. So at this point, however, they decide to rotate the double Napoli back to the B-cap. Yeah, and if we just let this play out, because we are a little bit short on time, they both manage to go, they both end up going down. The Mosfa here does go, go down, but unfortunately, the points are too far in Ben CV's favor, and they end up winning. We're gonna have to get you some lozenges during the intermission. My voice was already not uh, not there to start, <laughs> but it's uh, deteriorating even further. Seraphis? Yes? I wonder why. <laughs> last night, last night, Seraphis' uh, voice was re was replaced by a series of malt beverages. Can we, can we it it magically it? disappeared, I don't... Uh -huh. Magically, I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, and it downstairs brought, brought. <laughs> congratulations. Uh, while the two gremlins here in the office uh, continue to giggle about this, let's say congratulations to Band CV on taking this to a game three uh, as we move on to Land of Fire to see who exactly goes on to face the EU team shaft for the grand finals. Um, so uh, as we get prepped for game three here, Please, please, please remember that we have Twitch drops going right now every 90 minutes. Or sorry, all you need is 90 minutes to get a COTS container to try and finish out your COTS collection. If you haven't done so yet, you can also go to the Armory to pick up three for 2,000 community tokens each. And after the middle here, please, please, please stick around because we're, uh, sorry, not after the middle, after this match, please stick around. We're going to have a quick intermission where we will give you guys some very exciting, exclusive content that I'm thrilled to talk about. Uh, a whole bunch of new stuff to come out on the next dev vlog, so don't go anywhere after this match. Um, next map, Land of Fire. We've seen this map be played a number of ways. Lots can happen very quickly on Land of Fire as it is somewhat of an aggressive map. So, 
Seraphis, why don't you keep your voice? Uh, why don't you keep your voice? Painzor, let's talk about a little bit about how the A and B cap work, as those tend to be where the most action happens on Land of Fire. Yeah, we have seen some highlight reel footage of Ban CV on this map in the past. There was a very, very famous incident involving a certain Rain Shimakazi over at the A cap landing several torpedoes onto Mr. Blood Legend in his Des Moines, and then several more onto Mr. Strangers 123 in his Harugumo, single-handedly winning them that. They have learned from this. They know how to position better around the A-cap, and they shouldn't be taking anywhere near as much damage. But Ban CV are also very he like very heavily invest in the 10 line on this map. The joke that we were making earlier on about the Swift and Silence 10 line Kremlin, that's actually a thing for Ban CV. Maybe they don't run Swift and Silence, but the 10 line Kremlin is a very common thing. We often see ship Salem's usually parked around what Lord Zath has affectionately called Fidget Spinner Island over yes. on the 10 line. <laughs> Fidget, Fidget Spinner Island, that's right. Now, Fidget Spitter Island has a lot of interesting Salem play, Des Moines play, and then it eventually somebody has to come break up the party, and it's usually a Kremlin. The Kremlin will force the ships out and to either make a heroic play or just die trying. Yep. And the, the B cap, generally pretty safe. We'll see a couple of the destroyers parked up there, and then something will be parked above or below with the B cap. Usually. Let, let's hope we don't see any. Uh... Darings that uh, take torpedoes because they forgot how to forget they have hydro. Look, it's a very it's a very <laughs> high skill level gameplay we're seeing here. It's very understandable that occasionally people forget to press the button that stops them from dying. <laughs> <laughs> Words <laughs> of wisdom from Painzor, yeah. of course. Imagine having a button that stops your ship from dying and you don't push it. <clears throat> Imagine watching the VOD of this uh, broadcast later in case you missed. Vor versus Shaft, where Vor indeed managed to incredibly cross torp a very aggressive Kremlin, but in doing so, forgot to press his hydro button and was re, uh, retaliated against with torpedoes that actually sank him a few minutes into the match. So let's go ahead and talk about what the rest of the day looks like. Right now, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Nope, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been some quality content. Right, right now we are in the second semi-final of the day. We are watching Ban CV from Europe versus Smile from the CIS server. They are competing to see who goes on to face Shaft, the EU team who previously defeated Vor, which who uh, Vor was number one internationals in COTS 12 last season. So big, big, big stakes here as Ban CV and Smile try super duper hard to uh, close this out at two to one uh, before we go to break where we will have, again, as I said, some exclusive announcements about new content, new ships, and new events for the winter time. So don't go anywhere because I'm really excited and I want to talk to you about it. So as you can see, this is a, a whole list of uh, what we've been watching this weekend uh, early on. Maybe I could get Mr. Conway to move that tiny little graphic so that I could see who played yesterday. Danke schön, Mr. Conway. Uh, we, we began the day with uh, the... <laughs> I don't speak German. Um, we began the day with Shaft versus Solo. Shaft won that, of course, to go on to face KSC, the number one seed from NA and newcomer to GOTS Internationals. Shaft did away with KSC to move on to face Vor, the heavy favorites to at least go to finals this time. And in a major, major surprise, Shaft put Vor away. Level versus Paid went on to uh, a paid victory who went on to face Vor. And of course, Vor went on to lose to Shaft. Uh, 07 devastating strike from NA faced Magic from, Magic was CIS, correct? Yes, yes. Heard. Magic was CIS. 07 triumphed over them and uh, went on to face Ban CV, which was very exciting for us. Uh, 07 lost the first and then barely lost the second to Ban CV. Uh, in the second game, we were hoping that was going to go to three, but unfortunately it did not. Ban CV went on to, of course, face Smile, which is what we're watching now. Minus 1S went on to face uh, Bunks, the number three seed from NA. They triumphed over, but were then knocked out in style by Smile, who is now facing Ban CV, who won the first game. And now we are on to game three, as uh, Smile very much controlled Ban CV the first game, kept them out of the caps, and won on time. While uh, Ban CV obviously taking a very strategic victory here in number two. So the question is, who's going to go for game three? So uh, just a little reminder of what we're playing for today. 
uh, the fifth through eighth place contestants. KSC, Killsteel Convoy, Mains Paid, PayPal, Enjoyers, 07, Devastating Strike, and Minus One S Cute Boys and Dresses have all gone home with $2,500 hard cash American. Which I don't know if it's hard cash or whether it's some other form mm. of payment. I shouldn't have said that. PayPal. PayPal. <laughs> hard, hard PayPal. They Which will be got at least one of I our mean, teams yes, enjoys they will PayPal. Be PayPal enjoyers. At least one of our teams enjoys PayPal. Uh, however, we still have up for grabs fourth place through first place. Uh, fourth place and third place will be fought over by Panzerbor and whoever loses from this next matchup. Second place, of course, $10,000 USD will be paid out to either Shaft or the winner of this matchup that we are about to to see get concluded while $17,500 goes to the winner. And as well as the title of winner of COTS 13 Internationals. So um, perhaps we can go ahead and look, here we go, Land of Fire. Um, we're still waiting a few moments for our teams to be ready here, so uh, bear with us. But um, we've been seeing a lot of Napoli's, gentlemen. This has been happening. I'm thrilled to it because when the Napoli came out, I. I was such a fan, and we hadn't really seen how it worked out in competitive yet. I heard a lot of people talk about how it's, well, it seems like on paper, it's, what does it really do? And I sort of went, well, we haven't been able to see this yet, guys. We haven't seen, uh, there was no uh, clan battle available for Napoli to really function in. So we haven't seen it in competitive. And now we are seeing the strength of it, especially when they get paired up as two. You saw how fast those two Napolis were able to melt that Ohio, even a rear-facing Ohio with those sap secondaries. Are we going to see, do you think, are we going to see any Napolis going up the 10 line? Or do you think it's just going to be someone trying to imitate Quagsire of the Pond going up the 10 line in the crowd? I, do you remember at the sort of the, the sort of day one where I said I was not convinced about the Napoli and I was going to have my mind changed? Well, it, it, yeah, my mind has changed. I think Napoli is actually really good. I think we didn't see it used quite well in regionals where I just said, well... Why not bring Venezia instead? It does the same thing better. But in regional uh, internationals, it has shown me that, yes, if used properly, Napoli is quite a force to be reckoned with. Painzor, do you have feelings on the Napoli? I don't have feelings on it. It's, to me, it's still quite a boring ship until it gets within seven kilometers. And usually when you get something, is it Napoli's secondary range seven or nine? 8.3 mm, minutes. Yeah. 8.3. And you run secondary module on it because that's the thing, right? Damn well, uh, no, 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 like the the module. Yeah, yeah. Slot three. I don't. I, I believe. I don't know. <laughs> you certainly can. Yeah. I like. mean, well, I I don't know. If only there was a magical way for us to be able to tell what the users have got. It doesn't matter. But I want to see. Only we had World of Warships and settle on our computers, right, guys? Yeah, well, I don't know what the players are running though. I am just teasing. Oh. Well, uh, gentlemen, it's come to that time. Where we have to decide. Who's going to win between Ban CV from EU or Smile from CIS? Sarah! As much as I want to see an international final, I'm going to have to root for Ban CV. I too would like to see an all EU final. <laughs> if my eyes could roll any harder, they would slip right out of my ears and fall to the ground. Gentlemen, it's time to go to Sea Raptor and Stats Bloke take a sweet to game three. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome to the final semi-final game of King of the Sea 13 here in the international bracket. The winner of this game will be moving on to square off against Shaft in the uh, big finals. Um, but before then, we'll have to go to the third place game. But in the meantime, we got to play this game. This is decisive. One of these teams moving on to the finals. Let's see who it is. Ban CV spawning here on the north side of the map, bringing double Kremlin, Minotaur, double Moskva, and four destroyers, daring Harugamo, double Ragnar. Stats bloke, what is Smile up to? Smile on the south side also running a four destroyer lineup. They have Ohio, Kremlin, Des Moines, Napoli, Moskva, and then three Darings and a Ragnar. Uh, Henning, anything we can expect from a four destroyer lineup on both sides? Presumably it's going to be quite dynamic. Yeah, it seems like both teams are going for a cap control lineup here. All the caps are going to be contested constantly here, I'm pretty sure. I think this game is going to be this... decided on who makes the like most effective rotations with their destroyers. With this much radar and this many destroyers, yeah, you're going to see a lot mm. of back and forth on the caps, I think. 
It looks like the initial deployments of the destroyers are kind of similar. You've got the two Darings going over towards Charlie, although it looks like the Ban CV Daring is going to get there first. Uh, you've got the Ragnar Daring Daring group of Smile heading over towards A, but I think Stepan's Ragnar for Smile is going to sort of hang around between A and B. Point is going to try and go for the top of B, where we saw that disastrous uh, torpedo oh. volley. Yeah, uh, Point looks like he's taking a sensible line in there. Uh, and Blood Legends Ragnar is heading over with Vile's uh, Haru over towards the top of A. Well, at least no DD will die to tops on B because both are Ragnars. Nope, that's exactly. true. Two two Ragnars across B pretty much guarantees we won't see a repeat of what happened to Vor uh, here earlier. But of course, Point doesn't know that, so Point doesn't know that there isn't a daring. True. So now, hopefully, Point will take a sensible reverse route in. You're also seeing a bit of a bit of aggression here from Blood Legend. He's already well within Stepan's uh, Ragnar uh, radar radar range, and neither ship knows the other one is there yet. They might have up yet, so they have an idea that they are True. close to each other. True. Okay. The other thing about that position, look just north of Blood Legend, look at Angelstone's Kremlin position. That's pretty bold this early as well. I don't think they have spotted him so far. No, no. he's not. He's, he's, they've just they now lit him. They've spotted now. Yep, they just now know he's there. That's going to be risky for DNO Gaming's Moskva. Uh, down underneath A. I think the mountain is currently in the way, but when DNO clears that mountain, if, if DNO gets spotted, which I don't see currently he can be. He's There's taking the, the radar safe from, There's the radar from Stepan on the southwestern corner of B-Cap. They know where Blood Legend and Point are now. I'm sure they had no idea Blood Legend was in that position. Okay, a few shells being exchanged between Point and Stepan. Radar out from the Moskva of Anle Tung uh, on the A-Cap uh, in that smokescreen laid by Viles Harugamo. Anle's also got his Hydro up, so those torpedoes coming in on his port side, well spotted for both him and Snackman. Of course, they don't have the range, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll note that Bansi V are pushing both their Kremlins down, so you've got the Angelstone Kremlin above the uh, B-Cap there, and then Snackman is going to be pushing into A. So, double Kremlin lineup, very uh, yeah. aggressive, as we've mentioned before. Bansi V making a big push over on the uh, western half of the map. If you have a look back over to the east, we've traded some early shots across the sea cap. Nothing doing there. Both Daring's getting a little bit of chip damage in. But you can just look at the position of the Bansi V ships. They're obviously set up to kind of kite away here and allow Smile to move up at kind of at their leisure and kind of cost them whatever time and HP they can. Okay, Anle uh, in the Mosfar reaches the island for Ban CV with Snackman just behind. Oh, look at the true line. I like that. The Mosfar is hiding behind the Kremlin to not get crushed by it here. Yeah, we've seen a couple of teams do this, actually. This sort of using your battleship as ablative armor. It's right, extra armor. I mean, it and it's going to work, too. It's going to absolutely work because Angelstone will have shots, but he's not going to be able to get Citadels on DNO. They may take some torpedoes on the way in, although yeah. it looks D like they've even like... found that gap. Nope, nope. takes one. DNO pushing Maniac to the side to try and dodge those torps. Um, well, and DNO to... now going to have to maneuver. Here comes the Angelstone salvo. Doesn't doesn't connect. Both teams making a hard play here for the A-cap. Yeah, this is going to um, come to loggerheads very quickly here. You've got the two destroyers on the one line. Um, we're going to end up with Battleship oh. and... Oh, Snackman has to deal with combat up. lines? Yep. So he's going to take it's one be... in the bow, maybe two. Two in the bow. Okay, that's not disastrous. The rest all go between the two ships. Uh, Smile's Unlaid. daring might be making well... a move here. Onlay's Moskva just took a decent hit uh, in the stern from Angelstone as well. He backed up just far enough. Fairy's going somewhere. Uh, 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 Ragnar and Midas dying. Well, and look at Stepan in the middle of the board getting double Ragnar, double team there. He's going out. Quick kill for Ban CV there. Six minutes gone. Hey, Fairy's Daring has a. Oh, the Conga Torps <laughs> on to Snackman. He's going to take too many. Take Snackman out. No, no it's it not. doesn't. He, man he manages to cling to life, but he's flooding. 
And also, the daring is still and Angel, uh, pouring HE yeah. on. Yeah, he's, he's... I mean, eventually they're going to bag him here. I say that, Gets to a heal. and yet... He's, well, he's been healing. He's finally settles out after the heal in the flood at 4,400 HP. God, Single fire fucked, will though. end this. There, is, there are cross shots coming. Yeah, he's not going to be able to go dark. They're going to get him here sooner. Oh, man, really? There's there the fire. That finally, that finally puts him out. Okay, Both that, teams puts, on a... uh, that puts Smile in a quite strong position on A now. They can uh, push on and lay. I think we'll see, as soon as the Daring's Torps come back, I think we'll see um, a move to go around and get Anlay out of A. Both teams on a kill, seven minutes gone. Fancy V with a lead, but I gotta say right now, I really like Smile's board position better. Yeah, Smile is threatening yeah. to crush A here, which will lead to another I'm, kill on Anlay. I am a little, yeah, I'm a little surprised that, that Maniac's not just gonna, hasn't just already sailed up and gone to crush Anlay. Like there's nothing to stop it. Oh, okay, uh, here he, he doesn't want, He was waiting. He, was wa waiting for Dino to get out of the way. I think he doesn't want to get rammed. I think. Well, that's no, that's reasonable. I think uh, once the daring's torpedoes come back, I think they'll rotate the the daring north because um, there's not that much risk. Although I suppose the Haru, combined with the Moscow radar, they could potentially kill Ferry. Yeah. If they all go, both they all go once. Both daring's it on about half HP. It's definitely a risk to it. For the moment, both teams ticking up a cap. The gap holds at about 130 point lead for Ban CV. So Smile Ban CV does finally now, pick up C. Ban CV have to. So they, they they can't do A. A is gone. They have to do something with B and C. Now they already hold B. They can hang on to B. Um, although Ryder is kind of threatening uh, the back end of Angelstone there. Uh, but they need to make something on what happen on C. So they've sent the Ragnar and the Daring over. The Minotaur of Yoshi is starting to push down the ten line towards Zidrin in the Smile Napoli. Um, oh, and the the single Daring in Charlie is definitely at risk here. You've got Blood Legends Ragnar. You've got Shriba's Daring. Medusko is going to have to be sorry. Medusko is going to have to be well. very very careful. Zidrin's pulling back, and he's he's going to be in a bit of a pickle because Yoshi's going to have good shots on him here for a while, and his guns are looking the wrong way. Ryder's going in, and I'm not sure if it's a good idea considering there's a no. Wagner and the Kremlin shooting him. I I, I think the play here, the, the, the thought process for Smile is, we're up a battleship, maybe if we can get this other one off the board, We'll still we'll still have one. They won't have any. Mm. They might get out of slows now. down. At the moment, he's content to just sit there and block the points. Yeah, Anlay is probably yeah. dead here. Yeah, he's getting caught by line. One top. It was only a matter of time for them to pull this off. Yeah, two darings, twenty torps. Yeah, yeah, that's he good. Actually gets it pushed late, up. Though. That's good. He does manage to take one of him with him. That's about the best he could have hoped for. But it is absolutely going to allow Smile to pick up A here, finally. So presumably now, uh, Velix will rotate over towards B, do you think, Henning? Or will they keep the Haru there to be a pain in the side? Do we probably stay there to keep one of the uh, one of Smile's ship bound there as well? Ben CV is actually getting the Ohio kill eventually, if this Ohio doesn't manage to disengage. And C is also not looking that good for Smile anymore. Although Blood Legend just took it bit of a uh, beating there, down to 10k in the Ragnar. Uh, I'm a little surprised I'm a little surprised at the amount of damage that Ryder has taken in this position. I understand why they did it, but now with the A flank decisively picked up, you have to wonder why they gave away all that health for basically just stopping the, the band CB points for a few ticks. Maybe he didn't expect the Kremlin to be that close. I'm not sure actually. Blood Legend getting also pretty low. He's finally got a heal going up over 5k again, but still lit. Yoshi and Minotaur has been pushing on Zidrin's Napoli um, until just now was pretty healthy, but Yoshi just uh, took a, a volley there. Medusco's uh, still taking damage. Medusco's still lit. They can see him. <laughs> I think he's waiting. No, they're going to they're gonna pick up this kill. 
Yeah, the phrase out of the frying pan into the fire comes to mind because it's just gone from the C camp goes. where everyone's shooting to the B camp where everyone's shooting. That just opens like up that. C by the take. Big time, just like that. Ban CV on a chip lead here despite being upside down kit, uh, upside down on caps. Lovely shot from Angel Stone there into the nose of the Des Moines of Smile who's just pushing into that gap there. Napoli of Zidrin is now suddenly not surrounded, but definitely in trouble. Um, Yoshi's Minotaur chasing. Zidrin could potentially kill Yoshi. I was going to say, yeah, this SHG yeah, secondary is alone or beating up Yoshi. I'm a little surprised that Yoshi's continuing yeah, to accept I'm... this engagement. 650 HP, a couple of secondary shells, and he'll go off the board. I'm not sure if he can go dock here. He hasn't He's managed it the yet. Island. It's a question of whether or not the go. island cover is protecting Ooh. him. It is 320. Oh. <laughs> I think he's Yoshi... managed to... He's yeah. dark. He's finally it's a dark. Minotaur, so presumably he's going to be able to get quite a lot of hit points back uh, when he gets to a heal. Actually, Angelstone wow. is on top of it. Yeah. Can they trade with Ryder? So we've got Angelstone in the Kremlin, Ohio, uh, Ryder. Can they trade? I think Ryder's going to survive and Angel's going to go. Yeah, Ryder has a yep. heal running. AP from Moskva. That's another 3k. Ryder's got some hard cover there. He can settle in next to that and wait mm. for his next heal to come back up. Point needs to be careful. If Point's trying to get this kill, which is not going to come because the heal is running, Point needs the big, to block. The big problem for Smile is uh, Violet is going back to A. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason for him not to. They have, they've left him alive, and it looks like maybe they've left Fairy behind to kind of hold the back door closed, but that's not a matchup I like if I'm Fairy. You were right about he... Yoshi. He does get a heal off. He's up over 17k again. Starting to lay down some AP into Zidrin again from cover. Zidrin we're still almost, supported. We're almost to a tie game. Six and a half minutes to play. Smile is only 20-ish points down or so and continuing to gain here as they pick up B. Yeah, Fairy is going to attempt to at least block A for as long as he can. He needs to be careful the... that he doesn't die, though. Yeah, that's the trick. It's the best he can hope for, but... And, and... Again, Harugamo versus Daring is not an exchange I'd get excited about. But the interesting Vile is now here, spotted. They know the he's there. The part here is that uh, Bansev, he actually still has 4 DDs left, which is why their health pool is, is so low. So they need to yeah. be able to coordinate these DDs to farm down ships now. And they're doing that with the Kremel right now. It is a noteworthy yeah. health advantage for Smile at the moment. Those two destroyers are just going to block the A cap. I don't think we're going to see much happening there for a little while. Maniac receiving yeah. all the focus fire all the love. from CV. All the love, but Blood Legend is lit and getting getting folk, getting a little bit of love in return. It's surprising how much damage a couple of Ragnars can do. Yeah, it really is. Not quite to a lead change because A is held, so it's a two-point lead for Band CV. Five minutes to play here in a decisive game three. Ryder just tried to get uh, some cross shots from the Ohio in the south side of the B cap over towards Yoshi's Minotaur over on the 10 line. Unfortunately, nothing connected. Maniacs diving for cover, trying to get behind this island where hopefully the Ragnars can't can't get shells over at him. He's finally going to manage it. Yep, he's finally found a spot where they can't hit him. Blood Legend down to 400 HP. Yeah, but Blood is incredibly low. Both teams have ships that are just clinging to life here. A few Can shells he... at the right time. Kenimod is in trouble as well. He's getting shot by a Demon and Nap uh, Napoli here. Yoshi 17,000 HP over on the 10 line. Still there. As Zidrin trying to hold him in place. Radar going up now from... Uh, the Des Moines on the southwestern edge of the sea cap, but it doesn't find Blood Legend, which is, I'm sure, what they were after. Yeah, Blood, Blood Legend definitely making an exit here. Yeah, he's uh, gonna go hit behind an island. Yeah, the, the thing is, if you have a, a destroyer like that that's oh. on very low health... Um, Big hit on Survivor. It's points, it's points on the board. You don't want to lose a ship, you don't have to lose it. Okay, Blood Legend is spotted. I'm not sure whether anyone's got a shot. He's firing! He's firing at the Des Moines. That's how he's lit. They're focusing out the Moskva. And they want to trade the Moskva to the Des Moines here. 
Wow, that's a huge risk if you're Blood Legend. And I must say, Demon doesn't have range for him, so... Only, yeah, I think Blood only... Legend is pretty confident, although DNO is pushing forward to try and get that shot. Oh man, only 50,000 HP on the board left for Ban CV, and yet they're up a ship right now, just on the back of all this destroyer uh, spam. Keep an eye on the A cap in the background. Um, Fairy is positioning gradually to try and spot Vile. To keep an eye on that. Oh, he changed his mind. Radar out from DNO. I think this might be Blood Legend if those can lob the island. Nope, no, they there. didn't. Blood's finally got hardcover. And Apori's going to uh, enter C though. He's going to block it for at least one take, which. Well, he he's got Mosca AP coming in. Oh, that didn't go as well as he wanted. If they get his Mosca kill though, that would be, that would be big. He's still got a Minotaur on his flank. Like Zidrin, Zidrin making a very bold play here, but definitely a risk. Mosca shell's now going out for Yoshi. Nope. Nothing catastrophic. It does have blind shots. Yoshi shows. Oh, I'm there's Ryder. Now starting to kick in. There's Kenny Mod. Smile now out to their first lead of the game with two and a half minutes to play. Z is contested. They're ticking up B. No other points on the board moving right now. Two minutes. Zidrin's, not even remaining. Zidrin's got to bail. He, they've got to get him out of that cap. They can't afford to lose the ship. Swivel's going. Let's see what happens here. The like seems to leave. not have a heal as well. Zidrin leaves behind his torpedoes. This river not moving up. He grounds himself uh, intentionally on that island. I haven't seen a radar swoosh going out from Shriver, but I would imagine that those torps will be expected. Yes. Uh, whether they were close enough to get spotted, I don't know. Fancy we need to kill in two minutes. Yep, if they two can minutes get, to... If they can get the Kremlin, that would be the kill they want to go for. Well, and, and and Maniac's, Maniac's been sitting that in that spot long enough, unspotted, with no heal. He has to be out of heals. Watch those torps from Yoshi. Yoshi's pushed torps towards that gap between the two islands, expecting Zidrin to push south. They absolutely definitely have range. 90 seconds in the match. Less than a 30-point... Well, yeah, a little over a 30-point lead, I should say. Zidrin's got his turrets looking. Does he have AP in the barrel to catch Yoshi out? Yoshi certainly does. He does have the AP in the barrel. Yoshi Salvo misses. They might get Zidrin here. That would be a massive... They need those points. Moss point Michelle's managing. going out for Yoshi. Point managing to stay dark for the first part of that volley. And They're going to get Zidrin. As well. And That's Yoshi stays point. dark. Yoshi stays dark Yoshi, here, so he Yoshi can't get still, Yep, less than a minute left. The smile now back upside down. They got to get a kill. In 40 seconds as well. I don't know where it's going to come from. All four all four Band CV destroyers are still in the match as Fairy's finally making his push around the bottom it of the day. It might be Vile. It might be Vile. It's Vile. It's that, they, that's the play. If they can get Vile in 30 seconds... They might have a shot here. <laughs> Both destroyers smoke up. They're going to be shooting each other blind. But they've got it. I don't know how they're going to get him. Yeah, Vice is just going to run now. He yeah, can, there's he no need. He can actually take now for the last 20 seconds. DNO, DNO flips around, but I think his reluctance to go into that C cap earlier is going to make the difference. And it is. Ban CV is going to hang on by their fingernails to win game three. My god, what a game. Wow. Two reverse sweeps in the semifinals, gentlemen. And that all EU final you wanted, there it is. There it is. That, that came down to really clutch individual plays there. Yeah, Yoshi going for the spot on the Napoli there in the end. There, there were so many risky shots taken with a destroyer that's on low health being um, spotted whilst firing to try and get a, a kill. I, could easily I, give cannot, them away. I cannot believe they didn't try to kill Blood Legend when he when he had the, the, the temerity. To, to to get into a gunfight with a with that yeah, deploying, they it, fight it. No one had range. Yeah, did they the, really? No one had no one had range. And then when okay. they finally did manage to get the the shot, um, he just ducked behind the island. Great positioning there in that destroyer. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I, I think um, both teams played amazingly well there. But Bansi V just managing to cling on for dear life to that win. So congratulations to Bansi V. They will be going through to face. Shaft in an all EU final. 
Uh, but next we will be seeing um, Smile uh, in the runner-up game uh, against Vaughn. So back over to Prague and we will prepare for that. And I think there may also be some announcements. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just witnessed one of the closest butt clunchers of a game that we have seen this entire series as Ban CV barely squeaks out over Smile to go on to the grand finals to face the other EU team, Shaft. That was absolutely the closest game that we have seen so far, possibly only rivaled by the 07 versus Ban CV game. Uh, that put Ban CV up into this position to be facing Smile. Uh, Seraphis Painzor, are you too happy? Um, it, I, yeah, I'll I... get to happy eventually. Well, first of all, I no longer need my hopium sign. We got the AU final. We got the dream. Right, so that they can go down next. Concern Froge. Anyway, <laughs> what a what, right. That was a high octane game. Yeah. My, uh, wow. That series was so close. Every single game here was extremely close and both teams swore for it so so hard and this game was no different think <laughs> of the plays that we saw in that match we saw right out of the gate we saw the daring i was it i don't know whether it was uh fairy of uh, the i think it might have been fairy the smile daring sticks itself just out far enough to conga line torp the um the kremlin yeah. almost all the way to like from full to zero absolutely amazing we saw we saw uh, Smiles Ohio nearly die and then survive the whole rest of the game. The Kremlin nearly die, survive the whole rest of the game. We saw Blood Legend go all the way down to 412 HP and then still open up on a Des Moines and juke the fire just to make sure they secured that kill. It wasn't we... just to secure the kill, it was to prevent his Moskva dying as well. It was incredible. Yes. Everything there was just down to seconds, down to hundreds of HP. Everything there mattered. Every single decision, yep. every single second was of importance. We saw Yoshi, uh, who is a Minotaur uh, one-trick pony, meaning he only plays Minotaur, live on 300 HP versus a Napoli, a ship that overmatches him, and then later take him down. We were watching the secondaries from the Napoli come streaking over the rock towards the Minotaur, knowing that a single hit would probably seal the deal for Smile. They just did not connect. Yoshi lives, heals 14,000 HP because Minotaur that literally could have been the thing that kept Ban CV in the driver's seat and, and resulted in a win. It's just incredible how close that game was at so many different points. Congratulations, Smile. You guys played an absolute incredible game. Looking forward to seeing you as you strive for third place against Panzer Vor from the SEA region. Um, it is time. Do we do we have a replay for this one or? Oh yeah, there it is. I uh, I missed it. Forgive me. Let's 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 bring this up real quick because there's so much to talk about, and then we need to quickly transition over to talk about our very special announcements and then get ready for Vor versus Smile. So let's go, Painzer. Why don't you start us off? <laughs> oh, you you get yeah no 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 no. Painzer can no, take the driver's seat on this one. Okay, I have but. This is a new technology. They're trusting Here. me with computers. What could possibly Here, I'll start it. I'll start and stop it for if you want. <laughs> right. So all you have to do is just draw. Just press press the big red button, Pains. There is no big red button. Press one of the googly eyes. It'll work. I, I can't actually. Right. Oh my okay. God. No. We gave a computer to the guy who can't see. <laughs> right. You take the back. <laughs> Veto. I'm annulling this marriage, Pains. Or it was, a, it was a terrible marriage to start with. Okay. So. Right out of the gate here, you can see double daring, double daring on the ACAP. Both sides send uh, a Kremlin along with a Moskva to this side to try and strong arm this cap. But it's Smile over here who goes, hey, you know what we could just do? That. <laughs> they just, they wipe the Kremlin right off the board with just a massive, massive line of torpedoes. Meanwhile, the, the Smile, the Ragnar goes down here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to talk about the ablate of armor technique that we saw pushing up. Yeah, can we, <laughs> so what Pinsor was referring to is earlier, you can see the red, uh, right here guys, the red Kremlin and Moskva. The Kremlin literally is acting as a meat shield against the Kremlin of, um, of Ban CV. So that the Kremlin can't crossfire into the Moskva. He's literally acting as armor for the Moskva because there's no team damage anymore. They don't do damage when they touch. Also, I'm pretty sure it was Ban ZV that I saw doing that strategy first. 
yeah, we actually saw the strategy uh, used by BandCV in the regionals. Uh, and I guess maybe they used it in trading against Smile, and uh, Smile took a page out of their book. Yep. Who needs smoke when you have Kremlin, comrade? Ah. So, uh, basically, Smile ends up taking the sea cap. They end up pushing that Napoli up north. But, like you were saying earlier, Yoshi's Minotaur up here just being absolute beast. There he goes. He follows that Napoli around. He starts taking hits. He heals it back up. He chases. Ooh. Almost dies. But he is absolutely crucial here as we watch this Napoli function as a, a bit of a flank on that Moskva and Daring as he pushes up here. It's this moment right here, folks, where he steps into the cap. He stops the points. That's what puts Smile over the top of Bansi V, gives them the initiative and says, Bansi V, you now have to win this game because all we have to do is lose it. That's how that worked right there. Then and then it's this moment right here where the Napoli goes down that, that yep. flips the game back into Bansi V's favor. Absolutely extraordinary game, guys. Um, we need, we incredibly enough, we're on a time schedule here, folks. So we're going to uh, say goodbye to our commentators for just a moment here. Bye, gentlemen. You can see here we have a double EU final shaft versus Van CV. We are going to be coming back to that at halfway, halfway through the hour, right? Yes. Halfway through the hour, we'll be coming back to that. But for now, now we have some very, very special announcements can we can we go to that or is there anything else we need to mention we could look at the bracket we could do that so here we have it vor versus smile coming up next after our news and announcements uh, they'll be playing for third and fourth place until the grand finals which will be a best of five as we watch shaft the newcomers from eu take on ban cv the veterans who have uh were actually the first winners of the first cots international where all four regions played so let's talk new stuff guys so coming up coming up soon uh, we're going to have some new premium camouflages, uh, consumable camouflages coming up. One, the four meritorious service camouflage will be replaced by the four Valorant service camouflage. It will be slightly different in its stats, and the early morning camouflage will be replacing the... I don't recall which one it will be replacing because I had it written somewhere and it was moved. The Rising. It will be replacing the Rising camouflage. Uh, we have another one coming up as well. This will be the New Year's Sky camo. So the New Year's Sky will be an expendable camouflage that will be available around the holiday time. Uh, but it will also be used as a permanent camouflage for a variety of ships that come with premiums. So the New Year's event is going to be the major, uh, the major addition uh, coming in November and December here as... The event itself will be a three uh, a three team event, sort of the way that the Soviet Aircraft Research Bureau was, where you will pick a team over several weeks. Each week to play for, you will play subsequent missions and get certain rewards for that. One of the rewards will be permanent camouflages known as the Snows and Stars camos. We have a number of those available. They're going to be for the ones that can be uh, got from that event will be for the Omaha, the Jaguar, and the Conte de Cavour. The uh, event will also include several of the Sinterklaus tokens, which will be a new token that will help you get some more premium camouflages for other boats. Uh, things like the New Year Sky camo as well, and the flag, which was called the New Year's Constellation flag, along with a new Dutch premium commander known as the Sinterklaus Dutch commander. I believe that's Santa Claus. So. There will also be some premium New Year's, uh, sorry, not New Year's, but some premium Snows and Stars perma camos for the Vesser, the Fubuki. Oh, there we go. Here's the Jaguar. This is what we were speaking of earlier. And the Kick Dune. I, I, the only Dutch person in the room left, so I, I don't have anybody to correct my pronunciation of the Kick Dune. Um, but there will also be one for the Repulse, which we'll get to in a moment, as the Repulse will be part of the new Dockyard. Uh, but there will be Snows and Stars permanent camos for the Vesser, Hubuki, Ishmael, and Kekdun, along with the Omaha Jaguar and Conte de Cavour. Uh, this is part of the collection here. The collection will be um, like the collections of others, where you can collect these, um, these 
items from it, along with three commanders, which are uh, named after snow giants. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, I suppose we can go on now and speak of the dockyard. Along with uh, this, along with this season, we'll have an entire new port. It will be, excuse me, not a new port, but this will be a reskin for a festive reskin for the London port. Forgive me, I misspoke there. Um, as, you, <laughs> as you can see, things will get very, very festive and very holiday-like, as the Tower Bridge in London is decorated with a variety of lights and festive things, like. I suppose those are nutcrackers. Even the Santa's crates are getting a slight reskin here as those three snow giants that we were discussing come up there. Those are the three commanders that will be available. So, um, this is all to say, this comes with the new inclusion of the dockyard. The next dockyard will be in 32 phases, 25 of which will be able to be uh, completed through missions. And it will be to create to create, I suppose, to build the Tier 9 British battleship Marlboro. Um, some information about the Marlboro has been out on the dev blogs, but it is a very interesting ship that actually makes use of 12 356 millimeter guns in three, excuse me, four quad turrets. So not 12, 16 356 millimeter guns in four quad turrets. Um, this will be uh, the boat that you get when you complete the dockyard, and along the path to actually creating this Marlboro, you will also earn yourself, during the different phases, the Tier 3 British Battleship Dreadnought, and the new Tier 6 British Battleship Repulse. Although, yes, the Repulse, those of you who may know it, I am a huge fan of the Repulse. I've been waiting for this for a very, very long time. The Repulse was actually a World War I era battle cruiser that was made by the British. But, of course, in this game, it is classified as a battleship. So, those are two boats that you can be, uh, you can acquire while you earn your way through the dockyard on your way towards the Marlboro. The Marlboro, of course, as you saw just a moment ago, has a very cool war paint camouflage, similar to the Heisen, the DE-7, uh, and the Anchorage and the other premium boats that have come from the dockyard before. What do we have next? Ah, very nice. We come to the permanent camouflage for the Fuso, known as the Japanese Castle. This was actually a skin that came about because of a community program that was run. And this is what comes up. You might recognize that it looks very similar to a few other skins, notably the Japanese lacquer camo that was very, very popular and well liked for the uh, the Hyuga, the Hyuga and the Hayate. So this one has a very interesting samurai figurine on the top, along with several very interesting cultural icons across the tips of the barrels and even samurai armor plating along the armor belt of the battleship itself for the tier six Japanese battleship Fuso. Um, so be looking for this early 2022, very likely as part of a Twitch campaign, I believe. I feel like I'm starting to talk like Mr. Conway because I've heard him do this before and I'm unconsciously imitating his cadence. There are worse Keep things. Keep practicing. <laughs> I'm doing my best here, folks. Next up, however, new ships new boats not you boats new boats folks we are so so wait we i i am excited i'm excited to get to uh reveal to you this is the first time i've ever been able to do this by the way reveal to you folks new ships that will be entering the game in the near future i must remind you they are still work in progress but i will be able to share some of the characteristics with you as well as what you should probably make of these boats in terms of um a quick description so some of you may have noticed a while back during the anniversary the sixth, sixth anniversary of world of warships we showed you uh the silhouette of a boat that looked like well this one it happens to be the canarius five minutes Oh my goodness. Very good. Okay. Well, then I need to I need to hurry up then. I've been told I like to talk. The Canarius. Let's go, guys. Game on. The Canarius is going to be the very first boat in a new line of ships for the new nation, Spain. The Canarius has very high HP for a tier 6 cruiser. It is armed with AP only shells with advanced penetration angles. It has eight 203 millimeter turrets, excuse me, guns in four turrets. It has a hydroacoustic search consumable as well as the salvo fire mode that is now being tested on the super cruisers on the public test server. It is not armed with torpedoes, but be looking out for this new ship as the first ship of the Spanish line. 
Next, please. If you were looking for a tier 10 ship, look no further. It is the Forrest Sherman, a new tier 10 British, excuse me, American destroyer. This borrows some characteristics from the tier 10 American light cruiser Austin. It has three single 127 millimeter guns of the same style as the Austin, and they do fire HE and SAP rounds. It has relatively high HP for a uh, tier 10 destroyer, somewhere between a heavy gunboat and a torpedo boat. Um, but it has three quick firing 127 millimeter guns with HE and SAP. It has uniquely two tubes of gearing torpedoes per side with very quick reloads, smoke, speed boost, def AA. This will be a very interesting uh, addition to tier 10 with the three gun setup. Looking forward to that. Next, please. You may have heard of this city in the bottom of Crimea, Sevastopol, the new tier 10 Russian supercruiser, which happened to borrow some guns from the tier nine German supercruiser, Siegfried. This supercruiser is armed with three, uh, three turrets, hosting twin 380 millimeter guns, each with improved AP pen angles, uh, penetration, as well as short fuse AP rounds, much like the Stalingrad. However, these are 380s instead of 305s. It does not come with the standard 12 kilometer Russian radar. In fact, it trades that for exceptionally good concealment, which can get down to uh, 11 kilometers at best. It can choose between hydro or DFAA, and unusually, it has a speed boost. This speed boost for 45 seconds gives a 20% increase to acceleration and maximum speed with six charges and a quick reload. It also unusually has a very, very long duration, but short action, uh, short, short content heal, meaning it slowly regenerates HP over a long time and has six charges of them, but that means that it can be focused down quickly. Um, that is the tier 10 Russian, uh, Russian supercruiser Sevastopol. Then we have not too many details about, but we have the inclusion of the first Russian submarine as the C-189. Unfortunately, we have no details at the moment, but be looking for that in the future. Just know there are, in fact, Soviet submarines being worked on as we speak, and gosh, I wish I had another boat to uh, reveal. I mean, that would just be wonderful, especially one that, you know, someone's been really looking forward to for a long time. Hmm, maybe one that people are just... Do you think so? Should we make Christmas early, Mr. Conway? I don't know. Has Killerbin been good? I should no, ask you. Killerbin has not been good. Has Killerbin, Killerbin has not been good? No. Killerbin's been a very naughty boy. He's been a very naughty boy. Well, I've heard that Seraphis has been a very good boy, so I think we should do something nice for the stream. What do you say, Seraphis? I agree. All right, well, this is his fault, ladies and gentlemen. I give you the Dido. Allow the pug champs to begin. I heard, <laughs> yo dog, I heard you like Dido. So we decided to bring you the Dido. The Dido is the tier six light British cruiser armed with 10 133 millimeter dual purpose guns set up in five dual turrets. It has excellent concealment for a cruiser. This is going to feel very much like a light cruiser a la the Atlanta or the Flint or uh, the Huang He, something with very, very low concealment, but is very squishy and has relatively low HP. So it is basically a giant destroyer or a light cruiser. Um, again, sub nine kilometer uh, maximum concealment when it's kitted out. Two barrels, excuse me, two racks of three torps per side with eight kilometer. Um, but the real factor here is the 10 barrels with a six second reload at tier six. Uh, very, very, very strong against enemy destroyers. It is also armed with the uh, uh, with the characteristic British smoke of short duration uh, or burst smokes. So I hope that made you all as happy as it made me to see that the Dido has finally made its way into the game. Um, be looking for that in the near future. Um, we should have a few more moments before we're ready to move on to our second half of the day where we watch Penzavor go up against Smile, and it looks like the peanut gallery is back. Apparently, that's not a term that is is recognized over here. Oh. We'll we'll still have to teach them about you know like leaving the room and then 
unmuting their microphones when they come back. I, I was I was changing my battery. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were being brought back in so soon. It's, 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 oh, I have a little note saying I have five minutes. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, folks are still filling into the uh, trading room, so we have some time yet. Uh, I don't believe that they've actually gone through their bands before, um, but we do have the uh, map bands. Oh, uh, unsurprisingly, Hotspot has been banned. As it always has been. And the Islands of Ice. A Once barn again. of ice and fire. Wait, Hotspot has been played. We watched Hotspot. Yeah, we, yes, did, we did watch Hotspot. Hotspot. We have oh, yet to see a game in internationals on Islands of Ice, seen, right? Single game on Islands of Ice in internationals. Sedge. What do you guys got what? against Islands of Ice anyway, huh? Is this. Mantle hmm. Barn. Wow. Wait, what? That. That is curious. Even as a targeted ban, we haven't seen Smile utilize, utilize this ban at all. Do you think they watched? Or, well, pick, do you think they watched the wrong side in that last match? It's, uh, uh, it's so Yoshi. <laughs> they it's saw Yoshi's Yoshi and and said, "Oh, I don't want to face that." Very interesting. Well, okay. So from Smile, the Marceau. This is not a surprise. Um, Smile very likely did their research, saw that Panzervor does extremely well with French DDs, and said, "You know what? Clever has been banned globally. We say no to Marceau." They pulled up signs. They literally. They Venmo Painzor and say, hey, make us a sign that says, say no to Marceau. That's what they do. Oh, okay. It's okay. So Painzor is scrambling for his markers. <laughs> I'm scrambling for a black Q code. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, it's okay. But uh, unusually, a Minotaur. The Minotaur coming in as the band pick from Thor, uh, even though we haven't seen Smile where they bring the Minotaur. So maybe they know something that I don't. Um, I'm told that that's a common occurrence, but I choose to believe it. So. Uh, our three maps today are going to be Warrior's Path, uh, followed by Northern Waters, and then North. Warrior's Path and North being somewhat passive map styles, as folks basically try to out-position each other off of a few key points, but Northern Waters being a bit more fluid, and oftentimes coming down to who aggressively moves on the A cap, who positions well around the B cap, and who makes a hard push around the C cap. Do we know so who we'll picked just them up? Have to see. Hmm? Do we know who picked each map? Yes, I, I don't will. have that in front of me, but I believe Seraphis does. I do. So a Warrior's Path was picked by Smile, mm. Northern Waters was picked by Vor, and North was randomly decided. Okay, very good. Interesting that Vor have chosen to change their pick from last series, because last series I think their pick was uh, Land of Fire, but they've picked Northern Waters for this series, so kind of curious about that one. <laughs> Well, do you have an opinion on that? Islands of Seraphice? I've been waiting like 10 minutes to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like he was sitting back here like... Uh, uh, I'll have you know I reserved the putting the Int in internationals joke about three weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see that on the sign-up sheet, Pazor. <laughs> um, anyway, let's talk about Smiling for. We've seen them already, but now we get to watch them go head to head, which I'm thrilled about. These are two extraordinarily good teams, frequently the top of their regions. In both cases, this season, they were in fact the first place winners of their regional cots. Uh, Smile, of course, four times winners of regional cots, second place in cots 12, and Panzervor, three times winners of uh, Asia cots regional, and have now been first in cots 13 regional. So. Of course, both you can tell are constant mainstays in uh, clan battles of Hurricane and Typhoon status. They now face each other in um, uh, the third place or losers bracket to see who comes out with five thousand dollars and who no excuse me seven thousand five hundred dollars and who comes out with twenty five hundred. Oh, I was right the first. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Seventy five hundred for third place, five thousand for fourth place. Never doubt yourself, folks. Yeah, this um, means that both Shaft and Bansiri have already secured 10,000 US dollars. That means beer is on them tonight, guys. Yeah, just go find them. Like, Assuming you're yeah. old enough. I'm watching you. Go find them and they'll, they'll give you a beer. <laughs> Blood Legend, Blood Legend's buying everybody tonight. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we've uh, seen from Vor and seen from Smile today. I, Gentlemen, I feel as though the first time I ever saw Smile play was Kotz. 
uh, 11, it was COTS 11 Internationals, and I watched them play extremely aggressively, so much so that it blew my mind. This time we've seen them almost play like NA. They've been very, very passive. They've been very calculated, while Vor has been dynamic and aggressive. Uh, we're dropping into the match now, so what do you think is going gonna, is gonna to be the case this time, Seraphis? I, I, I hope to see this aggressive style from Vor more, and I hope that Smile will try to match this aggressive style. Painzor. Ragnar Spam. Ragnar Spam. I'm expecting Ragnar Spam. Are you hoping for Ragnar Spam? I'm hoping for Ragnar Spam. Well, you know. well, you're hoping for Ragnar Spam. Who's your money on? Smile or Vor? Not that we're encouraging game. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Vor might have the edge. They are a competitive okay. mainstay and have won the last international, so I think they have the edge. Surface, quick pick. My money is on, uh, on Smile. On Smile. Let's take it to see Raptor and stats block to see how this is going to go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, to this third place game of the international bracket here for King of the Sea. We're going to be looking at Vor versus Smile, two teams you should be familiar with by now. We've seen them both at least once today. And we're going to be looking at a best of three series here as we start with game one on Warrior's Path. To the north, Vor spawns in with Montana, Kremlin, Des Moines, Hao Liu, Double Moskva, Gearing, Daring, and Ragnar. Stats bloke, the lineup for Smile, if you please, sir. On the south side, Smile have Double Ohio, Napoli, Moskva, and Nevsky, and then four destroyers. They have Gearing, Daring, and Double Ragnar. Um, the bands are kind of interesting for this one. Mosso and Minotaur. I think that's the first Mino ban that we've seen. That was yeah, four ban. we were... Smile banning Mosso. Yeah, we were talking about that. I'm not used to seeing Minnow on a ban list. Marceau, sure. Minotaur? Odd choice. That has to be a target, targeted ban. I'm pretty sure War has looked at Smile strategies that they show, have shown across the regional internationals and have seen Minotaur being used in quite a few positions and apparently it's an issue for them. So they're just like, nope, we don't want to deal with this. Yeah, well, they're, it does they're have here. a unique mixture of things. It's got the 10km torpedoes, it's got the, the potential radar, um, it's very, very well concealed stealth radar. Um, hard to replace that in a lineup, so... Yeah, that kind of makes sense. It, it does, and one of the things that I think sometimes we don't necessarily appreciate, we get so focused on the ship itself, as opposed to how that ship might fit into the map lineup you're playing, right? Because we know we're going to see Warrior's Path, we know we're going to Northern Waters at a minimum. You're not, you know, you're, you're, you're taking it out of the lineup for those two maps, and hopefully it's decisive and you don't have to go to a Game 3. Also, it could be um, directed at against an actual player. If there's a player who always plays Minotaur and they're really, really good in it, True. you might want to actually remove that player's best favorite, you know, ship. So, <laughs> True. a bit of that as well. A little bit <laughs> yes. of early, a little bit of early contact over here at the A cap. Uh, some radars going off. Stepan's Ragnar is lit, but nobody has shots because he's got nice island cover back there. Dark Temple pulls the handbrake as Maniacs Ohio shells come in, but uh, those are all. Those are all going to fall short, it looks like. Eh, a little Seeing bit of chip damage. Daring versus Daring on the B cap. Uh, Diva is reversing into the cap from the north side for four. Uh, there are some torpedoes out from Fairy, but um, I don't think they're going to go anywhere near Diva. Uh, Fairy in the Smile Daring will also reverse in. That I know from lots of previous games that this position that Fairy is currently playing is very dangerous because torpedoes quite often come past that island. Uh, so you need to be really careful, make sure that you're running your hydro when it's available. Well, yesterday we watched, I uh, forget who it was, but they shoved a Moskva into that position very quickly. Uh, it was it was 07 versus, uh, was it Ban CV, wasn't it? It was Ban CV, yes. Yeah, yeah, Ban CV shoved a Moskva right in that hole and kept Eagle Lances, I think it was a daring as well, kind of locked out in that cap most of the game. Radar out from YBB's Moskva on the C cap for four. Uh, that only spots the the Mosfar and the Daring. The other ships are just too far away at the moment. I think they were just hoping to get a little bit of early information. Um, but they'll they'll get that in a second. I think uh, the gearing for Smile is going to smoke Zidrin soon in the Nevsky, so they'll figure out what's going on there. But that shouldn't be a surprise. It's normal to take the gearings over to, to the ten line. Four minutes in, and Smile picks up their first cap of the game, bagging A on the back of the double Ragnar Napoli team that's kind of over there working that side of the map. B remains contested, and for the moment, Vor not quite yet on to C. 
just kind of taking their time here, playing this uh, nine ten line flank with the gearing Des Moines and Hao Liu. Four shouldn't have too much of a problem with C here. No, um, the the gearing is going to be able to smoke up the two cruisers and then rotate into the top of the cap. Smile just don't really have the ships there right now to do anything about that. Um, but then they've got A, so that's um, that's fair, fair really. Well, assuming that, that Vor does get on to A, I mean, sorry, C, and we expect that to happen eventually, they'll pick that cap up, both teams ticking up a cap. At that point, it's on them, you know, as the team from playing from behind to make a, make a play. What do you kind of foresee going on next at that point? It's gonna be uh, interesting to see what's happening. So, Vor obviously needs to, like, get, get the push going on C. The big problem is... There's still four ships from Smile down there. The is actually getting smoked up, so it's gonna take a long time to actually push that away. And until they do that, A is gonna be ticking for Smile the entire time, and B is not gonna move anywhere. So mm -hmm. I think Vo is gonna shove Kremlin Moscow into the gap and try to do something about B here right away. Nevsky radar on the 10 line picks up Renegade's gearing at the head of that smoke column. They cannot see either cruiser behind him just yet. Some good hits coming yeah, in on Renegade there. Yeah, Renegade's going to take quite a lot of damage there. I'm also slightly concerned about this YBB Moskva push. Um, Fairy and the Smile oh. bearing the B-Cap is going to be able to put Torps down that channel. Massive hits on Renegade. He's finally dark, but goodness gracious, what a chunk of HP he gave up for that. The Kremlin and is now, actually following the Moskva into the channel. Yeah, I was going to say, you pointed it out. It was actually Yanaya and, YB, and YBB that capped the C cap um, as they pushed through. And now they're sitting in this channel firmly with their guns. Well, like, they can look into B or they can look over their shoulder back towards uh, the Nevsky on the edge of the map if they would prefer. You kind of have yeah, to notice. commit a Kremlin in here as well, because mm -hmm. otherwise you risk uh, the enemy battleship doing it instead of you. And then your Moscow is in trouble. Hmm. You'll also notice that they're right on the south side of the channel, and that's uh, to try and make it as hard as possible for the daring of Smile to get Torps. But the Kremlin is now pushing forward, and that gives an opportunity maybe for Fairy. But Fairy currently in a bit of an exchange with D.Va. Fairy's got a lot on his plate right now. He's it was mm -hmm. un he's under the Moscow radar of YBB as D.Va's taking shots at him. He's actually pushed up quite a bit as Yanaya is lit in that channel. They know exactly where he is. You kind of have to expect Fairy to get flipped and get ready to receive this in some fashion. Fairy is actually reversing to face north. I think that, see the, is, the Ragnar in the middle, uh, Stepan is also reversing yeah. up. I think they're planning some kind of pincer on D.Va. Yeah, they're forcing the well, engagement on the doing here. Yeah, his guns and his torps are both looking north here. The Kremlin has pulled up both the YBB and Yanai is content to sit in that channel as both teams sticking up a cap. Vor on about a 60, 60, 70 point lead here. So this is going to be a risky push for Ferry. He's got to push out in front of Yanaya and YBB's yep. Moskva. There's the radar from Stepan. Diva's lit. Here come here come the shells from Ferry. I'm pretty sure he's going to stay behind that island. He's not going to push further. No. So Diva being forced to reverse away from Ferry. Of course, Stepan is right there. But Stepan, like, he's got shots if he wants them, but you'll notice he's not mm. taking them. I, I think they've they've changed plans. I think they're going back to uh, what I would have assumed was plan A, which is Fairy's going to go around on Yanaya, I think. Maybe. He's reversing for the moment. All the drama at B. Diva now coming out. Diva comes out here. Going for it. Little surprise, we I expect his heal to be down. Both the Smile Ragnars also opening up on D.Va. Oh, wait a minute. Well, but he uh, can see smoke Hydro, but I mean, the the opposing ship has the exact same range of Hydro. That doesn't get you much. He's They're going to get D.Va uh, here in the next salvo. I <sighs> Honestly, I don't understand I, that. I, I have I, no I idea what it. just happened. Yeah. I think he got too spooked by the Ragnars in the middle. I, I, I don't understand what happened just there. Like, he maybe didn't they... have to do just yet, but I think he just got very spooked by the second Wagner coming and maybe waiting, waiting him again. It's, it's possible, but for the moment, it leaves Vor upside down on ships, and they're going to lose control of the B-cap, which makes their, it's going to make their deficit even worse. They're going to have to definitely force a play somewhere. On the 10 line, the gearing took a top. 
I'm smile there. How only you dropping bombs onto the Mosvar of Smile. Bit of a diagonal drop, but did land a couple. Um, I'm, so Fairy takes uh, B in the Daring. I'm expecting Fairy at some point to push torpedoes towards the Kremlin and the Mosvar. Uh, although right, Daring, right now, just, I think... Just trying to hug the island. I was going to say, right now, I think he's just trying to make sure and preserve what health he has. I'm I'm not sure they need to leave him in there anymore. I think I'd pull him out, honestly. Uh, You've got enough thinks, ships around. Uh, I think Smile are just going to go in and ram the Kremlin. Yeah, for sure. Looks well, like it. We well, waited too long there, and now they will just remove this Kremlin from the equation, and it's a lonely Moskva there. You would actually try to, like, send some... Let's send, like, one or two of your Wagners uh, behind, for example, the I mean, F6 Island to actually get a farm on the Moskva as well after that. Dub WCG pulled the handbrake. He's not continuing forward. He moved up for the shot, and now he's stopping. He doesn't have to pause the trade right now. That's the thing. I mean, I'm not sure why, if you're Smile... I mean, you can afford to trade ships. Ow. But it feels it feels early to me. A little, Just a little too early to do that. The rest of the map, it's it's just back and forth trading. We've got um, the Mosfar of Dark Temple for four above the A cap down to 20k healing. Uh, DNO's taken a bit of damage. Uh, Maniac's mostly healthy in the Ohio for Smile, although Smile have started a push here. Ohio, uh, Maniac, and Ragnar Medushko are pushing up into A. I suspect to counter a push that they're expecting from four into A. Yeah, Fairy does rotate out of the yeah. B cap, but leaves behind a whole bunch of conga line ah, torps go. for Yanaya. Yep. Gonna take at that's least two that. of these up forward. That's what I've been waiting for. Those are the torps that I was expecting much, much earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yanaya down to 32. Here goes Ryder now. Maniac's shells coming in on Yanaya, but just a little too far forward air as Yanaya reverses. Best Naomi's Montana for four uh, shots against the angled Ohio of Ryder. Nothing there. Ryder is obviously not planning to take the ram right now. It's just pushing forward to try and get extra shots into Yanaya. No, I think at this point they can get Yanaya without the ram. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, oh, yeah, look at that. He's sure. under 10k. He's burning. You know his DCP is down. Eight minutes to play, and Smile on a ship lead, a cap lead, a points lead. They're about to pick up another ship. 250, 280 points, I should say, in climbing. I don't see a way back into the game as well. No. There he goes. How are you getting uh, about 4k's worth of bombs there onto Riders Ohio? Ryder may go for a ram on YBB here. I don't think YBB is going to give it to him. To be honest, he can probably, if he if he takes the time to flip his turrets, he might could go for the close pass. Oh, I see. He's right, trying to he's trying to points. he's trying to point Asphodelius in the bow while he and then take the ram on YBB. But yeah. I don't think he's going to make it. Nope. No. Does yeah. get a decent shot into Asphodelius, but but no. Okay, uh, looking pretty strong here for Smile. We'll just see the replay here of classic nouns Ragnar going down. Yeah, looking pretty strong for Smile. Um, they have a little bit of a health lead, not too much. They definitely have a ship lead. The remaining ships for Vore, pretty healthy in general. Have a look over at A. You're about to see yet another ram here. Maniac going in, trying to take that last surviving Vore battleship off the board. He's trying to actually the punch the Des Moines on the way out mm. the door. They're both trying to sell out for that kill on Asphodelus. And you know yeah, what? I think, I think Naomi's... Nomi's gonna is he gonna deny it? No. No, I don't think Nomi can get out of the way. No, he can't. Smile with a ship lead, taking some timely rams as they touch up on 900 points just about there. No battleships surviving in the game, but a big ship lead for Smile. The Mosfar of Dark Temple left alone on the A cap, but catching the broadside DNO gaming Napoli with AP. DNO managing to then angle. But uh, a low health Napoli versus a low health Mosfar, but the Napoli does have the Ragnar in support here. 
Asphodelus does move up and pick up B. That allows that allows Vor to, to buy some time. But for the moment, it's not quite enough. A cap continuing to tick, as now Smile is on to C as well. 920 points passed for Smile. With currently one cap ticking. They will get Charlie, um, but the Howden Liu might be able to just stick a nose into the cap to stop it. He's not moving right now. He, he could, but he's just sitting. There he goes. He's finally inching up. Not before he ticks over, but he will block the points there as they finally claim Dark Temple's Moscow way over on the one line. 980 points passed. Nah, it's over. Just a few more ticks. They'll win on the strength of that A-cap alone. Nothing they can do about it. Smile picks up game one here on Warrior's Path. That was a really controlled game by Smile. That was... Yeah, it was. It... Yeah, it was. Not really in any threat of losing anything here. It was a bit, uh... They've got a bit close with their own Daring, getting stuck on the B-cap between Kreml, Moskva and the Daring. Mm. But as soon as Vor's Daring decided to push out and actually just die, he was... I, I, he ended up being pretty safe I still there. Don't understand that. Yeah, I still have no idea what happened with that. He was... He was okay, he was tucked in, he had decent cover, nobody had shots, and he was like, I'll just go out here. I, I don't understand that. Anyways, let's see if somebody on the analyst desk understands it as we kick things back to Prague. Well, Smile has come out of this first match with a smile. That's as bad as it's going to be, folks, I promise. It won't get any worse than that. As they pick up a victory over Panzer Vor in Game 1 of the series to determine the third and the fourth place finishes. Let's chat with Seraphis and Painzor here real quick about... Gentlemen, is, is, is Smile just playing extremely well, or does Vor seem a little tired to you? I mean, it might be getting late in the day for Vor. I mean, the Asia Could region be. is several hours ahead of us. I'm not sure what time it actually is over there. But I just think Smile, that was Smile's map. Um, I, I assume that they've practiced this map a lot. So if they are confident with it, it's their, for, it's their map pick. Nobody else really picks this map. It seems to be shied away from. I think I've seen a band on EU as well. Yeah, EU and regionals actually banned this map out a lot. Hmm. Um, surprisingly. Um, yeah. Well, I, it, it's interesting to see. So, um, some statistics here. We have uh, 6.2 million channel points being spent on predictions to see whether Smile will triumph over Vor or vice versa. 63% or 3.9 million channel points spent to suggest that Smile will walk away with the third place uh, finish and the $7,500 that goes along with that over Vor, who has 2.3 million or 37% of the channel points being spent. Already looking very good for Smile as they put in a consistent, solid, and frankly, pretty decisive performance on uh, Warrior's Path, which was in fact their map pick. So uh, once again, we are watching Vor versus Smile to see who takes third place and who takes fourth place before we go on to the grand finals, Shaft versus Band CB, the first double EU grand finals in COTS Internationals. So um, can we take, uh, I guess we're still waiting on the replay. We may need a few more minutes for that. That's quite all right. Um, so just so you guys know, our, our plan is to go to about 1140 CST today or 1740 today. Things can change, obviously, because sometimes matches go longer, sometimes they go shorter, sometimes matches end 2-0 or 0-2, or go all the way to a game three, or I suppose a game five even for the grand final. So uh, we'll just have to see. Don't hold us to it. We just have to adapt and be flexible. 14 games the dream. What's that? 14 games the dream. You know, best of three, best of three, best of three, best of five, 14. I mean, that's my dream. Is that your dream? I would love to see 14 games today. Surface, is that your dream? That is my dream, too. My dream was that they play the next one on Northern Waters. <gasps> oh, look at that. <laughs> wow. The dream color. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, well, Northern Waters is coming up next. We've seen a lot of back and forth on this. We've seen a lot of uh, players taking that island on the side of the A cap. We've seen a lot of... Uh, back to Warrior's Path. Very nice. Uh, we've seen a lot of players uh, taking control over, there we go, over the B-cap island there with the Ds. And we've seen lots of Ragnars on this 
map. So let's talk for a moment um, about this ACAP. We've also seen Napoli's being used by multiple teams on this map. Um, Seraphis, what do you think, uh, based on what we've seen Smile doing, which is very safe, very calculated, and very good at trading, do you have any uh, predictions as to how they're going to be playing this map? I think, actually, maybe we might see some interesting things from before, seeing that they have been using the Gouden Leeuw uh, quite a yeah. bit. Um, they could use it on eight, maybe to um, dislocate whoever is on the A island or to the side, or maybe someone at the B island, we'll, we'll have to see. I think we just got our uh, our confirmation of how to pronounce the Houdenleeuw, which is from our resident Dutchman here. Yes. Houdenleeuw? Houdenleeuw. Houdenleeuw, so you don't really pronounce Well, the... I mean, my voice is kind of gone right now, so it's not exactly right, but... Fair enough. <laughs> Painzor, uh, we, we've actually seen the Houdenleeuw a number of times. We uh, have. Throughout this, mostly from Vor. I believe yeah. Minus One S may have used it as well, but really just the SCA teams. Um, what's what's your take on it? We've we've sort of been gushing over the Napoli uh, <sighs> and the Ragnar throughout the series. Has it has it felt decisive to you? Not particularly. Um, there's been a lot of times where I could see it possibly being used, but that's never how it's been used. Every time I see, okay, you could use it in this position. No team wants to use it in that position. So it's just I can see a place for it. But I don't see it being used for the place that I see it for, so now I'm very confused as to why they're bringing it in the first place. Because if you're gonna, just, if you want just a tanky cruiser to just exist somewhere, you have the Napoli, who is a tanky cruiser and has big guns and can shoot things, and also has secondaries. Depends. Which gimmick do you want? Do you want smoke screen and secondaries, or do you want air strikes, which are dodgeable? I mean, the air strike placement, I've seen a lot of very good strikes. The targeting is pretty good, even on mobile moving ships. But it just, it's just it seems to be relatively low impact for me. Its main thing seems to be to uh, uh, put maybe maybe put one or two permanent fires on something that's already been uh, that's already used its DCP. But I don't think we've really seen it uh, as, as a decisive factor in any of these games. Unfortunately, I, I was sort of hoping for a bit more. Um, uh, I, I suppose we should probably go and uh, take a look at this next map, if we could, please. The next map. Um, Northern Waters. Sorry, what's that? Northern, Northern waters, waters, yes. I had to remember there for a moment. So I suppose if you um, if you are, like like Panzor was saying, if you're somebody who's trying to take a hard position around the A-cap, you could put your Houdin Leu up, up above or below the A-cap. You could try to strike whatever's on the other side. Um, it does not have the armor, of course, to, to stand up and have a gunfight with basically anything above a supercruiser. Um, but it might actually uh, find some use around the B cap, sort of as an area denial tool. Um, yeah, the, the the jury will be out. I suppose it'll be up to all of us to decide after Kotz International is over whether the Houghton Liu is a competitive ship uh, for something, a format like Kotz Internationals, or whether it's going to be relegated to something else like damage farming in randoms or what have you. So, um, another interesting thing to see, of course, with the Marceau being banned in this uh, matchup, how they will project their power around the different cap zones as destroyers frequently on this map will move from cap to cap trying to apply that extra pressure and take those caps i suspect more darings perhaps some ragnars and uh maybe even a, a gearing or two um do you guys have any suspicions on whether this will be a multiple dd map or whether they're gonna shy away from that and go more russian steel this one tends to be more destroyer heavy you see a lot of ragnars roaming around the b cap daring too we need you need some sort of torpedo threat around the air cap just to try and deny any pushes towards that island or potentially dislodge something from that island eventually. And C cap, you definitely need to destroy it to contest that and often provide smoke screens for push comps, like, which we haven't really been seeing much from, but I've seen Salem's, Des Moines, all sorts of things being smoked up around the cap. Interestingly, no Nevskis. For some reason, we're not seeing Nevskis in this season series, despite the fact it's not been banned away like in the previous ones. We did, however, see, stop me if I'm wrong, it was this last match where we watched that Nebsky, the Nebsky of Smile, absolutely take apart the gearing of Panzer Vor, correct? Yes. That was incredible. We, I'm sorry, folks, we didn't actually get the replay um, available in time for this uh, last match to go over and watch that, but some of the notable things to see was that Smile made a very nice pinch play against the daring of Panzer Vor in the B-cap. They snuck a Ragnar up back 
backwards and then pushed their own daring up to try and pincer it until that daring felt like he had no other choice but to run. And he got gunned down by the daring of Smile and that helped them take the B cap, collect points, and uh, move on to take game one. However, game two has started. Quick prediction, Seraphis. I hope we're gonna game, see a game three, so Vor. Vor, Painzor. I wanna see the 14 game dream today, so I'm also gonna go with Vor for this game. He believes in the dream, folks. Let's go to Stats Bloke, see Raptor, and see what we can come up with in game two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get into game two here of this series between Smile and Vor to decide who will be the third place team and who will be the fourth place team here in the international bracket of King of the Sea 13. Spawning into Northern Waters, the North spawn is Smile. This map, they have brought Double Ohio, Des Moines, Napoli, Double Nevsky, fronted by three destroyers. That's a Gearing, a Daring, and a Ragnar. What is uh, Vor up to on the bottom end of the map there, Stats? On the south side, Vor have a, a Montana again. Um, interesting pick. We might talk about that in a second. Uh, Kremlin, Des Moines, uh, three Moskva, and then three Darings. And currently, each Daring is going to a cap. Um, so we were talking about a little bit about this amongst ourselves between the games, but um, heading like Montana is kind of an unusual pick, especially at the moment with the way the, way the meta's gone in the last couple of tournaments. Um, do you think there are any advantages to bringing a Montana over, say, on Ohio? Like the idea about Montana is it has the bigger broadside with insane alpha with like 12 times 406 millimeter with 13.5k alpha. It, it could be, the alpha strike is one of the highest in the games, obviously, apart from like Vermont. Uh, it doesn't have quite the same overmatch potential. Yeah, the problem is you have troubles with shooting something like Des Moines, which are very, very prominent in uh, high level competitive. And, and indeed, uh, we can see a Des Moines over on the other side. So, Smile, uh, do you have a Des Moines along with the Napoli heading over towards A? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but Montana has range, um, so uh, a lot of shells. So we'll see what Naomi can do with that. Montana actually uh, is usually played with the range mod on the second... Is it second or third slot? Which gives it like 27 mm -hmm. kilometers of range. With uh, Spotter Plane, it gets even more... Yeah, with so that's one where, of the big things. Sitting where this Montana is right now, with the spotter plane up, you can essentially shoot the entire map. I mean, the, um, if as long as there's no islands in the way, everything is fair game. Okay, we've got a smoke train starting over on the north side of the sea cap for Smile, gearing, uh, smoking up the two Nevskis, as the Ragnar of Fairy pushes into the top of the cap. Yep, they've Radar got three shots Nevskis. there on YBB. Um, Radar didn't pick up anything, so they'll currently realize that there's nothing there. With Diva yeah. being well south of the camp. Vor has taken a very, very weak position south of C. I think they kind of expected this. And and it's just got the daring in the Moskva over there. Probably just to kind of keep these guys honest a bit. They've really set up a much stronger position at B. Vor has completely abandoned the B cap. So Renegade's Daring is going to be able to easily pick up the B-Cap, backed up at close range by Asphodelus' Moskva and Naomi's Montana. So kind of the central and eastern portion of the board, pretty static for them for the interim, as we tend to see on Northern Waters, the A-Cap is where all, gonna, all the early fun's going to be. And because Vor have gone really heavy on this side, um, well, on A and B, they need to make something happen really quickly. So they have grabbed B, um, but they've got three ships there to do that, what they don't really need, as it turns out. Um, but it's still 4v4 on the A side, so they haven't really got an advantage from going light on Charlie. They need to make these three ships in the middle start to work somehow, either by um, stopping a Smile from going from C to B, uh, or by supporting the A cap. Yeah, and, and you see now they're taking blind shots into the Napoli smoke. They know this trick is coming. As the Napoli and the Des Moines try to use that smoke to get down the one line in behind that critical island. We saw General on this map work his way in there earlier in the day. Um, using a very similar trick uh, against Ban CV. He was able to do it, but man, it cost him a whole bunch of his HP along the way. Radar out from Vors Moskva in the middle of the map there. Um, not picking up anything, I don't think. Mm. Uh, clanmates in the gearing for Smile is out of range. They caught just a whiff of Classic Noun over here on the bottom end of A and just very quickly took away about 40% of his health. 
his torpedo salvo back on the one line going in on DNO and, and General Vezevki looks really good. They're both going to have to turn away to avoid the torpedoes, and DNO is still going to take one. It's actually big. It prevents the demand to yes. get to this item comfortably. Yeah, you've, you've just prevented that push. Renegade in the middle, caught by Stepan's radar in the Nevsky. Shells incoming. Renegade running. Uh, that's going to be right on the edge of range. Yep, yeah, Renegade he's out, goes of, he's, out of range. He's dark again. Yep. Both teams being uh, fairly, I don't want to say standoffish, but taking a fairly long range stance right now. Both the Darings and the A Camp trading shells here, um, both down to 10 and 14k respectively, Smile and Vor. Five minutes gone, Vor on about a 50 ish point lead here as um, they are growing that lead on the strength of their cap advantage. Smile still looking for a way in at the A Camp, but. Um, not finding anything yet, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, they're starting to pull stuff back off of the C flank, right? Ferry and Stepan are already kind of moving over towards the middle of the board. Yeah, they've left the gearing in C to contest against the daring um, of four. It's a very strong play, I like that. They're going to try, and they've left the Nevsky there as well to support the gearing, which is quite nice. Um, yeah. Be interesting to see what they do with Maniac. I'm kind of, I'm half expecting Maniac to start moving across a little bit, but Maniac is going to be looking, of course, into the middle of the map. Oh, Rashia's oh, Demoid. Oh, I didn't see where the shells just, came from. That was, the Ohio, that, was, that was Ryder. That was Ryder. Just took a brilliant shot, just lobbed him right over the island and took away half his remaining HP. Big hit. Yeah, Rashia over peaking just a little bit there. And that's great timing because the Des Moines and the Napoli of DNO Gaming. Uh, are just about to push down to the island. So yep. having that Des Moines, if... having taken that big uh, hit, is going to really help with that push. They, they formed up for the second go, and this time they're going to make it. General's going to take some more damage to get there. Probably DNO will as well, but I don't think they've got the ships to prevent this at this point. Kremlin Shell's coming in on General's bow. We'll have to see how those pull, unplay, unfolded, but nope, nothing major. Hmm. Maniac's also got shells in on uh, Aruha's Des Moines, but uh, that volley didn't do any damage at all. Dark Temple will push up to counter this double cruiser push from the north. As Maduka, Maduska is back onto A for Smile, Aruha's Des Moines radar going up to try and drive him away. Even though no one's even shooting at Maduska right now, he's still leaving the cap. Oh, Daring some shells and Classic Noun coming across to support. I suspect we'll see Classic Noun go all the way across to the edge of the border to put torps in across the uh, edge of the island there where the Napoli and the Des Moines are sitting. I am not sure if the Montana from Bill can actually lob to that Napoli Des Moines right now. He might I don't be believe that I don't believe that he can because they're just the angle to him includes this actually no, he can. I'm watching some of them fall in now. He doesn't land anything, but Naomi does have a shot there as they try to focus out Dark Temple between, well, just about everybody that can get shells on it. I think the Des Moines is kind of stuck on the walk there. Yeah, General looks pretty, he looks a little tucked in. Dark Temple does make it to the island. One fire burning on the back end of the superstructure. Uh, that's going to stop the uh, spam from the Ragnar and the Daring from hitting. Uh, but there is a gap in the island just to the northeast of Dark Temple. And the Ohio and the Nevsky can actually potentially lob shots in there. The Ohio definitely has done. Coming up on 700 points there for, for Vor. Smile continuing to fall further behind. Their inability to break into the A cap, punishing them early here. And they're on the wrist. They, they've got one ship that's pretty low. Well, both teams have a ship that's pretty low on that flank. Some critical salvos coming up over the next couple of minutes. Vor do currently have the points and the caps lead, but this position on A is looking kind of fragile. It's, it's very tenuous. Um, once Dark Temple goes down, I think even if if Smile lose that Des Moines as well, I, I think they're going to be able to then take and hold A, potentially. It might be fine, though, because C is contested constantly, and they have just have B taken mm. for them. That is true. There comes, there okay. comes Naomi with the final shell. Dark Temple goes Dark, Dark Temple... Yeah. He is dark, but he's still got Ohio shells falling in because who is that? That's Maniac's been taking shots for a while. Some of those are Medu Medusco's APs coming in as well, and now he's healing. 
Riders Ohio is pushing all the way down the one line to make sure they get this kill on Dark Temple. Yeah, they've they've got to get this kill on Dark Temple. Like this, their whole game pretty much hinges on it at this stage. Hitting They're gonna get shot. it right here, I think. There it is. So with a 220 point lead, Smile finally claims the one line, and is gonna um, try to get into A, but is it enough? Yanaya is currently in a bit of a risk now. Yanaya needs to start reversing and angling towards the Ohio. WCG is oh, waiting for his guns to reload. He's got a great shot on Yanaya. Here it comes. Ooh. Solid. Solid. A good 20k yeah, that... chunk there. <laughs> Yanaya is going to yeah, feel yeah. that in the morning. You can't, you can't broadside an Ohio like that. I think the problem was that as as the Ohio pushed around the corner, Yanai was still going forwards and so had to stop yeah. the momentum yeah. and then start reversing, and it just took too long. Yeah, he had pushed up into a, a nice aggressive position to support his teammates, but he ends up costing him a chunk of his HP there. WC, WCG throwing more shells down at him. Probably should get some full pens out of this. Does get a couple. Yanai under 10k and falling. Ryder's going to dodge those torps handily. Right at taking incoming from the Daring and the other Daring and the Des Moines. Not enough. So paying paying quite heavily for that, but they do get the kill. Vor has all of this firepower on this side of the map, and Smile has still managed to pick up two kills and push them off the A cap. So they're gonna take uh the A cap now. Renegade is now in trouble in the middle Renegade's of the map. Renegade's in big Vor. trouble, yeah. Big trouble. Yikes. Yeah, Ren Renegade did not exit quickly enough, I think, then. Oh, looks like a mistake's going to cost him his ship, and it does. A two-ship lead, and they're about to have a cap lead. Yeah, Renegade was there to uh, try and get as much damage on Ryder as possible, along with the other ships. Um, maybe could have just ducked out a little bit quicker. And now that's gonna shock the Ohio Entry B to stop the points gain completely. Maniac, yep, just crossing the border into the cap. Uh, Naomi's Montana is gonna push forward as well to counter that. Eight minutes to play in Aruha. Yeah, I was gonna say Aruha is pinned between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea, between both Ohio's looking at him. And uh, he doesn't make it. Smile takes the lead for the first time this match. The Moscow middle is in trouble as well. Both eyes are looking at him. That's it. Nah, that's 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 right there. Here we yep, see a replay what... of Ruha going down there. Okay, Naomi versus Maniac. A close range. Um, if the Ohio angles slightly, of course, the secondaries are going to be able to get good fire down on that Moscow. It, it, it feels like just piranhas see, circling for their final feast right now, watching Smile deal with these guys in the B cap. Yeah, these, these two guys in, in B are just pushing into certain death, really, because you're surrounded. You're completely surrounded. Yeah. They're going to take There's, down the you, cruiser first. There is nowhere to go for cover. Like, you have and, none. And honestly, it, if uh, Naomi wants the ram, Smile will just take that. Well, and Smile looks like they're just going to go get it to make sure they'll that, get that nothing, anyway. no, yeah, yeah, nothing crazy happens. They want to just go ahead and get this kill, take the ship off the board, make sure that uh, something strange don't occur. Mayant getting a lovely shot into the side of Naomi, ramming anyway. That is a great trade for Smile. 850 points just about on the board. Ragnar will dip into B. Uh, C has just been contested. These two, these two poor destroyer players right. over on C. They've but I mean, been, that's uh, once they pulled everything off of this flank, that was what the C cap was destined to go. All of the action was was going to be on the other side of the map, and it's worked out just pretty much as the script intended. Once uh, Smile yep. picked it up. Yep. Sometimes as a uh, tournament player, you just have to sit there and and just contest or uh, that's true. Just hold a position. While it's the it's a big it's. Contest. That's right. It's a big map. Everybody has their job to do, right? Sometimes your job is not exciting, but it's still your job. Oh, I can tell you stories about that. I, I'm sure you can, <laughs> right? Like, I haven't played, I haven't actually played competitive in a very long time, but I remember, well remember playing a lot of Benson back in the old Supremacy League, where it's like, 
your job is to sail around, spot things, and smoke up battleships. That was back in the air before smoke got changed, right? Oh yeah, the angry, the angry smoke, smoke clouds. Two, yeah, two point right. five kilometers away from you, you can't see jack e shit. Exactly, angry smoke clouds throwing shells at each other. Smile now, seconds away from a two zero sweep here. They're going to be your third place team here in King of the Sea, thirteen. As Vor will claim the fourth place prize, and um, in just a few few minutes, at some point, we will be heading on to see the big final, the All EU final. I know you guys are excited between Shaft and Ban CV. Congratulations to Vor, uh, to Smile here. They did a really good yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, these guys yeah, played was... great today. Both teams looked really good. Yeah, yeah. very decisive game there from Smile, um, and yeah, they're our third place uh, team. Very excited to see this EU final. So we're going to go back to Prague, um, <laughs> talk about what we've uh, just had in this third place match and uh, get ready for the grand event. Well, Smile has gone 2-0 over Panzer IV to claim the third place spot and the $7,500 purse that comes along with it. Congratulations to Vor, who walks away fourth place with the $5,000 pot. Ladies and gentlemen, that leaves just one thing, and that's an all-EU party between Shaft and NCV. Uh, that'll be coming up here shortly in a little bit. We're uh, going to take a quick look at the uh, end of this game. However, it is worth pointing out so that all of you know what to expect from the rest of the stream that we'll be watching shortly. Shaft versus Ban CV, the first time we've had two EU teams go to the grand finals of COTS Internationals. So... Uh, you can see that both of these blue teams have struggled mightily against some of the best teams the world could possibly throw at them. Uh, and uh, they have made it to the very end, while Smile from the CIS region takes number three and Vor takes number four. So, I suppose uh, we have a little bit to do. We're also going to, uh, before the night is over, we're going to get representatives from both Shaft and Band CV to come talk with us a little bit uh, further. We've had them both before already, but we're going to have a little talk about what it's like to have an all-EU final Oh, I guess, but maybe an all you grand final uh, and how it was for them going up through regionals and then all the way through internationals. So um, in that regard, let's talk real quick also about uh, drops, COTS drops, because again, we are coming towards the end uh, of the day and COTS internationals. Um, you can get one COTS container for watching 90 minutes of the stream. This is the last time that will happen today. You may also pick up times three COTS containers in the armory for community uh, tokens. You need to finish the uh, collection. This, I'm sorry, I'm having a terrible brain fart. You must finish the collection, the COTS collection this season in order to get your mission when 0.10.10 drops for the North Carolina Bane of the Seas COTS inspired camouflage. That is beautiful, sexy, and lovely, as well as the COTS camos and special commanders that can be uh, found in the armory. So. Do watch that. Do make sure uh, you finish out that collection if you can to get uh, that mission when it drops with the new patch. Uh, we have the replay available for Smile versus Vor. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Meow, meow, meow. Opening that up right now. Give us one moment here while it's being put up on the screen. And we will ask Seraphis. Yes, let's run guide us through this match. Let's run you all through this replay. As we see the initial deployment from both teams, we see that I think it's Smile who tries to make their way to the island right here. However, they were put off by the daring torps from this daring right here. Really good torps from that daring, forcing yeah, well, both those cruisers to turn and very well uh, timed. They take too long. Research that timing. Yeah. Yeah. He's not kidding either. Like, they very likely researched how long it takes for cruisers like that to make it there and knew where to drop their torps. I can 100% guarantee you that teams do that. Ban yep. CV speak about it all the time. They do. They have torpedo timing down. They will do training room after training room after training room to get torpedo timing down for things like that. Because those torpedoes, they literally pushed a Des Moines and a Napoli north to uh, ensure that nothing could take and hold that corner too quickly, which gave them points on the board at the bottom. So... Uh, sorry, please continue. Yes. We see the Moskva match, and we have a little bit of a showdown between them. Smile does end up winning out. Uh, here, right here. But at this point, Vor is already bleeding a lot of HP, both here on their daring, Kremlin, Moskva, 
or Des Moines, Montana, they're all bleeding HP. They are very heavily up on points at this point, but they just don't manage to get the disengage. The Des Moines tries to turn out here. Was that the Des Moines there, or was that coming up in a little bit? The red one, though. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. he, he got kind of caught there behind. Uh, he was taking fire from the 18-inch um, guns of the Ohio earlier, so he backed up uh, very far, but he kind of got pinched there as that Des Moines just wasn't able to stand between uh, the two Ohios that overmatch his deck, so... Uh, he was not long for this world, waiting there, and unfortunately the Montana and Moskva of Vor in the south really not in a position to do anything, as they can't cross-map, which is what the Montana wants to do. No, unfortunately, at this point, they were already down about 150 to 200,000 hit points, and it's just not salvageable. Nope, especially against a team like Smile, who's very calculated, doesn't take too many risks, and trades extremely well. Yes. Yep. So, um, unfortunately for Vor, that sealed the deal. They took the fourth place slot, but... Yeah, that's pretty damn good. I can't imagine why anybody would be unhappy with uh, a purse of $5,000 and uh, the rights to say you were in the top four of COTS 13 International. So um, once again, congratulations to Smile as they take the third place. And we prepare for our match, which is going to be Shaft versus Ban TV. Now, gentlemen, I know that you're excited about this, but I feel like for the people who haven't watched uh, as much COTS as they should have this weekend, Maybe they wouldn't have heard of Shaft before. Why do you think that would be? Shaft is a relatively new team, especially uh, in the comp scene and especially in the international scene. They're very, very new, having made it only a single time to internationals last time. Not a fantastic one there. A really fantastic one this time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Okay. <laughs> Good talk. Yeah, it looks at like, like okay, I feel I'm like it's, I feel like because of the fact that this is the grand finals of COTS 13 internationals, it might be worth going through the roster ever so quickly. So we're going to start with uh, the team that came in second in EU inter, excuse me EU regional finals. That would be Shaft. Shaft is made up of uh, cannot wait to do this of uh, players Biza, Danny Sinker, Effers. Exitus Blaze, Flow 420, It's Russian, Kamikazes, Kimi Lili, Moffle the Chat Band, Pipo Soviet, Pepega Azando. Did I say that right? <laughs> no, just Pepega Azando, okay. Uh, Pura Sijes, Stressed Possum, Exvert, and Zil 2. They go up against the first place EU finalists, Ban CV. The first of their roster being the infamous Sneaky Snake, who sneaks between the NA and EU servers depending on who he would like to see win that season. And he has, has that uh, sneaky underscore to make sure he comes first on the roster. That's right. He also has a sneaky underscore at the beginning to ensure that he comes first in any alphabetized roster and also to make sure that no one's ever able to raid him properly on Twitch. Angel Stone is coming in second with Atlaf Atlafus, Blood Legend, El Snackman, Firestrike, I, I, can't. I've heard you guys say his name over and over. Again. Anlai Tung. The thing is, it's complicated. He used to just be called Anlai Tung, and then people shorted it to Anlai. But it's basically IKEA. Yeah, I figured. And Anlai Tung means instructions. Oh. In German. IKEA Anlai Tung. IKEA IKEA Anlai Tung, <laughs> meaning IKEA instructions. That's delightful. Uh, Kini Modzak. Modz oh man, that <laughs> Kini Modzuk. It is. <laughs> Evan Brandis Point, also known as Junk Point, because he will always be known as Junk Point. Sriver, Vile9, or Ville, or Villeix. I don't know, what, are, what other silly pronunciations have we heard so far? Or just Vile. Vile. I prefer Vilex. Like Vilex roof windows. Yeah, it sounds like a really expensive watch, doesn't it? Like Vilex. Or maybe like a cheap knockoff of a Rolex or something like that. Vilex. And then finally, the man with the Minotaur, Yoshi EU. The man with Minotaur has a really Congratulations to all of you. Um, I hope, sorry, I hope I haven't pushed us too far back here. We have our team bands, uh, our ship bands, as well as our map bands coming in from Shaft. They have decided to ban the Moskva. I believe this is the first time we've seen the Moskva get banned. It is a staple as it is quite tanky. It has uh, highly accurate long range uh, rail guns and a large HP pool combined with 12 kilometer long duration radar. They've chosen to ban Warrior's Path, probably because. They want to 
choose some other path other than a path to being warrior. Marceau ban coming in from ban CV, and they've decided to ban Land of Fire. Um, notably, Hotspot and Islands of Ice are not banned. So, um, just voice from the off here, because oh, sorry, I didn't in in include myself in this scene. Because we, of course, have had this match before as our EU Grand Finals, uh, because, of course, uh, Schaaf came second. Um, and this is also a best of five. It's interesting. They, they screenshot in the Discord channel if you check. Um, because, of course, they've gone through this map pick ban process before, and there are a couple of differences. The ship bans stayed the same, but there are a couple of differences in the map bans between um, EU finals and international finals. Just uh, so you know. So, in the EU finals, the banned maps were Warrior's Path for Shaft and Trap for Band CV. Uh, that's interesting. So, Warrior's Path was still banned by Shaft, but. Band CV chose to ban Trap that time, this time choosing to ban Land of Fire, uh, which allows North, Northern Waters, Hotspot, Islands of Ice, and Trap all as possibilities. Um, do we know yet which maps they're actually going to get? Those ones. Oh, of course, because this is the best of five! <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm firing myself. <laughs> How have you two looked at me this whole time and had any amount of respect? That's my question. <laughs> I'm not sure I feel comfortable answering this question. <laughs> best of five, everybody. This is it. the International Grand Finals. It is best of five. That's why there are five maps on the board and not three. Um, so the first map will be North. North is a somewhat passive style where folks make large pushes up the 910, up or down the 910 line often, or maybe make a Doom Snail smoke train outside of the A cap to try and push around that way. Uh, oftentimes DD and Heavy Cruiser fire exchanged over the B cap, but some interesting movements can be made between B and C. Seraphis, uh, what what do you expect to see perhaps from Shaft being the newcomers, relative newcomers up against Band CV here? It's tough to say. I think that um, Band CV is just a tad bit better, and we saw it in EU finals. I think uh, Shaft it has learned a lot and will definitely put up more of a fight than it did in EU Finals. And might even take uh, one or two games off of Band CV, but I don't think they will win, unfortunately. Painzor. I'm inclined to agree, unfortunately. I want this to go to a Game 5 decider, and it'll be great. But I think Shaft... I think Shaft might... will take a map in this series. I think it's going to end up going 3-1 to Band CV. The Band CV is just so dominant. 3-1 like... to Band CV? Lord have mercy. Well, the chat may agree with you, Painzor, because 77% of 5.3 million channel points have been bet on Band CV. That's 77% against Shaft's 23. However, I'm going to say that I think Shaft will surprise everybody in this, as they were extremely dominant over Panzer IV, who were, in fact, last season's international champions. I thought they did really, really well, and they did so decisively and consistently. Um, very excited to see how they go up here against ban cv but um i'm trying to see no oh, okay good never mind that was that was what we needed so um let's see here if if the moskva is banned what do you gentlemen think we might see in replace of that solid tanky cruiser stalingrad yeah okay <laughs> well but, but you think that they actually <laughs> will bring two possibly even three to replace it no i think they will adjust their strategy and take one or maybe two. Yeah, I, th I think Stalingrad position somewhere above the B cap or below the B cap. Like between B and C is where we'll generally see Stalingrad play because that's mostly see Moscow. We also see them hanging slightly further back on the 10 line if you want to do some sort of heavy push. But I think it's going to be Kremlin's pushing down the 10 line along with a load of Salem and Des Moines play. Mm. Some sort of massive brawl breaks out there. A is played fairly passive, but probably a Honestly, I'd say a radar minotaur for both teams at the air cap, along with other ships to support them. I'm not going to decide which ships, but I think radar minotaur is a possibility at the air cap. And B, B, we've seen quite a lot of Des Moines parked around as well, so I'm probably going to say Des Moines plays there as well. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. We did see a very, very hard push by, um, I think it was Vor against Shaft, was it not? Who Vor pushed up the 910 line. And we're absolutely blunted by the uh, the hard Kremlin plus cruiser, I guess, umbrella that enveloped Vor's push up the 910 line by Shaft, while uh, Shaft did, in fact, push all the way around the A-cap with their double Nevsky and gearing comp. Wasn't that, isn't that correct? 
Probably. I can't remember that game. <laughs> <laughs> Are you perhaps getting brain fog from watching a lot of World of Warships pains are? Look, I can't look, we've seen so many games that I can't be expected to remember the individual traits of each one. <laughs> Turns out we're waiting for the team still, so we can talk about my more. Sarah, what's your thing for the air cap? Like, what do you think? Because I'm seeing Raider Minotaur. Look, if Yoshi's playing, we will definitely see Minotaur. If Yoshi is not playing, we will definitely not see Minotaur. Tell me, can you see that far? <laughs> no, I can unfortunately not see which uh, or which ships are, or which players are ready in the training room. There I've, are leaking I've... important <laughs> information. If Yoshi's in the training room, they're running Minotaur. Oh, Yoshi is known for his Minotaur play. Basically, only plays Minotaur, so it's not exactly unexpected that when he plays, he plays Minotaur. Do we know whose map choice this was? We do. This was Shaft's pick. So Shaft, picked Shaft picks map. North. Yeah, and Bansi V chose Alpha Spawn. North, obviously, a very safe map pick as the spawns are very uh, equal. They're very balanced, meaning that your opponent doesn't get any uh, advantage in picking the spawn. So that was North, then Northern Waters was picked by Bansi V. And then does that mean Hotspot was picked by Shaft? Yes. Okay. I, I have one... I have one wish for this final series, for this grand finals. I want a game four so that we can finally see Ion's Vice. Is that, yeah. is that, is that too much to ask? Shaft, we, we need... I, I, we really need this this game four. Ion's like, a therapist. You Twitch concur. chat, give like, please. Shaft your okay, energy. Okay. We need a game four in this series. We <clears> want <throat> the underdog story. We want Shaft to bring it to Van CV. So, we want to go to five games. You know, it, it just occurred to me as I was thinking here, trying to think of something funny to say, uh, that... The, the, there must be a history of, between Shaft and Ban CV in the EU region in things like clan battles. Obviously, Shaft not being a very uh, uh, a very old team in terms of how long they've been around, but in terms of the competitive scene, uh, how quickly has Shaft come up? Quite quickly. We actually saw them um, face off against Rain in the semifinals last time. Yes. Um, where it was a very close match um, because Ban CV was already out at out of the tournament, beaten by then uh, Cost Champions Reign. Um, this time they're facing Ban CV again, the tournament winners. So they're doing a really good job. Hmm. Always going pretty close with the tournament winners. Unfortunately, against Ban CV, the games weren't as close, but hopefully we'll see those close games right now when it really, really matters. Absolutely. So you can see here from the graphic folks that. Um, even though Shaft is relatively new, even as far back as Clan Battle Season 7, they were able to pull off Hurricane wins without having competed previously. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the EU server as I am with the NA server, but that would in, in, that would imply to me as though um, the clan was likely made up of folks who were already very, very talented and capable, who were able to push their way up into Hurricane and consistently make that through uh, out the clan battle seasons, but this is their, this is, I believe, their fourth attempt in COTS and the second time in COTS Internationals, which, uh, you know, you, you can you can find from, even from our um, NA's clan KSC, who ended up winning uh, COTS Regionals for NA, coming in and facing international teams is a completely different ballgame. Um, and it appears that Shaft has at least managed to sort of push through that learning process, perhaps because they learned last time uh, during COX-12 that when you are facing the SEA teams or the Russian teams or the NA teams, that everybody has their own style and it is very difficult to actually come through uh, and win consistently like you can in your own. So um, we can uh, we can see that, in fact, it is extremely likely we will be seeing a Minotaur this game. I see it's extremely likely, you think, huh? Yes. I, I've, I've just been informed that the channel points bet on the outcome of this match have now reached 9.3 million, which has, I believe, topped the previous all-time high for this channel, uh, which was set earlier today. Now it's at 9.6. <laughs> Stonks. <laughs> Stonks. Can we reach Stonks. 10? Stonks. Can we reach 10 million? I, I don't know if we can do it before. Oh, no, of course, because it's for the entire series. So I think this could go very, very high. I'm getting the look of you idiot. Of course it can go. Um, well, folks, thank you all for sticking around and being as patient as you have. We are dropping into the match now. Up to 9.8. Keep it coming. What was it? What, what were they saying about it? Uh, 
To the moon, boys. To the moon. To the moon. 79% for band CV, 7.8 million, 2.1 for Shaft at 21%. Let's do a quick prediction. Sarah. I hope Shaft takes it. I do. He wants the Shaft. Painzor. I like Ban TV on this map. I think it's going to go 1 0 to Ban TV in the field. Let's go to Fane's or the stats below can see Raptor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome to North as we spawn into the final match of King of the Sea 13 here in the international bracket. This is the big friend final for all the big prize money. This is where we're at, looking at Band CV and Shaft, a complete rematch of the EU finals from just two weeks ago. Spawning to the north, Band CV bringing in an Ohio, a Kremlin, Des Moines, Minotaur, Nevsky, Stalingrad, rounding things out with a gearing and double Ragnar. Stats bloke, what is Shaft up to at the other end of the map? Shaft, the EU number two's runner-ups uh, from the EU finals, uh, are bringing Ohio, Ohio, Des Moines, Salem, a Venezia, a Nevsky, a Gearing, a Daring, and a Ragnar. Uh, so, we were talking a little bit about the the switch of the maps and the the bands and stuff like that. So, um, Henning, any anything you want to point out um, with regards to this rematch? Yeah, the first uh, interesting thing about this rematch is that uh, Moscow was banned by Shaft, which is what they did in the EU finals as well, which is forcing Ban CV into taking Stalingrad instead. Ben CV, like, I'm I'm a member myself, likes to run Moskvas everywhere. So Stalingrad obviously being more vulnerable to HE spam because of the increased fire duration might give Shaft a weakness to exploit in the games. And on the other hand, we have a different map ban from Ben CV, banning Land of Fire instead of Trap, which is probably because they played Land of Fire, uh, Land of Fire against Smile, which they won, kinda. It was. They're just it not was very a, happy with it. Yeah. yeah. So they probably don't want to play Land of Fire against Shaft right now. That makes sense. Maybe they've got a, a strat that they think is going to work on Trap. Now, um, for okay. those of us like for those of us that like myself that didn't watch or weren't able to catch the EU finals, what was the result of that of that match? These mm -hmm. two teams, the previous time these two teams met. Um, it was 3-0, but that doesn't tell the full story as usual. Um, it, it wasn't a complete walkover. Uh, Shaft absolutely were in those games, um, and so, you know, the 3-0 is not a foregone conclusion by any means. So, uh, Band CV can't just sit back and go, well, we won this last time. They really need to concentrate and make sure that they do get the win. Um, Shaft can absolutely cause an upset here. So far, nothing doing on the caps. We're seeing some early trades across the C cap. The Daring, that's Flo, and Zil's Ragnar throwing some HE downrange on uh, online Stalingrad. I think they got, did they get him to light? No, it didn't look like he lit on fire. If he did, he might have put it out right away. He's backed off a bit now. So we're going to see uh, Kremlin and Des Moines for Band CV pushing over towards the 910 line. Um, Ohio of Vert for Shaft could end up on that position as well, although currently Vert staying underneath the cap. And we've got the lone Salem of Chatban moving up around to Nose In. Salem, of course, is a great ship to be parked Nose In. It gets that super heal compared to uh, Des Moines. Uh, you just lack the acceleration that comes from the unique upgrade that you can mount on the Des Moines. Over here at A, cap. both... Yeah, I was going to say, both teams setting up a little bit of a smoke cloud on their respective sides of the cap. Nobody venturing down there near the cap circle just yet. If we have a glance back at C, Flo's daring back onto the bottom end of the cap. I'm trying to think if, let's see, did we see a radar earlier? I don't remember if we saw one from the Stalin or from the Ragnar. Blood Legends I'm, Ragnar are a little too far out of range. I'm pretty sure Blood Legend waited earlier, which is why okay. he HP there. Angel so Stone in the of... middle for Band CV just got a nice volley onto Zandos Ohio underneath A for uh, about 15k mm. or so. Uh, okay. Just it's quite normal at the beginning of these finals. I, I've noticed that the beginning of these best of five finals, both teams tend to be quite um, reluctant to engage. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, there's a lot on the line, and I, yeah. I find that in these finals, the teams tend to be a little bit less aggressive than they are in the other series. 
They play very conservatively. Some torpedoes coming in over here into this smoke south of A. Kamikaze's, I think, is going to be able to dodge his. It's the ones Eliza. coming in on Zando is going to take at least three gearing torps. That's going to hurt. Yeah, Zando down to half health there. Uh, Nevsky is definitely going to want to monopolize yep. on that. Already the Nevsky shells coming in, looking to get that fire going. Yeah, Ohio's DCP will be running for a little while, but um, if that Ohio stays spotted, Kinemod and the Nevsky should be able to get some fires. Des Moines radar going up at B. That's uh, Kimmy trying to have a look at Shriver, who's actually backed up by the Ohio, so there's pretty much no way Kimmy can go out there to deny this cap. Shriver's going to be able to pick that up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, the Kimmy get punched in the nose. Go ahead. If you look at the minimap, Bansi V, if you, you can draw a line for all their ships right now, and they're yeah. all heading south uh, over yeah, B they and are. C. It is actually a recurring theme in our stretches. The it's pretty nice to watch. <laughs> you just you, you watch all the ships kind of uh, you know juggling, ju juggling, new word, juggling, juggling, ju juggling for position, and then uh, suddenly they all line up and start pushing. It's really nice. Yeah, no. From from the ten line, as you go west, you've got Kaidus here on the ten line. Snackman's Kremlin on the 9 line. Blood Legends Ragnar on the 8 line in the cap. Online Stalingrad on the 7 line. The Ohio, that's Angelstone on the 6 line. Shriver on the 5 line. And then you have to go a little ways before you find some more teammates. Yoshi's Minnow. And then the other guy's way over on the map edge. Yeah, they'll be kiting. So you've got the pushing force of the Ohio and the, the half health Ohio of Zando. Uh, with the gearing and the Nevsky with the Venezia of Stress Possum right over on the side. They are pushing up into A to get Exodus Blazer's gearing into the cap. One of the one of the interesting things that I've kind of watched, ooh, good hit on Shatban Salem there from Snackman. One of the things that I've kind of noticed as the tournament has played out over the course of the last month, right? Ragnar is a new ship, and, and a lot of teams have taken to it because it's really good at beating up destroyers. It's a great cap contester. But the lack of torpedoes means that oftentimes you're not able to control the movements of some of the enemy ships the way you might want. Um, we saw a lot of NA teams continue to bring Shimakaze for that, and uh, we haven't seen, like, we've seen Torpedoes today having a big impact, but less than I'm used to seeing out of King of the Sea, just because Ragnar has been so prevalent. Yeah, that's true, and there is a marked difference between the games where we're seeing a lot of gearings and darings, and the games where we're seeing a lot of Ragnars, because, yeah, there is a massive difference in the number of Torpedoes in the water. Oh, Yoshi coming under fire there. Big hits. Those are Venezia yeah. salvos from the edge of the board. Oh, there's an Ohio salvo coming from as well. Ooh. Yep, some more Ohio guns coming in. That's uh, Pepe's Ohio. Pops a heal. Yoshi. He's dark. They're guessing. Yeah, go, going dark, uh, running the heal should be just fine. But that doesn't mean that Shaf will get A. That bottom actually under a lot of pressure here. He's got caught. He's got caught, caught out. Doesn't he yeah. have the smoke? Uh, no. I think he used his smoke to get into that position. Well, that's really bad then. Yep. Yeah, I feel like if you had it, he would have used it already. Yeah, possum uh, is just line of sight spotted by Vile's gearing. Takes a shot Trying at the gearing. Trying to dodge, but burning, and that one fire is going to keep ticking. Yes, it he's is. healing now. He did get a peel off. It's a question of how many of these Nevsky <laughs> shells hit him on the way out as he's trying to retreat farther back south. Yeah, Possum just trying to keep weaving because those Nevsky shells obviously have some travel time. He does up get the three. fire out, and he is, dark. he is he is finally dark. He's undetected. They don't get the fire. So he manages to, to save his ship. Shaft sitting on A, Ban CV sitting on B and C. It's about a 120-ish point lead for Ban CV here. Nine minutes gone. And if I honestly, if I'm looking at Shaft's board position, I'm like, all right, you got to break into a cap somewhere. How do you do it? Where do you start? So the problem here for Shaft is actually they lost a lot of HP on A, which is where they would usually start yeah. pushing here. So they can't really yeah. do that anymore. And all the other caps are locked down heavily. Like, look at B yeah. and C. There's, like, fancy ships all <laughs> around the yeah. caps. The, the Put yourself Stalin... in Flo's position. Put yourself in Flo's yeah. position right now in the daring for Shaft. 
And yeah. the call is saying, right, okay, we need to get into B. And you, you're thinking, mm, no, <laughs> I don't now, want them to actually, do that. You, you say that, but if you look, now he doesn't know this necessarily. No. Even he could, he could go get on the beat. Nobody has shots on him right now. No, that's Striver, true. Striver would have to back up. If he got into the right position, Angel wouldn't have shots. It would take the Ragnar or the Stalin radar to pick him out. He's lit right now. There's the Stalin radar. Unless Stalin radar going up, they know where Flo is. Well, that's now they good can for Flo, because Flo can just stop on this corner here for a bit. Ragnar yes. can always be burst the... to get shots. Wait for and the radar cop... to go down. His conga line torps on Snackman are all going to miss. But that explains once, why they radar. Once Anlay's radar goes down, uh, Flo can just push through to the cap. They know we where Shriver is. They know where Shriver is, but Shriver's radar would still be able to pick him out. Angel would have to move up to, back up to take that shot, which is exactly what he's doing. Snackman is actually under a lot of pressure here. Yep, Snapman taking incoming from the Daring, uh, from the Ragnar, from the Salem. Uh, They've obviously Salem. made Snackman the pick as, as Zill gets hammered right there. Yeah, Kytus has pushed around the rock and is getting good shells into Zill as well as Blood Legends Ragnar. Yeah, Zill's got to be careful here. here. Yeah, he can't. He doesn't want to give up his ship for this. It's too soon, but it's going to happen. No, it's going to happen. And now the Salem has a problem. There's a really angry Kremlin in your face. You need yeah, to kill him before a, he shoots you. A really angry Kremlin in <laughs> his yeah, face. This was not the plan. Snackman's was, Kremlin was supposed to be was, dead. Yeah, it's not like this. Not like this. <laughs> uh, Chatman uh, switches Snackman... to the AP. That's, That's going to get decision. him. Yeah, they're going to get Snackman here. Yeah, AP on the superstructure. Good decision. Snackman goes down. So we've now got Salem versus Des Moines. Uh, all other things being equal, that's probably in the Salem's um, advantage. The, but... the problem is the Salem's here is just not going down. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and it's not uh, just the Des Moines, is no, it? No, it's not. The Ragnar is there as well. Um, if he keeps pushing, Anlay will have a shot. I was going to say, if he keeps pushing, the Stalin will have his broadside. That's a bad place to be in a cruiser. Um, is Anlay looking? Let's have a look. Yes, absolutely. Oh, here yeah, Anlay's AP. waiting for that. Here comes the AP. Yeah, Anlay's waiting for this shot. And here yeah, it comes. Yeah, that's going to be the end of Chatman that's, for sure. Yeah, Chatman's going out right there. Okay, so that leaves Shaft with ships only in the west half of the map. On BBC Congolang tops going for an Ohio. Yep, up a cap, up a kill. Shaft's got to make a play. They send flow into B, knowing that C is a lost cause. A lot of torps going out for Angel Stone here. He's not going to be able to dodge them all. The question is simply how many will he end up taking? Looks like about Looks four? like it's going to be two or three. Yeah, two. Just two. Well, okay. He angled better than there. I thought. Yeah. The big problem right now for Shaft is if Bansivi just runs and only defends oh. C, they actually win with that. Yeah. Conga line torps on Kimi Lil's Des Moines. Kimi Lil reversing. I think that's going to be everything's okay there for Kimi Lil. Apart from yeah. the fire and the incoming shells. Okay for now. But I mean, is Shaft, Shaft not only needs a kill, they need to get into B and I to save to save, save them some time. And with the Stalin and the Ragnar hanging around, I don't know how you're going to do it. Especially since now you've got another Ragnar and Kytus' Des Moines are going to be freed up to come in from the 8-9 line. Oh, so look at yeah, Anlai yeah. going for the gap. There's nothing that can contest him here. No. He's, he can just sit in there all he wants. There's nothing to get his flank. Yeah, Both Sandals, Ohio's. Sandos Ohio could get shots into that gap, but it's a Stalingrad. Um, it's just going to nose in and yeah. it'll be reasonably tanky in that gap. Both Shaft Ohio's in adjacent adjacent squares. This is something that when I cast with Zath on King of the Sea, we like to, to kind of point out because it feels like, you know, on these maps, especially a big map like North, those cross shots, the ability to, to find shots and, and take salvos that your opponent may not be expecting is a a big thing in a battleship, but when they're this close together, it's 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 very difficult mm. to find that. I think it's a sign that something's going wrong when you've got your battleships oh, yeah. like that, as you say. It's um, yeah, it's very much that. Then everyone can you know all the stuff that can bow tank you can just nose in. Oh, big SAP hits from stressed on Shriver. They might get him here. He coming in from across the map from the other side as well. Four, five, eight. And there he goes. Shriver down. That's a huge kill for Shaft. That buys them a little more time. Maybe gives them another another way into the B cap with one of those radars off the board. 
Himalayal is going to park by this island. Do they know? Yes, they do know that Anlay is in the island. In the game. Oh, they know. They did. They did so many kills, though. Yeah, it's it's not going to be easy. Right? It's not going to be an easy road back, especially from down HP like they are as well. They need two kills at this point and contest B immediately, which they are actually doing. Yep. Flow and Verts Ohio now into B. That'll slow things down, buy them some time, but they still need a kill, as Henning says. Yeah, and two Bansi kills. B, quite sensibly, Bouncy V are all uh, keeping their distance or staying behind cover. Yeah. Yoshi staying dark, Vile staying dark, Kinemon's shooting from pretty much max range, Angelstone Actually, running away. If Angelstone dies here and uh, Flo goes for the YOLO on Unlive, that might actually be a thing. They have the opportunity to do it, but they've got to get Angelstone, and that's easier said than done. Five minutes to play. Ban CV in the driver's seat here. Oh, Kimmy's going down. Somebody just smacked Kimmy. Yep. Kimmy's going down. That will end the game, I think. That's yep. it. Yep. That's enough points. Ban CV looking solid here in game one. Yeah. However, this is a best of five. Yep. Best of five, not a best of three. Yep. So, uh, Plenty of room for uh, a comeback here from Shaft. Yep, got to win. Got to win. Both teams, you know, got to win three, right? So we got at least two more games for sure. Have to see what Band CV does and how Shaft reacts as we head over to Northern Waters. But for now, we'll throw it back to the studio and let uh, Bogsy and the team have a crack at it and see what they think. Welcome back, everybody. Game one going to Band CV in this best of five series for the COTS 13 Internationals Grand Finals between Shaft and Band CV from the EU server. Uh, gentlemen, first game going to Band CV. The, they are walking into this, the heavy favorites, having beaten Shaft uh, already in regionals. Um, however, Shaft looking very, very strong throughout this tournament. How did this game go for Shaft? Seraphis, how was it? I think Shaft are definitely. Um stronger now than they were in the regional finals i think they almost they almost had a way to claw back there at the end if they managed to take down angel stone and take down Anlai. unfortunately kimmy ended up dying before they could achieve this so they almost had a way back which you know it was pretty close but no losing your voice are you so surprised that band cv won that you're speechless You know, I, I'm I'm learning to expect less and less. <laughs> <laughs> Painzor, we saw that uh, we saw that Shaft started with an actual uh, uh, an actual boat lead. They committed more resources to the A cap, and yet they weren't really able to convert that into any ga uh, ground gained or points gained out of that. And actually, sort of ended up costing them. They were very indecisive in the beginning of the game. Do you feel like that was too too much for them to really come back from? I think the problem was they lost. Very early on, they lost a massive chunk of their health on the Ohio. He ate three torpedoes from, I think it was, is it gearing that was on the air cap? I can't remember. Yeah. Really. yeah. yeah. He ate three gearing torpedoes very early on in the smoke screen. Nevsky like, was with him. Nevsky managed to dodge him, but the Ohio not maneuverable to dodge those torpedoes. And that just kills a lot of your pushing potential when your battleship is like, okay, I can't push now. I need to sit back, heal up. I don't have a Damacon. Especially if you're pushing into something like Nevsky's, which will then burn you to an absolute crisp you need to sit there and just heal up you, you like so this push it's completely stalled out by it right so you can see right out here from the gate already uh shaft has committed a number of resources to the c cap area that they don't end up actually making too much use of until a little bit later um instead they rather put four over here and yes we'll see in just a moment as that ohio goes ahead and uh, helps himself to three gearing torpedoes boom coming through the smoke ah we lost it couldn't quite see it there um, but here again, it is now 4v3 for Shaft against Band CV on the A cap, and they're not able to convert it. Sarah, why don't you go ahead and walk us through uh, what goes wrong here at the A cap? If we just let it play out, we see that Yoshi, while in a vulnerable position, and he does actually take some damage, doesn't actually manage to be converted into a kill here. He does get away due to the super heal and maneuverability of the Minotaur. And unfortunately, Shaft isn't able to convert this into real map, pre map pressure in other parts of the map, as they're still held off by the Nesky and Gearing. 
I'm sorry, I, I believe I misspoke earlier. I mentioned that they were uh, Shaft was not able to convert it into a cap, but obviously they did convert it into a cap. What they didn't do was push through, which may or may not have been a good choice as they decided to rotate the Venezia and the Ohio back further as the Venezia took an enormous amount of damage. But l l look, just take a look here for a moment. Like, Ban CV has got this essentially together, and as time goes on, they push it even further as the Salem disappears, and then all of a sudden, this is our map now. This is a huge, you know, all of our all of our Shaft players are over here in the bottom left corner of the map, and it never really gets better for them. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing else to say here. The, what, there, when we let this play out, there's a tiny window for them right here um, to possibly get it, where they can take down the Ohio and the Stalingrad. Unfortunately, however, this one here goes down and the game ends. And ultimately, there was no hope of them actually making it to the sea cap to stop that point bleed. They'd need to kill every easily every 45 seconds yeah, in order to get Yeah, but they were about, they were about to convert two kills, but unfortunately, <laughs> yep. um, the game ended. Yep. Uh, possibly a little bit of uh, indecisiveness on Shaft's part after they took those three torpedoes in the Ohio, not pushing through the A cap to try and wrap up Ban CV. So we'll have to see if they're able to even this out to one-to-one -to -one in game two, which will be taking place on Northern Waters. Uh, this is Shaft's pick, correct? Or is this Ban CV's pick? This is Ban CV's pick. Ban -CV. This is Ban CV's pick, okay. Um, Northern Waters, they've obviously, Ban CV has done very well on this. This is a, a map about positionings. However, with the uh, with no Moskvas allowed in this uh, matchup, we may actually see some different strategies as Moskvas are very, very strong. We were expecting to see Stalingrads, perhaps, to take the place of the Moskvas, and that did not end up, at, end up actually materializing. So it'll be interesting to see what they decide to park on some of these islands to act as major radar buoys and sort of uh, lockdown angles, as Stalingrads and Moskvas are able to punish broadsides for people who uh, don't respect the ability for them to do damage at long range. Yeah, we uh, did end up seeing a single Stalingrad as a no replacement one. for uh, Moskva. But um, we don't see three, two, three, four Moskvas like we would yeah. uh, in some of the EU games. Yeah, I, I suspect we might see some Stalingrads on this to lock down those specific positions. Um, might even see Napoli's if anybody was watching the, the VOR games or the uh, minus one S games, as Napoli's were used very effectively in those situations, even against um, the CIS teams as well. So uh, I, I expect we might even see some smoke trains trying to take the C-cap. Uh, but... Definitely interested to see uh, what we get. <clears throat> I have a distinct feeling that Man City might have a special strategy for this map. Oh dear. Do we have uh, Do we have an update on what the channel points are up to? Could we perhaps? Are, get you, are you talking to me? Or um, sniping cat. We're talking sniping cat. Sniping cat. Unbiased, Please. Mr. Conway. You, you may still speak. 85 million? 8.5. 8.5 million channel points for ban CV and 2. Point what? 2.3 for Shaft. Well, that's, uh, that's a bit of a hill to climb in the public opinion, isn't it? But it's an enormous amount of, of channel points. So, Mr. Conway, how many of those channel points are yours? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> The completely so, unbiased, Mr. Conway. Look, I strongly believe in uh, supporting the underdog uh, morally and with my channel points. So my own, my own stash of thirty thousand channel points has uh, been um, voted for for um, Shaft. So Shaft, don't disappoint me because with a ratio of four point seven, you could turn that into like almost one hundred and fifty k. But no, Ban TV like mega dominant as 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 we expect and uh, as we kind of know them to be. Uh, but I still don't discount Shaft. I think they've they've got a couple more chances here, and I really want to see them pull something cool out of the hat. Mr. Conway going on that Conway vibe. Mr. Conway definitely definitely drinking deep from the hopium, the hopium grail. <laughs> oh yes, <clears throat> there's a big stash of hopium right here. There may even have been a very large sum. Donated by one Mr. Uh, Damel, <laughs> <laughs> of 140,000. But to whom? He's just going to stay silent. Doesn't say on my piece. 
Does it? Very good. Very good. <clears throat> ah, well, in that case, gentlemen, what do you guys think that Shaft needs to do differently? Obviously, they got a little... Not eat torpedoes. That's a good start. That is a good start. Yeah. Absolutely. Do they need to be more aggressive? As uh, we saw in uh, plain band CV fashion, they clearly, they took two caps and they said, these are ours. Good luck getting them back from us. And it seemed as though Chef didn't really have an option. Either they need to make them pay for taking those caps more. I think band CV is actually losing very little in taking those caps, which makes it very easy for them to hold them. I see. Well, let's see here. Let's take a look at the international prizes that we have as our team still continue to get ready. Um, if it wasn't clear before, this is for the first and second place um, uh, positions. Second place earning $10,000 to be split amongst the people registered on the team, where first place $17,500 USD to be split amongst the winners. Which is, um, well, that's definitely enough to buy yourself an egg gear. That's my favorite boat. That's what I'd buy with it. That's all I'd want, really. Just Not buy, a bunch of penny candies. Just buy 10 egg gears. It'd be great. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Um, well, gentlemen, as we get prepared here to uh, move into game two of COTS 13 International Grand Finals between between Shaft and between Band CV, Painzor, who's your money on? Who are your channel points on? I think this game is going to be, again, to Band CV. It's going to be 2-0. My channel points are on Band CV, but I hope Shaft takes it. Excellent. Let's check in with Sea Raptor and Staff Bloke. Game two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to game number two of the international finals here in King of the Sea 13, as we bring you Shaft and Band CV spawning here into Northern Waters. The Northern spawn is Shaft. I'm already seeing things shotting, so, uh, shooting, so I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, we might restart. Well, yeah, this looks like a restart, so... Um, Back to the training room, apparently. Yeah, let's do the lineups when we come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. Back to the studio, as we have had not a mulligan, because apparently nobody knows what that means, but a restart. Because yes. everybody knows what restart means, don't they? So, Especially read ML. Yeah, read ML. Definitely Especially read ML. Absolutely. Well, as we have just a few moments here, uh, thank God I hadn't actually gotten to the chair, because had I... <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a very interesting sprint. <laughs> Absolutely. T-shirts available, everybody, at worshipsmerch.com. These shirts are fantastic. They include the new King of the Sea logo, a uh, golden doubloon with the new skull and crossbones, and King of the Sea uh, uh, 13 insignia, along with the crown attached to it. Um, those are available to be purchased. Um, oh. Those also were given out to the winners of each regional team. Yes, Painzor. I was just there, all by winning King of the Sea. Yes. Or by winning um, King of the Sea, yes. Just, just quickly, because I, I see this kind of uh, misconception going around a bit. This is not the new permanent King of the Sea logo. Oh. It's because it's the 13th, you know, iteration. And yar. Okay. Yar. Because 13 makes me think of pirates, right? <laughs> Doesn't it? No. It makes me think makes that me think every, like, every building in existence is missing a 13th floor. It's, it th makes me think of spooky things, but pirates aren't really spooky. <laughs> Mr. Conway.exe has crashed. He's gone to a blue screen. I Should we force restart? Turn him off well, on again. The game already restarted. Why not, why not Conway as well? We blue screened Mr. Conway, uh, but as we approach game two here and are allowed no more restarts. No. Uh, Mr. Conway, do you have a prediction? But I still already different. said. Well, okay, fine. Look, I believe Bansi V will win this, and then Shaft will come back with a reverse sweep. 3 2 2 vote. Content. The hopium. Dream. The dream. Hopium, hopium. Uh, let's, Content and hopium. Let's go ahead and go to Sea Raptor and Stats Bloke. Um, take it away, gentlemen. Game two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to take two of game two here of the King of the Sea 13 international finals between Shaft and Band CV as we are here on Northern Waters. Let's take a look at those lineups once again. 
From the north here, Shaft spawning in with Yamato, Kremlin, Des Moines, Salem, Minotaur, Venezia, Stalingrad, a very nice wide array of cruisers, rounding things out with a daring and a Ragnar, but I cannot wait to hear what Stats and Henning have to say about this Pan CV all, lineup. First of all, I'm going to direct your attention to the hit points of the teams because Pan CV have 100,000 less hit points, and that is because they are running Ohio Kremlin, Worcester, we saw that earlier, a Colbert, the first time we've seen that recently in King of the Sea. Uh, a Nevsky, two gearings, and two Ragnars. Now, Mr. Bouncy V. Henning, you were actually mentioning earlier that they, we might see maybe a Colbert or something. Uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Unlike Blood, why are you doing this to me? Like, what? <laughs> so, we saw the booster earlier with the idea to spam the E1 walk there. Didn't really mm -hmm. work out because the Lemoyne that was sitting there got smoked by his daring fan the entire time. I have no idea about the Colbert. I'm not sure what it's about. I have not seen a strut before. I have not seen anyone pick a Colbert before in this uh, King of the Sea. So, no clue. So my question is, where are they going to stick it? So they're going to, it's going over towards A. Uh, we saw before the Worcester of Anlay, and Anlay is in the Worcester again, um, was shooting from smoke initially, and then from by the side of the islands. But the Colbert is heading over towards A. Is that going to be open water? Um, and what is it designed to hit? Because hitting anything that's moving with a Colbert at range is very, very tricky. So I'm assuming it's intended for a nose-in target. I am actually not, uh, not quite sure I, what I, it's about. Like I can't see right now where this is going. <laughs> like I have uh, not seen a Colbert in Kotz work ever. No, on, I, on I, I think we're all. I think we're all a little baffled, honestly. And the other thing is that you know I could see it if maybe you paired it up. If you if you brought one in, maybe thought to play it like a Nevsky or that Wooster, smoke it up, move it around, put it in positions, whatever. But then it, but there's no if smoke gonna, on that side of the map. Exactly. So if you're going to do that, you would bring a smoke screen. But if you're going to bring smoke screen, you would bring a Nevsky. That's right. I, so I, I, I agree. I, I, I'm, ugh, I, I got nothing. Get it. I guess right, we'll so find out, thing, right? The only thing I think right now is they're going to either stick it into the island or they're going to have it kiting on the one line right by the border to try and catch a destroyer around the island somewhere. Well, Ban CV, Ban oh, CV does see. strike first over at the C cap. They put Vile's gearing in. They pick up C. He gets raided by Exodus's Stalingrad. A little dinged up and pushed out of the cap as now Flo's Daring is going to reverse in and steal back those points as uh, Ban CV out to a, He's going to take about 20, 25 points off of that cap and then it's going to go the other way. Ban CV's gearing reversing into the B cap. Um, Zill's Minotaur is there. Probably a radar miner. There's the, really there's the Colbert. You yeah, know what I think it might be? Well. I think the Kremlin is uh, supposed to push into A here. Yeah, and they, they, the, the speed boost on the Colbert, because it does have the speed boost, doesn't it? It is French. Yes, it does. It has kind of enabled it to get over here, I think, a little faster than maybe that they were anticipating. Now, they're not able to get as much damage on distressed Ragnar as they probably wanted, but now that the Colbert is there, the two Ragnars around, that's enough radar. It should be able to keep him out of the cap. Yeah, that threat of the DPM sitting right there by the island is certainly going to be worrying uh, the Ragnar for Shaft. Um, the Salem, not so much, because the Salem can can uh, easily just back around the island a little bit. Brandis is gearing, touching B, one of the Ragnars, that Shriver picking up A as we sit here. Chapan's Salem radar, the little T-Rex radar going out, should have the range to pick up Rag uh, Shriver, and it does. So here comes I some shells from Possum. The I heard you describe it as a T-Rex Raider on the NA cast. I just, that made yes. me laugh for a long time. Yeah, that's, 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 I stole that from Zath, but I find it to be completely accurate, <laughs> I love right? It. Because, because it's just, it's just his yeah. little T-Rex Raider. <laughs> yeah, I love it, I love it. Okay, so they do get A. Uh, Blood Legend, after capping, is just going to retire. Snackman is pushing in he, still. He is, actually. I'm yeah, a little surprised at that. <laughs> This goal is the E3 position on that island, on the northern okay, island. No, yeah. that, that makes sense if he can get there. Take, taking a salvo at Zill's Ooh. Minotaur with his bow guns. We have That's done that before, push. I think, in COTS 11 or 12. Uh, it's a really safe position once the Kremlin get there. The only threat you usually have to watch out for is torpedoes from like a Shimmer on A, but I mean, it's a Ragnar. 
Yep, exactly. So AP out from Vert's Kremlin over on the one line against the Broadsiders Nightman. Does 10k. Uh, 10k, not terrible. Not great, not terrible, as the Wooster uh, gearing pair does manage to pick up B. There's some torpedoes coming in to the smoke that Brandis is laying for uh, Onlai. Onlai's going to take at least one of the... Oh, they run short. Look at that. Not quite enough range out of those Minotaur torpedoes. Shaft, uh, obviously have C, no no danger there. Um, they can't really deal with Snapman now that he's pushed all the way forwards to the island. They don't really have a way of digging uh, Kinemod's Colbert out from behind the island right now. You can actually farm the Kremlin over the island without being spotted. Yeah, and this is the beauty of the Colbert, it's got such loopy shells. Yeah, he can just, it's like in Atlanta, right? He can sit up next to this island and still get shells downrange. And here you see the Kremlin. He's like a Kremlin is not even spotted. Yeah, Snackman's Snackman's actually dark in that position. Although he and Chapin are about to proxy spot each other at two kilometers when Snackman drifts just a little farther forward. There it is. Well, that is entirely intentional because uh, the Ohio of Angelstone is, of course, pushing up into a mid position, hoping to get a spot on Chapman. The island is currently in the way. But if the Salem ever goes backwards, uh, Angelstone will definitely be looking for that shot. Although of, uh, Angelstone currently shooting over towards Charlie. And CV with a stranglehold on A and B at the moment. I just don't... Uh, <laughs> like last game, I'm not sure how, how uh, Shaft gets back into these caps. Radar out from Zill's, wuss, uh, sorry, Zill's Minotaur from Shaft uh, gets Anle in the smoke. Yamato uh, shells falling in on Anle. But uh, nothing it's doing. It's Yamato. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little, a little chip damage, but nothing catastrophic. Uh, chat band is down to thirty-two. He's getting weighed on um, like three different sides here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Blood Legend um, paying with a little bit of hit points here to try and get some extra shells on. And the Colbert can lob it as well. Oh, yeah, no. exactly. Kinemod can lob both corners of that island at will without getting spotted. Um, they've that obviously is... got into it. They've got into a training room and they yes. tried that. I was going, just yep, about to say that. They've just about to say that they've obviously come with that. And there goes Chatban. Angelstone moves in for the kill, just like you predicted. Stats. So that locks down A. Um, I don't see a way. Henning, can you see anything that Shaft can do right now? To um, I think they should have gone more aggressively on B like ages ago, but they're kind of not doing it. Well, they're bringing flow over, but you pull by, but you know, pulling him off a of B is going to leave C open, and Vile is absolutely going to take advantage of that here. He's about to reverse back onto the cap, so at worst, you're going to trade caps, which is a net zero. Like that doesn't yeah. get you any. The big advantage Shaft still has is they have a lot of HP still over Bansiri because of Bansiri's really, really light uh, setup. Yep. The question is, can they actually use these HP for anything? That's, that makes sense. Like, they have a Demoin that's completely out of position on C2. He's not doing anything. The Kremlin on B1 is, is even worse. The funny thing is, I'm watching the health pool of Shaft going tick, tick, tick downwards because of Kinemon's Colbert. Yes, I want to say, I was going to say, when this match is over, I want a screenshot of Kinemod's um, stat screen at the end because I want to know how many shells he fired and how many hits he had. Yeah, I, I'd imagine it's <laughs> mostly. I was watching him uh, shooting Vert's Kremlin. It, it looked like it was it's mostly sh shatters. Oh, it's he's shattering um, a million of them, but I still want yeah, to know. But, <laughs> but then now and again, you'll get a fire, and uh, and that's what's doing the damage. They're bringing Alnay's Wooster back up to the southwestern corner of the cap to try and counter flow here a bit. But like we talked about, they just flip flop cap. Flip-flop caps, B going to shaft, C falling back in the hands of Bansy V. So they're really, I think, just trying to look and see if they can catch a flow when he tries to get out. Shaft are trying to make a counter push down the 9-10 line with Stalingrad and Venezia. I think Exodus will end up with nose into the cap as Camilliel tries to push a little bit further south, push that Nevsky off. I think he's actually beaching first, which loses him valuable time right now. Approaching 800 points here for Band CV. 10 minutes gone, halfway mark of the game, and it's uh, one's just kind of like game one. It's all Band CV at the moment. They just sort of choke these guys out of the out of the caps. Solid control of A, pretty solid control of B, although they've traded B and C now. 
And then Wayne can get on the Yamato. If mm. Exodus can get a radar onto Vile's gearing and Kimilil can get a good couple of shots, that would be nice. He waited recently. It's gonna be okay. a little bit of time before he gets back. In which case, Vile's probably gonna try and stay just outside radar range. I feel like I feel like that's what it's gonna take, right? Stalingrad now stepping onto C. Almost a 400 point gap that Shaft has to make up here. Um, if they can get the Venezia Salvo on Vile, that could be big, but it's gonna take more than one. He's got a good chunk of health. Zando's Yamato is being farmed down pretty quickly, as is Exodus Blaze's Stalingrad. Uh, Shaft's hit point pool dropping quite quickly. Just about back to parity, despite the fact that they started with a 100,000 point advantage. And Zill's caught out Nittler now. As well. yeah, yeah, they've got eyes on Zill, and they're just they're just all in on him right now. Snackman is also being whittled down. Um, he does get to a heal. Down to 17, 18, 14. Kamikaze's uh, HE is adding up quite Zill's quickly. Zill's in trouble here. The Angel Stone sal got a salvo in the air. Doesn't connect. But they've sunk tons of damage into Zill. Under 4k, still burning. The key thing with a Minotaur is making sure you kill it. Because if you don't, oh, it's they gonna get go Angel away, Stone. Come back. Yep, Angel Stone down with wow. uh, combination torps and shells. Um, which is that, interesting because last, last time I checked, Angel Stone was pretty healthy. Vert, well, Vert is all Vert and Zill are both crazy low over there. Knackman has three ships under 10,000 HP, all basically in the same grid square. Minnow's going out. The Colbert's going to bag the Minnow. Vert gets to a heal. Snackman, Snackman burns down. He does find damage gone. He's actually alive. Okay, <laughs> Vert is dark. Wow. Into the island and healing. Okay, 875 points uh, on the board for Ban CV. What happened to Extra's Blade? He's down to 6k on a start and on a 9 line. They've been, they've been just farming been, him pretty much. Yeah, just been farming him. It's, it's almost all the Nevsky. Yeah, Vile's also down to about 5k. I think there was a torpedo salvo going out for Exodus earlier. I think one or two of those might have connected as well. So to help things along. Band CV about to touch 900 points with 7 minutes to play. They have a solid lead, but they're getting pushed pretty hard. They need looking to get like, into A. <clears throat> looking, Exodus yeah. needs to well, stay dark behind the island and stop Sneaky Snake from finishing. Yeah, I was gonna say they need to they need to preserve Exodus's ship. Kimmy's gonna pick up C, I think, and Kamikaze's is making a push a, a run for the A cap mm. that I think he's in a good position to pick up and take. Vile's gearing is desperately trying to get a spot on Exodus Blaze because that's gonna take the points very close to a thousand. But nope, um, Exodus does manage to get in right behind the island. As torpedoes are gonna fall astern of Kimmy, he might take one. No, he's good. So many potential kills here right now. Blood Legend's low, Shaft, Sneaky Snake is quite low. But Shaft still has a health advantage and a cap advantage, despite the fact that they're run up they're up against the wall. They've got to get into A. If they lose Kami Kami Kami, the game is painting the over. That's the problem. Yeah. They, and, they, and they know it, right? Kami's about to step onto A, so right there, they've stopped all of Band CV's points gains, but they've now got four ships into position to just brutally murder kamikazes, and it's it's probably gonna happen. Yeah, Kinemod's accelerating, and um, we'll shortly be getting shells into the side of Kamikazes. Kamikazes radaring. He's turning his turrets. He's looking for this this Colbert move that he he expects this to happen. Kinemod, Kinemod is very healthy right now. Yeah. It only takes a few AP, Des Moines AP salvos to change that, though. He's is yeah. though. <laughs> Colbert's got AP against uh, the Des Moines, so my money's on, uh, on Bouncy V here in this exchange. Ex uh, Exodus Ex goes down oh, they get end. Exodus. That's huge. Because now when Kamikazes goes down right here, that is going to be game two in the books. Right there. Wow. Ben CV loses both their battleships and still hangs on to win the game. Yeah, unconventional lineup there with the uh, Colbert and the Worcester, uh, which is fantastic to see at this stage of the tournament. Um, so the next map is a hot spot. So we'll, we'll see. And that was uh, Shaft pick. So we'll see if Bouncy V uh, do something standard or whether maybe they go with something a little bit uh, unusual again. Do you, Let's go do back you get... to Prague. That Colbert was value though. Holy fuck. 
Ladies and gentlemen, here in this uh, studio, we were talking about a, the history of naval blunders. And thankfully, uh, our affiliate over here, Painzor, has found some <laughs> literature, some text on the subject. Yeah. Painzor, have you, have you any naval blunders of history to share with us? Yeah, in 2021, uh, Salem reversed out and got absolutely blapped by an Ohio. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating indeed. Naval blunders available from all good bookstores by Jeffrey Ficken. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, our, our favorite creature of land and sea asked an exceptionally good question. Um, he wanted to know exactly how many shells, whether they were shatters or penetrations, could be landed by a cold bear that somebody was insane enough to bring to Cots Internationals. The answer was 522 hits for 129,000 main battery damage hits, including 10 fires doing 42,000 damage. Wait, 129,000 in pen damage? Yes. Yeah. Damn. Was that mostly with... Wait, 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 wait. That was main battery hits. Shells fired 1,474. <laughs> Just hold down left click. It's... Ladies and gentlemen, you saw it here first. The cold bear that smashed God's internationals. Um, really interesting stuff from coming in from Band CV. Once again, uh, as soon as we get the replay here, we'll actually uh, go ahead and look through this. But um, once again, Ban CV actually taking and holding pretty consistently a spot uh, on a cap when they were at a disadvantage shipwise. So, uh, very interesting to see happened there. Again, reminder: Ban CV is now up 2-0 over Shaft, uh, looking to pick up one more win and close out this series, going home with seventeen thousand five hundred dollars USD as that first place prize. Uh, guaranteed no matter what, Shaft will pick up at least 10000 as the uh, second place runner up prize. So um, we'll see if we can, uh, we'll see if they can actually avoid a clean sweep here as we move into game three not too long from now. But um, Seraphis, we have the, uh, we have the mini map. Right? Yes. So let's go through this. Let's find out what um, maybe what Shaft needs to do to avoid getting swept. Let's... Um... Analyze the replay here. I'll just let it play out a little bit. We do need to see the Salem here and the Des Moines here. Personally, um, we were already talking about it in the studio here. Not a fan. Take it away. I, we, what am I not a fan of? <laughs> the positioning of the things at the Air 2 Island. Yes. Yeah. The, right, so you have this Colbert at the island on the one line. It is farming your ships. You need to do something about this. You need to either get into cover or push it. They just chose to get into cover. However, they didn't properly get into cover. They instead still ended up being farmed. The the arcs from the um, from the Colbert are the same. i um, got that backwards. The arcs from the Colbert are the same as the Marceau. So it has you know very floaty guns which do a lot of damage and just they, you know they're quite painful. Marceau is actually slightly worse. Yeah, it's better than Colbert. I mean, it's better than Marceau. So. You have this yeah. farming monster just farming down your entire team's HP pool. You need to push it. You need to get down that one line immediately. You have invested all of these ships to that area. It has no torpedo threat. Like, Colbert only has guns. And in a point-blank fight, it's just going to lose. You'd think push the Kremlin down the one line, right? That would be my suggestion, yeah. Well, let's see what happens. Hey, look at that. He turned around. Yeah. Perhaps he needed to push the Colbert and the Ragnar that don't have torpedoes and dig them out of there. I think he got a little spooked by the double Ragnar, uh, double Ragnar fire coming in on him. And then the Kremlin from Band CV pushes right up there into the face of that Salem. And I think we're going to watch here, as Painzer was describing, as that Salem gets squeezed. Yeah, he decides, okay, I don't want to be absolutely murdered by a Kremlin. Instead, I'm going to reverse our full broadside in front of the Ohio and die to that instead. And what you couldn't see there uh, by the replay was that the Colbert was constantly shelling him with tiny 127 millimeter shells, applying fires, applying chip damage, which did eventually force him into the back where he gets splattered by an Ohio's 18 inch guns. Uh, worth noting here that even though Shaft does actually have control of the sea cap and tends to maintain control of it for a while, they have absolutely no play on the um, central cap. They have no way of taking B, even though they have three ships committed to it. Yeah, I mean, the daring doesn't provide the same uh, safety in a smoke screen that the 
uh, gearing does. And the booster is able to capitalize on these smoke screens very, very well, especially to force out uh, if, the Yamato right here. If I may, just the ridiculous Colbert. You <laughs> just want to show this DPM. By the way, if you want to get yourself a Colbert, it is available for something like 57,000 research points. Uh, and the two times bonus is coming up this week, so make sure to get your resets in now. That's true. If you are interested in uh, picking up either the Ohio or the Colbert, which are both been featured, uh, I was about to say both have been featured pretty heavily, but that would be a lie, wouldn't it? <laughs> We've only seen one Colbert. The Ohio is 63,000 Research Bureau points, uh, in the uh, which you can find in the Research Bureau section of the Armory. The Colbert, I believe, is 57,000 and uh, is the best way to meme on your friends. Yes. Yes. It's nice to flex on people. It is. So, um, yeah, as we can kind of go through here, we can see that uh, Chaff does eventually figure out here a way to sort of start putting pressure on these caps, but it's just a little bit too late as they're nearly down 400 points by this 9 minute 45 second mark. Yes. Oh, my voice is really leaving me. You should have got lozenges. But you, you had a break. You went to the shop. You didn't get lozenges. That's your own fault. Unlucky. Good analysis, Sarah. Yeah. Can we continue with the replay? Oh, what? <laughs> I, I, oh. <laughs> that wasn't me. All right. So, Van CV would like to put this down as a 3 0 as they take the grand prize of 17,500 and win out Cots 13 Internationals. But to do it, they have to beat Shaft on the spot. A spot that apparently is hot. This has been one of those maps that has been consistently banned over and over again by teams. Somehow fell under the radar this time. It's yes. also Shaft's pick. This is Shaft's I, I was pick. about to say, I have a note. So no, not yeah, fine. <laughs> Conway just wants to be on it. Conway, come join us. And I will personally say that I'm desperately hoping that Shaft can take us to game four on this one because I want to see the next match which will be on Islands of Ice. Oh, we're getting the Hopium back out. You know, it was Get like the on the floor. Played, yeah. you know, Everybody we cinch the up the Hopium because we're, we're, we're going live. We're going live to game four. If we can just, if Shaft can just pull this one off so we can finally see Islands of Ice. Uh, but again, if Shaft does manage to do that, they will still be in the running for that $17,500 prize uh, for first place. Or they have to go home with a meager ten thousand dollar oh, prize no. for second place. Oh no! What a disaster! Can we all get F's in the chat for the for whomever has to take home ten thousand dollars worth in second place? It's F's such an chat, unfair punishment for losing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about this a little bit. One of the things that I have noticed is that uh, Shaft tends to make a heavy play to one side. Ban CV tends to check it take that side, continue to gain points off of it, and Shaft never really has any sort of uh, method or strategy for digging Ban CV out of that spot and actually starting to flip the points to take the initiative. What do they need to do, guys? Yeah, like I said, they just need to punish um, Ban CV more for taking these caps. I think Ban CV is just taking caps way too much without losing HP or ship for it. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Painzor, do you have a uh, prediction for this upcoming match? A prediction? This is going to be... Uh, I want it to be 2-1 Shaft. I want it to be 2-1 Shaft. Opium. We are on the Opium. Hopium are we all on board that we're really pulling for, for Shaft on this one? Hopium. We want a game four. I have my keg of Hopium here. <laughs> I hear that Mr. Conway has a lot riding on this. He does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Channel points and perhaps the first round as well. Well... Uh, it will be an uphill struggle as Ban CV has shown themselves to be very, very dominant. Um, so I think it is about time to throw over to Stats Bloke and Sea Raptor, our favorite creature of land and sea, to help us roll out this possibly final game. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome to game three of this series between Shaft and Ban CV in what could be the final game of the entire tournament, King of the Sea 13. Now, Shaft, as we spawn into here on Hotspot, Shaft at the North spawn, coming in with double Kremlin, Wooster, Napoli, Nevsky, Stalingrad, double gearing, and a Ragnar. At the opposite end of the map, as they go for what could be match point, Stats, what is Ban CV feeling? Yeah, Bansi V here playing for the win indeed. They've got double Ohio, double Nemsky, uh, Stalingrad, Gearing, Haru, and two Ragnars. 
Um, so we've got the Worcester switching from uh, the Van CV side. No sign for Colbert in this game. Uh, I think that was tailor made for the last match um, or the last map. So Shaft now bringing the Worcester. They're like, oh, if you can use that, maybe we can. So they're going to bring it. Um, Henning, anything um, that you want to point out with the use of a Worcester on this map or anything else with the lineups? I think the idea is again, maybe uh, Ben CV is going to put something on F9 on that little island there below D. So a Worcester can spam it really, really well. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it's a good AG spam anyways. But I think what Shark is doing here is just say, screw it, normal strats don't work. Let's, let's pull out the special strats. <laughs> you think you think they have a book of of the super secret documents that they that they don't even read themselves until they get desperate? Honestly, yes. That's what, <laughs> that's that's actually what happens. You have like usually when you make strats, some of the strats are like so questionable that you won't use yeah. them in like earlier stages because they're just too risky and can go wrong. Like high risk, high reward strats, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But and when we, you're two seen... maps down in a best of five, then go ahead. And honestly, no. on uh, NA, uh, we saw gearing with a Worcester work quite nicely. So uh, yeah. yeah, several of the teams uh, were doing that. So yeah. you, you know, you see teams do that during clan battles as well, right? Especially because obviously we're not playing for cash in clan battles. So you know, they'll try some high risk, high reward things, especially early in a season, just to see like maybe this works, maybe it doesn't. It's one of the things that makes some of the earlier stages of the King of the Sea more interesting to watch. But as you get deeper in the tournament, you tend to find less of that. And so to see it kind of here at the what could be the end um, is, is, as you say, a little surprising. So the initial deployments um, fairly mirrored, actually. You've got the um, the gearing with a cruiser over on the 910 line for each team. You've got a Kremlin and an Ohio with the battleships, the two Ragnars in the cap, uh, the sea cap. You've got a cruiser and a, and a destroyer in the middle. And then uh, the only real difference is the Napoli of Shaft going over with the Kremlin and the Stalingrad. Um, because there's the two destroyers south of the B camp for Bansivi. Both teams coming in with the smoke Nevsky pair here on side on either end of the C camp, so I don't think there's any surprises it's, happening. It's almost like these two teams have trained together a lot. I know, or or played each other a time or two, right? Who knew, <laughs> so, right? So we we were talking earlier amongst ourselves about how um, actually Shaft and Bansivi had done a lot of training battles against each other. And mm. so they will be super familiar with each other's players, each other's strategies. Um, and so this is like, you know, d two teams who know each other well, who um, know each other's counters, they know the individual players. Um, and so it's not surprising that they're kind of mirroring each other right now. Look at Sneaky here on the bottom end of the C cap. He doesn't even have to use his Hydro to know where the torpedoes are. He turned out ahead of them and just sat there and waited for them to go by. It's like, aha, we've seen this before. Exactly, like, I know your tricks, sir. Now, they do get a radar. Kamikaze's Nevsky does pick up Blood Legend at the bottom end of B, and they're going to chunk him down for, well, he's not getting down towards about half HP as he pops his first heal. And there, so the, the slight asymmetry is going to be the Napoli Kremlin Stalingrad. So the Stalingrad of Kimmelil for Shaft is going to nose in towards the center, while the Kremlin and the Napoli push. I'm expecting the Napoli to go over towards the one line. Uh, but might turn in early when they realize there's nothing there. Uh, which is going to put um, Anlay's Stalingrad under a little bit of pressure. I'm expecting Anlay to go on the south side of the island, nose into his Charlie to mirror Camellia. Flo taking a big hit there as his gearing his radar on the top end of the cap. He's also down to about half health, but trouble is he doesn't get any of his back. He doesn't have the fancy heal button that the Ragnar does. The C cap, sorry, the D cap is contested. Possum versus Striva in the Ragnars. The 910 line is pretty even, although Snackman is getting a little bit of hassle from the Worcester, although just going outside of range and going unspotted, I think. I'm still not quite sure what the Worcester is about, honestly. I the guess, is, like, and we were. So I think the key, the key question, though, which I was asking around about, like, why were the NA teams doing it, is. Why would you take a Worcester when you can take a Nevsky? Because Worcester's radar is nine kilometers, which is three kilometers shorter than Nevsky's. And vision is everything with the strategy. So I, I just don't understand 
the advantage I mean, it's, of swapping. It's not only well, about and... that, it's also about the ability to actually hit target, targets at range. Mm. Like, yeah. Rooster struggles well, to hit, like, cruisers or destroyers uh, outside of, like, 10, maybe 12 kilometers? What what we saw on NA was when Nevsky was banned, teams that had these kinds of plans or strategies would usually just sub in a Des Moines. And you get more or less the same toolbox with, um, with uh, you know, comparable, comparable uh, utility. You're missing out on the defensive fire, I think, but you don't need it in this format, so you're not really giving up anything. Now, speaking of, speaking of Nevsky, Kinemod took a big hit there, I think from the Stalin. I think Maybe? it was the Kremlin, No, actually. that's 30 kilometers. That's a long way. I think it, well, I think you're right. I think it was. Yeah, it's Vert. There's another salvo coming in on Kinemod right now from Vert. Yeah, Shaft just being a little bit more aggressive, um, pushing Vert into the decamp. Snackman is reacting, pushing up to counter that by also I, nosing I, in towards the cap. I like seeing this out of Shaft because I feel like if they're gonna if they're gonna win a game in this series and, and force us to a game four, it's not gonna happen if they sit back and just play passively. Nope, they're gonna have to a... force a play, make something happen. Yeah, you, you can't let a team like Van CV take control. Um, you absolutely need to be dominant. Um, we do indeed see the Napoli of Shaft pushing down the one line, starting to try to envelop that home cap. But there are four ships there. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd be super excited about this if I were Chapin. I mean, you are outside Stalingrad's radar range back here, but um, yikes, it's it's going to be a little dicey once he starts opening fire and they turn their guns, which he does. So Interestingly, Vert didn't actually push into the cap. Snackman has in the Ohio for Grand CV. And they are actually going to use, rather than use the destroyer to pin the cap, they're actually going to use the Ohio to pin the cap. So I they think can that's... take Shriva out and go around to double up on the Exodus Blazer's gearing, I think. Um, we're seeing some action over on the 3-4 line. Uh, Zando is coming under a lot of focus fire in the Kremlin for Shaft. As Angelstone pushes up nose to nose. Indeed, Zando having to kind of back out of there. Eight minutes gone. Both teams were taking up a cap. Decontested. C wide open. Only 12 points apart from these teams. Actually, eight points, I should say. Separate these two teams. I'm wondering whether Flo will uh, try for C again, maybe from the other corner. I mean, it's not a bad call. You have to give... It would be giving Anle something else to think about. Even if he were to come in on the northwest corner, Anle could radar him, but no one would have shots. No, and they can see the shells coming out from Blood Legend. Even though they don't, they don't have a direct spot on Blood Legend's Ragnar on the corner of D, uh, they can obviously still see that it's there because of the shells coming from the corner. It looks a bit like Angerson is losing the trade on the three line, yeah. though. Not by a well, lot, but still a little bit. Oh, Vert is also moving. Vert is also moving up as Stalingrad shells th thwack into his broadside. He's, I think, he's going to try and snuggle up to this island and at least keep his starboard side sheltered from the Stalin. I'm kind of wondering though why Shaft put the Kremlin in and then took it out again. Yeah. Before finally, eventually pushing it in. Um, yeah, they played. They played a little hokey bait. pokey with him. Yeah, maybe trying to push. Uh, maybe trying to bait the torpedoes a little bit. Oh, well, now they've got going it. now. He is. He's the torpedo salvo meant for him. Of course, finds nothing. The the gearing torpedo salvo for Vert finds nothing. So what is the play here with Snackman? They know he's coming. He's well he has spotted. his side. He uh, shot. Uh, Vert can't reverse in time here. The bow turrets might find sits here. Yeah. Yeah. You think you can just think underneath you can... the turrets? It is visible reversing. I was going to ask. Nice. I was going to ask him. Can you can you get him in under the turrets? Yeah. But I don't. I thought he could black out in time. No, but he does. And but now, actually, uh, Vert is not uh, able to get a ram out here anymore. So he's just going to die yeah. to the farm. And Angelstone on the other side went down to the farm. Yeah, they do bag Angelstone on their side of the map. That's a big kill that opens things up a bit for Shaft over here on the 3-4 line. Yeah, you can see that push starting already. Uh, Shaft are moving the Kremlin and the Stalingrad both forwards. Uh, the Napoli is also pushed right down alongside that home cap. If, if, I'm, if I'm Vert, I think... Uh, I think, yeah, Snackman's gonna not gonna let him do it now. I was kind of like, I think you have to go for the ram and just take it while you can get it. 
He's just here to delay now. He's, he knows he's gonna die, he can't get the ram off, so he's just gonna occupy them for as long as possible. And just buy time. Vert's actually lasted a lot longer than I thought. Um, but the ability to heal is gonna <laughs> is gonna run out. Gearing is also pushing towards towards him because Vert can't go anywhere. It's supposed to be a big target. Yeah. Yeah, Vert's pinned in this position. He either has to move up and take the ram or just accept his fate, it, which seems to be the play. It's just a question of whether the Nevsky shells will get him or the torps. It's going to be the shells. Okay, that means the points will start ticking on D for uh, Ban CV with Snackman in the cap. It can kill, go for a kill on online, you know. He's pretty stuck. Yeah, yeah, he you can't can really see, reverse. You can see Shaft starting to encircle, Napoli pushing in towards the cap. Napoli's going to have to be careful here. You've got a Harrow laying a smokescreen for the Nevsky. Nevsky can radar the Napoli. There it goes. Shots out from behind the smoke, being laid by the Harugamo. Broadside Napoli, AP incoming from the Nevsky. Mm -hmm. No, not at that angle. The Napoli's maneuvering a buff and, and their armor's thick enough. The Nevsky AP would have had to come in faster than that, and it didn't. They are going to pick off Onlay here, though. That's going to give them that ship lead again and should allow them to get something into this B cap. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna get B. Um, they can use Kimmy's radar, potentially, to try to get more damage onto Vile. Or maybe get a good shot into Sneaky Snake's Nevsky. Yes, I'm, I'm like you, actually I'm a, needs to be careful here. He needs to turn out eventually. I'm a, I'm a little surprised they've never sent Flo back to C. We talked about that before, and now it's it's probably impossible because Flo's got. Do you want us up here? What do you want us to do? I know what you want me to do. Okay. Good. Okay. I just. Okay. Okay. Sea Raptor? Sea Raptor's not here either, though. Are you staying here? I'm for the yes. moment. I'm, I'm trying, trying to figure out what it is he wants. He's like change, and then it's not change, and now he's saying he can hear us, and I'm kind of like, well, which one is it? 
for the um, moment. Can't... Yeah, let's continue. Okay, okay. it's back. There we go. All right. Ban okay, we're back now. All right, so Ban CV picks up a big kill there. But Shaft um, sitting on more caps. They will move out to a small lead. That starts to grow here. Four minutes to play. But man, is it tight? Like either team loses a ship now, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be dicey. I'm pretty sure sand. Shaf is gonna lose their booster here. He he, is, he ran out of map and he's getting farmed by a Nevsky outside his lane. So he literally can't do anything about him. Yeah, I suspect that's these ships that are trapped up against the map edge are probably gonna go down at some point. The Kremlin, however, that's Zando. He's gonna be into the middle of the board momentarily, backed up by the Stalingrad. That's a lot of HP for them to deal with. Uh, Zano needs be to, able be... to keep files. Go ahead. Zano needs to be careful. He can get farmed down easily if uh, enough sh ships turn on him. I don't know it's going to be that easy. They're, they're, the ships that can farm him down are 25 kilometers away. The only one that's close is is the is the, is the uh, the Ragnar, and he's about to be behind cover. I'm surprised he pulled up short and isn't going on into the cap. Uh, he doesn't want to get laid up in Stalin. No, 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 I mean, low. I'm surprised, I'm surprised Zando pulled up short and isn't going into the cap. Yeah, they're going to push Kimi in there instead. Yep. Um, because, so Kimi, it can Kimi, yeah, Kimi will be spotted over the island probably by Blood Legend. Um, maybe they're not going to go in at all. They do have the points of vantage, although only just... And Three minutes to play. Minutes, yeah, two, two and a half minutes just about to come up on the clock. 40 Zill point gonna lead. Go down. There it goes. <laughs> that swings it for Ban CV. Now they have to go in. Yeah, well, they were going in anyway. I just couldn't figure out why they why they were delaying. I, I guess they wanted stop. the Stalingrad to take the lead. Now Stalin's going to radar, and at a minimum, they're going to they're going to use it to push Blood Legend back behind the island and try and deny as many shots as they can. His blood takes a pretty good hit there. Seven hundred points just reached by Ban CV ticking that one cap. Shaft it's ticking be two so caps. So tight. It's going to be very tight. Keep an eye on that clock. Two minutes about to be reached. Forty points. If they can pick up this cap, that'll accelerate the point at which they can they can start narrowing the gap a little faster. I think they're going to shove the Stalin and the Kremlin behind yeah. the island and just camp them there. Just leave them there for a bit. Yeah, they're going to run away as soon as they get the cap. They can't afford to lose another ship. With the, no, they with can't. But with only 90 seconds on the clock, I'm not convinced these guys can farm one of these ships down in time. I mean, maybe they can. The Harugamo's going... Harugamo just immediately gets fires lit on both of them. <laughs> 24 points. The gap is closing. One minute 20 left on the clock. 80 seconds only. One, one of the things about Hotspot is that the, because there's four cap points on the board, they tick a little slower than teams are used to, but the ticks, individual ticks themselves are for a few more points, right? They're worth four points instead of three. Yep. 20 um, points now, 60 seconds. They're going to be able to pull ahead, but they got to survive. They've got to preserve all these ships. So the question is, will they be able to keep Kimi unspotted in order to get that sea cap capped? For the moment, Kimmy is dark. Yes. 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 Okay, so that's three caps ticking now for Shaft. There it is. There's oh, the time. Seconds. 40 seconds left. Next and time. Algumo does oh, the, the Napoli! Oh, the Napoli son. catches him. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's this. That's going to seal this deal with yep. 30 seconds to that, play. That was a pure race then. That was a pure race between the fast Napoli and the slow Harry. Yep. With thirty sec, with twenty seconds on the timer, Shaft has successfully done it. They're going to force a game four and stay in this series. They might yet kill Blood Legend. Yeah, well, Chapman's trying him. to. Yeah, trying to push. Actually, blinding the Chapman's kind of blinded himself. <laughs> yeah, he has. Like he's, he, he, he can see now. Well, nice shot. shot. And no, not getting there. But Shaft does win the game. Of sprawling battle on hotspot shaft stand alive with their first win of the series apologies for the audio issues in the middle of that game we got disconnected somehow but um we've hopefully okay. sorted it out <laughs> hopefully that will continue into the next game uh okay. so excitingly we do get a uh, fourth game so it's going to be uh, bouncy v2 shaft one going into game number four uh which is going and to be on islands of ice for the first time yes Islands of Ice. 
Right, uh, let's pass it back over to Prague and while we prepare for Islands of Ice. I can't decide on a stay in a live joke or a shaft of the movie joke. So let's just take it to uh, another edition of Painzor Reads, the world's greatest naval blunders. Yeah. Once again, in 2021, uh, Discord decided that it was going to <laughs> kick off the guy who was capturing the audio from our casters in the middle of that game. Uh, in, this, in this story that we're affectionately calling Panic at the Discord. <laughs> so uh, thank you all very much for staying with us through a minor technical difficulty that really couldn't have come at a more perfect time as we just watched the EU second place uh, finalists Shaft stick it to ban CV, forcing a game four by expressing a very dominant showing over Hot Spot. My favorite part was just before the when you said it, the doom, <laughs> silence. It was a uh, it was an emphatic beep from Discord. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> but this means, gentlemen, that we're getting a game four. This means that uh, Shaft refuses to be swept, and it and also not means only that we get four. commentary from Mr. Conway. Hello, Conway. Oh was not amused to hear that sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, all I really have to say. Right? That was really, that was not the sound. Uh, that was, th th these are not the sounds that you're looking for. <laughs> that was the sound of Mr. Conway getting yelled at over Discord by a variety of different people, even though it was not his fault. So, um, hashtag blame Conway, everybody. Or is it so hashtag don't blame Conway? No, we're going to hashtag, hashtag blame Conway. Conway. It's Don yeah, yeah. Brown at this point. Always. It is. At this point, um, guys, the most important thing here, of course, is that we had a game. We had a game, and that game went very well for Chef. We also have a replay. Let's take a look. <clears throat> and uh, Seraph, since you seem to be the man with the laptop, it is on yes. you. Go for it. And we're just going to let it play out as usual. Let it play out for a bit, and then we're going to look at initial deployments. So, what can we see here? We can see a lot of ships at the air cap for shafts. They were preparing to do their eventual one two line push. We also see, you know, standard deployment, a couple of destroy like this is the general clan battles deployment. You put a destroyer in the cap behind those each of those two islands, it's very hot to love over, you know, it's a very protected little cap. We see heavy DD play towards the middle of the map at the sea cap. And you know, they just vibe for position position until the bigger boats get into their positions over at the one two line. Yeah. Critical here to notice is the Napoli from Shaft going down the uh, one line here because he will be a giant pain in the side of Ban CV as this match plays out here. Yeah, the Napoli yeah we already see him on the F line here. <clears throat> no, 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 just the Napoli is diving very deep. <laughs> <Okay. you know? laughs> he does have the smoke to disengage should he so choose to. And the problem is he needs to make sure and not overextend, which he managed to not do. You know, there's three ships down there. He wants to be getting some cheeky little shots into the rear of, I believe it was a Stalingrad, uh, south of the sea cap. I can't read ship names from here. I'm really blind. Have I mentioned this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just wants to get a bit of damage in and just generally harass. Uh, moving on a little tiny bit here, we're going to notice right over here in this area, we're going to see the Kremlin from uh, Shaft push up aggressively into the cap. Now, we couldn't quite figure out why he was doing this other than because he thought maybe he needed to get cover from this gaggle of HE spammers over here. However, the Ohio decides to push up as torpedoes are coming in from this way. The Ohio decides to push up and it puts the uh, Shaft Kremlin in a very bad spot, which we assumed would result in his death, but... As you'll see here, he hangs on for a little while until the Ohio does, in fact, get farmed down over time by all of these HE spammers. But it's very close at this point. Yeah, what we see here is Shaft have managed to get the home cap push successfully done. They've pushed down the three and four line to meet up with the Napoli that they pushed down the one and two line, and they've taken both A and B. Now, the problem is for Van CV at this point, they have been ticking for a very long time on their one held cap C, uh, D, and they also were capping for a very long time on their home cap B. But now, late in the game, down two caps to one, points taking, they are forced so far back from any way of possibly contesting either A, B, or C. When, when you have a map, folks, that looks like this, if you're banned CV, if you're over here, you have one option. You have to get kills. You cannot ever hope to take the two far caps and against a Stalingrad Kremlin in the center, backed by Nevsky up here and Napoli downhill, you will never get either of these two. Look at this mess I'm making. Uh, <laughs> you, you will never Art. ever. 
it's get awful. either of these two very low ships into this cap, you're just asking to die, which means it's always going to be two, maybe three caps to one. So the only way they can do this is with kills. That's just how it works looking at this map from this position. And, well, one could there almost... Aren't there aren't exactly any kills to be picked up except for this Wooster here. Yeah. So we'll watch. We'll watch as the Kremlin and the Stalingrad begin to move into the center cap, which one could actually argue this was a mistake as it almost was a win more situation. Uh, the Kremlin does, in fact, start getting farmed down, but he does not die. He refuses. And now, finally, Shaft has the point lead and they are gaining and holding it. Uh, at this point, it's basically a no contest. And the game and there we go. Runs and out. the game ends on um, game ends as time runs out. Um, so, yeah. Well, we we did it. We did it, folks. The dreams of life. We yeah. made the islands of ice. Yep. The cold. Yeah, world. we're gonna see islands of ice for the first time in internationals. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So now we will find out why people have been banning this map so consistently throughout not only internationals but also a number of the regional teams as well. Uh, and if, well, our prayers are answered, we might even get Game 5 on trap. But for now, we focus on Islands of Ice. Um, Pains or Sarah, please give us a little idea of why it is that people might have been consistently banning this map. This map is a very new addition to the to the King of the Sea pool. We haven't had this iteration of this map in competitive, uh, not in this mode anyway. We haven't had this is a competitive played map. We've had a clan battle variation, which has a different cut layout. We've had a ranked variation, which has the same one as ranked. But this, A to B, A to C, this way, it's not really something that teams have had a lot of time to practice. I mean, they've had the entire tournament duration of practice on it, but it's not something that's been tried and true, and people might not feel comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's, I have nothing to add there. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, like a lot of the caps are very open, but at the same time, there's a little bit of cover, but the cover isn't fantastic because if you get forced a tiny little bit back or a tiny little bit forward, there's a lot of room for cross shot and for battleship. Mm -hmm. And I think there's also, it's worth pointing out that um, there's, I think it's the other, the other map is either fault line or loop where it has three horizontal and each one of those horizontal also has um, three horizontal caps. Each one has an island in the center. Yeah, that's no, loop. It's loop. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. This cap is similar. Excuse me. This map is similar in that there are lots of islands actually in the caps that all allow usually DDs or sometimes cruisers to park behind those islands and be, essentially be safe, which makes for a lot of stalemate. Um, so we may in fact see that uh, there's a lot of what we call uh, fence shouting where two destroyers or two cruisers park on either side and sort of yelling over the fence like, hey, hey. It's like hey. two angry dogs. <laughs> exactly. Like two angry dogs. Uh, which results in someone either having to make a YOLO play or it's just a farming contest of who can farm down the exposed ships faster. So uh, without yeah. ships like Marceau's, without fast, sturdy DDs with high alpha potential on the torpedoes, we might not see necessarily uh, any quick plays. So, um, gentlemen, two to one. In favor of Band CV, our map is dropping here. I really want to see. Are your cups full of hopium? Do you have enough? Yeah. Let's get back on that hopium. I want to see a game five. Yeah. I really want to see a game five. Unfortunately, though, I think on a, actually on a map like Islands of Ice, where both teams feel a little bit of uncomfortable, I think this is the perfect type of map for Shaft to take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is legitimately the best chance that Shaft has here to uh, to hoodwink ban CV and come away with it. Let's go to Sea Raptor and stats bloke and see how game four progresses. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game four of this international finals match between Band CV and Shaft as we spawn into Islands of Ice for the first time here on the main stream. To the north, Ban CV spawning in with Ohio, Kremlin, Des Moines, Goliath, Napoli, Stalingrad, Harugamo, and Double Ragnar. What is Shaft bringing to the dance, Stats? Shaft on the south end, they have double Ohio, double Des Moines, and Napoli, a daring Ashima, and two Ragnar, so a four destroyer lineup for Shaft. Um, Henning, we haven't seen this map very much, and this weekend we haven't seen it at all. Um, what is different about this map, um, and what are the teams going to need to think about? Yeah, Islands of Ice is a pretty curious map. It's not really popular among top clans. And the main reason is that 
Some of these islands have the reputation of being really unbalanced. One example is gonna be the Four Line Island, for example, where the south side is re like this. On the south side, the island is really flat, so it's it's locked easily, while the north side is not. So there's also, usually, there's also a lot more sort of open water channels for torpedoes and things like that going north south, um, and there's always very interesting. Uh, Destroyer versus Destroyer contesting going on in B as well. And with yeah. Ragnar now, that's going to get even more interesting because of all the radars. So speaking of Ragnars, and, Ragnars around the middle. Yeah, as I, speaking of Ragnars and radars, both teams have sort of enveloped the B cap with a variety of Ragnars. All four of them basically in this central core in the middle of the map. Blood Legend, Flo, and Zill now getting into a bit of a gunfight. Survivors Ragnar chiming in. Radars going up all around there. The difference is that Blood Legend has some hard cover if he accelerates a bit. Shaft's destroyers don't really have as much. But nobody really has shots in there just because of the position of the teams. Yeah, Strieber taking a bit in return. Um, not, getting too much on, not getting too much on Zill. Um, so actually, the destroyer in the open has, has come off better here. Uh, yeah. Shriva's actually well, backed surprising. up into Stress Possums right now. Yeah, and I was saying, and Shriver's down already to half. Blood Legend actually came out better than better than he did. We're seeing uh, the Ohio, Des Moines, Goliath, Haru group of Band CV reach the top of the sea cap. Uh, they are going to be countered by Ohio, Napoli, and Des Moines on the south side for Shaft. I'm a little surprised. Now, this is something you guys would have seen this map played by some of these teams eventually on EU. On NA, we, we sometimes see teams that don't go crazy heavy to this side because of how hard it is to kind of move ships from C back into the middle of the board, assuming you ever win the flank. Yeah, yeah it's, they... it's something you usually see quite often, that A and C both are kind of a stalemate situation. But um, like, if it comes to playmaking, I think C is usually the better side because the 10 line uh, is way more isolated to make a play for than, for example, the A line, uh, uh, one line on A. Yeah, typically A, we just see lockdown with a cruiser on each island and then uh, either a destroyer or a cruiser just doing the spotting on the one line, trying to torpedo Snack. the cruiser that's sitting on the corner. Snackman pushing up to this island, the, the four line island that Henning was talking about earlier. Getting a good salvo into Flo's daring before he kind of ducked behind some cover. A little pinned in by torpedoes, but he should be able to avoid all of those with ease. As uh, Band CV picks up both B and C, starts taking up points. So Shaft are going to have to react to this. Um, I, I'm kind of expecting them to transition something over towards A to try and break that stalemate. But it's going to be very difficult for them to dig and lay out from behind that island. We can see the Ohio of Zando moving over slowly. Um, Possum is positioned to transition from B to A if necessary. Or they might try to go back in with the three destroyers and put more pressure on Striva. Yeah. Speaking of hard things to dig out, Kytus is Des Moines over here on the nine or the yeah, right on the edge of the nine ten line on this edge of the map. He's gonna be equally difficult to dig out when the time comes. Um, he's got a lot of friends backing him up as well. Yeah, they're trying to smoke yeah. the Demoyan, but he is under heavy pressure. He's just uh, being hybrid right now, I think. He's, yeah, I, he's still spotted in there somehow, I think. Maybe because he fired? Are we looking at the Kytus is hybrid, for sure. No, no, Kytus oh, okay. is radaring right now. Ah, is that... Ah, okay. Yeah, That's Kytus how they is radaring. These torps are really those, nasty. Yeah, those oh, daring... Okay, he's actually going to avoid them. Yeah. But wow, that could have been nasty. Okay, Chatman reaches the island. Kimi will be uh, just behind, but... Not as healthy. No, not healthy at all. Okay, but once once uh, Kimi gets to the island, that should be a reasonably safe now, position with the Ohio. And there's a gap there, though. And there's Goliath AP coming. Mm -hmm. Not uh, doing anything. He got it through the gap, but he didn't get nearly the hit he wanted. Like, right now, look at Kimi. Kimi's, like, why would you not push Kaidus up and just a single AP salvo wipes him out? And there's an Ohio there. Well, that's, that's true, but he, the, my point is the Ohio wasn't there a minute ago. Now, they don't need it now. The Kremlin has sealed that deal. Shaft goes down a ship. But Kytus could have also moved up and had this iceberg on his port side where the Ohio wouldn't have had a shot. 
Angelstone pushes down uh, to make sure that Chatban leaves the cap, getting a good 10k volley there into the side of the Napoli. And um, this is going to force Shaft to completely kite away from Charlie. So they're going to have to make something work, and I think they've chosen B. We've got Zando in the Ohio for Shaft pushing up around the backside of Snackman's Kremlin. And Leia's actually going down really fast here. B seems 18, to be the logical 18. choice, but like you said, they're they're doing a great job farming down on Lai, so I think eventually they're going to be able to pick up A, and they'll be able to rotate some of those ships back into the middle. Is that going to be a Shima Torp? Oh, no. no. I'm just going He's clear. the back end. No. All good. Yeah, Online's going to go out here. He's burning, handing out in seconds, and there he goes. So Shaft gets back a kill as B is now contested. 170-point lead for Ban CV and slowly growing on the strength of that C cap. So Shaft needs to make sure they consolidate this A cap. They're go definitely going to cap it. Um, there is nothing right now that threatens A, but obviously the uh, the Ragnars uh, for Ban CV could come over. Um, I'm wondering whether the Kremlin, Snackman's Kremlin, will swap with the Ragnar or something. Mm. No, okay, Zando's going to go around. Zando's going to go around Zan in the Ohio. Zando's, Zando's pushing. Snackman's got his stern turret back there. He had started to move up, but kind of pulled the brake again. Zando blows his front turrets. Yeah, Zando, Zando shooting the uh, snowbank on the corner there. Yeah. Snackman, unfortunately, Snackman doesn't miss. Puts his into the bow. If you're Snackman, do you take a ram here? <laughs> the problem is it's gonna, this is going to be a very slow ram, so it's just going to die without killing and, the well, Ohio. And that's and that's the trick, right? Is that that rams in this position don't necessarily work all that well. The, the, the mechanics of them get very difficult to predict what'll happen. Yeah, and a slow speed ram, typically one of the ships will go down and the other one takes very little damage. Uh, but, like, wh which way it goes is kind of unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Snackman's Snackman's got gonna his... go for this. He is, he's, no. no, he's not. He's turning his engines on, he's getting back forward again. He he pushed far enough, just long, to, long enough to push Zando back, and now he's moving forward again. Sando does get a, a little shot into the uh, flat part of the back end of the Kremlin there. Yep, full pins in the stern. Stress Possum pushing up to the cap to make sure they get the cap. Yep, there we go. Snackman will go down to just general focus fire. Indeed. Going out here in seconds. Gets a heal off, but it just delays the inevitable as there it goes. Okay, so taking a step back here and looking at the whole map, we've got two caps in Shaft's possession. Um, map control, Henning, who would you say has got better map control right now? I would say Shaft. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. However, uh, Ben CV still has really healthy ships uh, over at uh, the nine mm. line that can come back into the middle and contest that for sure. I'm, I'm just looking yeah. at Zando's Ohio getting peppered here, down to 14k. The question yeah. is, is he going to die? If he doesn't die, this is big. If he does die, then Shaft is in trouble. Shaft on a ship dumped, lead dumped. now, on a cap lead. They are growing, the, sorry, closing the gap now. Down to about 80 points here as we Ooh. approach the halfway mark of the game. They oh. actually get the Ohio oh. with oh. Gets the so. blind. I'm not sure if they were fired when he was spotted, but it gets a cross shot. Wow, well shot. done. That's a big kill for Ban CV to finally secure that battleship and get it off the board. Ban CV actually has a big points lead that uh, Shaft actually needs to regain first. Yeah, Shaft could use a kill here and and I look at Bert. Like the... Bert and this Ohio is also almost dead already. Well, he's been getting farmed pretty mercilessly by the Des Moines and the Goliath. I'm I'm sure. Yeah, Vert is uh, not able to go on Spotted here. The uh, Harrow is just simply too close. They are sending the Wagner over to, to, to be intercept him. Uh, they got a fairly healthy to... Ragnar. There's the radar from Sh from Zill going up. They don't find Vile. They, they don't realize quite how far to the east he really is. So Vert Radar's still has... ticking. Vert's run DCP. If a fire gets set, that's probably going to be the end for Vert. 
No fire so far. The other thing you have to you have there to believe go. is that Shaft Shaft knows how low those two Ragnars are. If they can secure one of those kills, that's big points. I like the play at bay, are... by the way. Snake turned around and is going for probably a rush on the uh, on the Moine. He should be, yeah, and they're gonna. Well, Shaft. I mean, Avert gets to another heal. Still hanging around, not dead yet. Yeah, see, that's the that's the thing about the Ohio. Can nah. do that. There we yeah, go. No. The Goliath <laughs> shells seal the deal. No, no, no. Okay, let's uh, let's pay attention to Sneaky Snake's uh, rush here on the Des Moines. Hopefully, we can do that for you with the camera. Um, Kamikaze's backing up in anticipation of this rush. A Shimakaze coming up to counter Sneaky Snake's push. Ain't oh, I see. They're they're pushing him back yep. as Angel comes in with shots that all miss. They can't see Kin uh, Kim Kamikaze's just yet. But it's going to end badly for Snake. You think so? The Shimmer is a problem. So, true. With Here come with the no torpedoes right down right down the port side of Kami. Yep. No friendly fire. There's no risk to Kamikaze's. He's turning he's right in. He's, gonna take, he's only going to take yep. one. I think he's just going to go for the ram. He is. Yeah, I was supposed to be a he torpedo drive-by and it's had to no, turn No, he into can't get the ram. ram. He can't even get the ram. The secondaries prevent it. Yeah, I'm sorry, the set, island right? prevents it. Oh no. Oh is he gonna my be god. Oh, Angel <laughs> does get the shot in. I mean, that, that was kind of inevitable. But... He's going to take two of these. That's, he survives. Oh, he, manages, he manages to survive it somehow. He took them both on the bow. The situation he took them, them both on the bow. He's flooding and healing. No, just flooding. Sorry, I thought he was healing. He must have, he must have ticked out. Okay, Sneaky Snake should be able to survive that, hopefully. Uh, I'm not convinced that oh, flood might do well. him in. I didn't, I didn't see the fire uh, as well yet. Okay. Mm. Yeah, he's burning and flooding. I think he's going to go out here. So it's he a question. He does, get, he, does get a, he does get a brief look at Exodus, get some SAP secondaries on him, but Sneaky is going out. He, he found damage gun. No! He found a way to live on 300 <laughs> HP and then Exodus come the main gonna... battery guns. <laughs> and now look Sorry, at the Exodus. Black mass. Exodus is now spotted in front of two Ragnars, but the uh, the lower health one is killable by the Shima. Um, but I suspect Exodus will want to go unspotted. I mean, it's, a piece. it's not favoring Shaft here. Yeah. Only, only 20 points between these two teams, and Shaft is closing that gap with six minutes to play. They're going to lose A, though. They are. They're going to lose A because they can no longer defend it. Blood Let's Legend's going to in right the middle in of there. the map, down to 100 HP, dying as well. Yep. Stressed is out. Bansy V picks up another big kill. They're standing on A. They're going to be able to bag that as well. All they've got left on the board is a daring, a beat up Shimakaze, a Ragnar. I don't think the Shima can run. Yeah, he spotted I don't think he can. He's run up against the map edge, and between the radar and everything, I think they're going to get him. Yep, there he goes. That's 800 points for Bansy V with that kill. That edit needs to dodge these tops, so. though. Legend can't afford to take one of these. One is all it'll take to put him into the bottom. I think he's got a gap. He does. He's found it. He's good to go. Yeah, two ships this... up a cap. Go In ahead. order to win this game, Z needs to actually just kill both Ragnars, and I'm, I don't think he can do it. He I, actually... I, yeah, I don't see it. Like, that engine has more HP than him to begin with, he, and he needs to get two of them. If I miss the play... But Napoli is there in the background. The Napoli has a problem. I'm not convinced this Napoli is going to be alive to support. Chatman's played no. a great game, but I think he's about to take one of these right in the stern, and he is. Yep. And of course, uh, Kytus and uh, Vile are not going to leave him alone. The two nope. Ragnars are joining in as well. But Kytus yep. doesn't have to be anything. Napoli's going to go down here in seconds. Just a couple of more shells is all it'll take. A fire now burning. And there he goes. And just like that, 930 points. I Bansy think we have our champions. Yep, I think Bansy V's got this one in the bag, kids. Zill's yep, going to go out here as well. And when he does, that's the game. There it is. Bansy V. A couple more ticks. Oh, they got oh. He gets <laughs> <a> Striper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I had, <laughs> okay. I had just about started my end of game spiel, but yep. nope. <laughs> nope. So now uh, Flo just needs to go around and kill everything for no a problem. Uh, shop win. <laughs> Her Majesty's Royal Navy has got this, ladies and gentlemen. He is smoking up. He is not giving up. Yet. To, um, no. not giving up. He's not giving up. Good for him. But Talks out towards Angelstone. None of those. Angel's not going to take a single torp. That feels bad. Yeah, Angelstone, I'm sure, is uh, waiting for that blind shot. Just going to target the muzzle flash. Here it comes. Here, here it is. Misses. Spotted. Now he's lit. Front turrets. 996. Couple more ticks here. And there Flo it is. Flo survives. Flo survives. But Ban CV is your King of the Sea 13 international grand champion. Going home with that big cash prize, $17,500. And it's not like Shaft is going home empty-handed either. They get a nice a nice cash prize as well for their second place showing. Congratulations to both teams. Well, I was really hoping the EU would win this match, and they did. So, uh, yeah. Who knew, right? Congratulations <laughs> to EU. Um, fantastic game from, from both teams. Fantastic game from all the teams. So um, we'll, we'll come back on camera in a second and talk to you guys. But uh, just a big thank you to all the teams uh, who took part. We really enjoyed that. And uh, thank you to Henning for the support. Um, Definitely. And uh, we'll pass it back to Prague, and we'll see you in a second. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your king of the oceans, Ban CV TWA from the EU server. Congratulations, gentlemen. A hard-fought and well-earned victory. Congratulations also to Shaft, uh, making that a very, very close game and uh, giving us game four on our favorite islands of vice. Ban CV, of course, going home with seventeen and a half thousand dollars as C-Raptor just said, while Shaft, no slouches themselves, going home with ten thousand dollars congratulations to everyone who played thank you it's been an absolutely wonderful experience let's please get our casters back in we want to chat with them sea raptor uh almost said lord zaft because i'm so used to that sea <laughs> raptor stats bloke and henning or quagsire of the pond um do we have them why wouldn't you oh lord have mercy because i had to do something. Oh. That. Come there on, you go. Howdy. Howdy. So, guys, we the dream, the dream was true. We made it to game four. We got Islands of Ice. And that match was back and forth so many times. Stats, you're already laughing. How was that? How number one, how was it to cast the entire tournament? But really, that match where so much was riding on it. Yeah, that that map is always very dynamic. And as we said at the beginning of that that match um henning mentioned like teams don't like it because it's, it's very dynamic it's quite unpredictable the team can do things that are surprising quite quickly because they can change positions they can rotate the destroyers that b cap is always a um a, a bomb waiting to go off because you've got it's always surrounded by destroyers with the ragnars now you've got lots of radars um, before maybe we might have seen smarlands or something like that or the french uh, wolf pack destroyers um, so it's always really really um dynamic in the middle of that map um, and and this match was no exception. Uh, and once more, you know, Shaft just not quite being able to get the claws into the win. Um, and Ban CV definitely getting a run for their money in this series, which was great to see. Um, I said at the beginning of the cast today that um, I was hoping it wasn't going to be all one-sided matches, and that's definitely not what we've seen. So that's fantastic to see. Absolutely. And Sea Raptor, uh, you have joined us each day today. Starting very early in the morning, you are an absolute hero of the seas, sir. Um, so, how was that last match, especially when uh, with so much riding on it and uh, such a strong performance from Shaft in the third game? How are you feeling about it as the game was going on in game four? It was it was fun to watch, and you could kind of get a sense, kind of part way through, where Shaft had kind of maybe clawed their way back in. Right? You were like, "Oh, this might not." You know, it was getting points were getting a little tight there. But then that encounter with with Sneaky, the Napoli, um, and the Des Moines, and the Shimakaze way over on the two line didn't really... That was pretty messy to watch, wasn't it? Like, and, Sneaky and was going to come Ohio in and do this... putting on a <laughs> clinic, right? Like, like that that encounter alone was kind of like, what is... That's, that that kind of harkens back to what Stats is playing. The map can be a little unpredictable, a little messy. That encounter is a perfect example of it, right? Sneaky's up against this island. He thinks he's going to go in for the ram. Oops, island catches me. Oops, I take more torpedoes. Shima manages to sneak away. I die. I flood out and die. My Ragnars have to come over and clean up the mess. Like, 
that's the kind of thing that Islands of Ice brings to the table. It's fun to watch, but it is maddening to play. I know from a fact, and I know from how many, how many times we've seen teams ban that map, teams are just like, nope, we want none of this, you know? I was I was actually to excited <laughs> to see, I was actually excited to see that Hotspot had made it through. One of the teams mm. had picked Hotspot because, I don't know about on the EU bracket, but on the NA bracket, Hotspot was routinely just banned. Whenever, they, whenever a team could take it out, they were like, nope, we don't want anything to do with it. But yet some of the most entertaining matches that we had on, on the whole tournament were on Hotspot. And game three of this series was as well. That was a fabulous game to watch. Absolutely. A chance for Shaft to come back, make it uh, force a game four and really show that they are no slouches. And there's a reason why they made it to the uh, international grand finals and why they earned that $10,000. So, um, gentlemen, thank you to both of you guys for putting your hard work, your uh, hard time, your expertise into this. It is always an absolute pleasure. And uh, this tournament would not have been what it was without the two of you working so hard. So thank you. And have a great rest of your night while we take a look at the replay. And then we will be having interviews with members of Shaft and Band CB. So, see Raptor Stats Bloke. Thank you, gentlemen. See you, fellas. Thank you. Sarah Painzor. Yes. Yes. Shall we take a look at the minimap, perhaps? Let's do a quick overview of this final match and then let's get to interviewing um, our finalists. Let me yes, my notes. Okay. Let's. <laughs> I made notes. <laughs> I made he notes. made notes. I, 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 look, I, I have made, made notes? loads of notes. Like I've been right. I, I have filled up pages and pages of cue cards. Problem is, he actually can't read his notes because of his eyesight. So no, I just have a got this. No. Uh, Van C V got two quick caps. <laughs> Kimmy bullied. <laughs> B B slow ram. Shaft losing two. It's crap notes to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> right, we have a mini map here to uh, to illustrate. So let's take a look. Yeah, we'll watch the Ban CV two quick caps. It's gonna be great. Like this note number one. Yeah. Right out of the gate, two quick caps for Ban CV. Yeah, and especially here, the difference in how Shaft and Ban CV. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> voice is giving yeah. up. My voice is giving up. What have you learned? Oh, it's uh, it's really an amazing, <laughs> an amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I came today to, to to see some warships, and boy, was I just I boy, boy howdy, was I satisfied with some warships. You know, my voice is it's really good puberty. today. It happened to all of us at some point. <laughs> you're, you're, you you're, doing, you're doing great, man. You've been good all day, despite the voice going out. So I'm sorry. Please tell us more about the sea cup. Yeah, please. <laughs> right, because this Des Moines loses a lot of HP. Yeah, that was. And meant to be Des Moines doesn't. Very simple. <laughs> Would you like me to pick up? Yes. Oh, okay. no, no, make him show. Gentlemen, as the, as the match goes on, <laughs> it looks increasingly clear that Shaft has one opportunity to make it back into this game. That's going to be this sweet, sweet cap starting with the letter A over here on the west side. They need to remove this Stalingrad. To remove the Stalingrad, they need to remove this Kremlin right here. How do you do that? Well, you put an Ohio up its butt. We were waiting. Mr. Conway was screaming in the studio, put shells in that Kremlin's butt. And that's exactly what happens. It's a little slower than we were wanting. But look at this. All of a sudden, look at this map control here. And they still have these kiters out here, which means that they've got essentially a line across the map like this. It's looking very good for Shaft at this point. The question now is who can trade better because uh, Shaft is technically down on HP. So as things go, they start to lose things. They lose the Ohio. The map starts to shift around a little bit. Up here comes the Napoli moving in to handle this Des Moines. We weren't quite sure what he was going to do, but we know that if he can get around on the side of this DM, he can torpedo it. However, the Des Moines has incredible penetration on its AP shells, maybe enough to get past the Napoli's turtle back. What does he do? He beaches himself right in front of the Des Moines, but the Ohio from downtown blaps laps this DM right there, and the Shimakazi's torpedoes do not connect the Napoli, which basically sealed the deal. The Ragnars chased down the Shima, even though he ends up killing the Napoli. And that is all she wrote, folks. That puts Ban CV in the driver's seat to take game four. I think I think that Mr. Conway is 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 giving me sign language that I've once again screwed something up. God bless this man. So I'm going to no, open my three. No, 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 no. But oh, I'm a professional, folks. Don't worry, I have this. We're all technically professionals. Technically, 
Technically. Technically. Literally, no. Um, so now that we've gone through this here, uh, and we've seen how this all worked out, to find out who is in fact the king of the oceans, yes, we have coined that term, king of the oceans. Uh, we actually have the boys. Boss, welcome back. It is on full screen. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm Why not. Why did anybody trust I'm, me with technology? I don't I'm just, understand. I'm just going to give up. Like, the, full okay. screen. Clo clo close the links, things at the side. You know, close the, the list of people. <laughs> what kind of like, oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Bert, I want you to know that was all my fault. It had nothing to do with you. Everything's his fault. <laughs> um... We are joined by Blood Legend from Band CV TWA and Vert from Chef. Gentlemen, you guys just put on four fantastic games. It was a pleasure watching you. I hope that uh, the many thousands and thousands of people who watched you all decided that maybe giving competitive a play a try, if they have it, is the right thing to do because of how well you both did. Um, can we start with our new King of the Oceans champs representative, Blood Legend? Welcome back. Uh, Thank you. I'd love to ask you a basic question like how do you, how does it feel? But um, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys you guys did absolutely incredible work. Um, and and not only that, but uh, how does it feel to have a double EU final? Is that like an extra cherry on top of the cupcake? I mean, it was an extra cherry, but on the other side, it was also kind of the one thing that was daunting there. I mean, I did mention it yesterday. I don't know if you remember that. I would like to play Vor over Shaft exactly for this reason, because you cannot imagine how incredibly awkward the pre-game um, preparation was, because we've played each other so much. We've like, you know, we've trained against each other before this training. We knew each other inside out. So this final was always going to be like awkward to the max. So I'm glad it's over because it was really stressful. But uh, yeah. I'm Kudos curious. to uh, Chef because, I mean, there's a reason we train with these guys so much. They truly deserve to be there on the second spot, and yeah. I, I can't help but notice that you have something interesting in your background there. What might that be over your right shoulder, Blood Legend? I don't know. What might it be? <laughs> <laughs> they look like medals. I'm they just give them out to anyone these days. <laughs> <laughs> they look like God's medals. <laughs> well, um, congratulations to you, Blood Legend. Congratulations Thank to Band CV. You guys did an incredible job. Uh, uh, I hope you all enjoy your well-earned rewards. Let's uh, check in with Vert. Vert, you guys are absolute heroes. Shaft came kind of from out of nowhere into the COTS international scene and absolutely took us to another level of, of gameplay here. Uh, you guys did incredibly well uh, against the, the teams that you went up against throughout COTS internationals. You just blew our minds absolutely and you gave the champs a run for their money. I mean... How do you guys feel about your accomplishment? Well, I'm, I'm feeling really good and I feel like my teammates would say exactly the same. It's, it's been nice to have an opportunity to participate in the grand finals of the international stage. And I'm really happy that the finals were a little bit closer than the regionals. They were still quite one-sided, I'm not gonna lie. But, uh, well, at least we, we put up a little bit of a show so that the spectators could have a little bit of fun watching it. And the last month of preparation, we've been putting so much time every day. And this is not just me, this is literally every single member of the team. We've been spending several hours every day, I would say, vast majority of our free time on training, on uh, coming up with ideas, strategies, testing things in training room. This is definitely not a coincidence that we managed to have a good result in the end. I would have never guessed that we will make it all the way to the finals. And I'm, I'm definitely surprised that we did. This is a very, very positive surprise. I would also say that a big reason why we managed to get that far was the opportunity to train against clans like Pan CV. The fact that we have the best clan in the world on our own server makes it so easy to improve, especially when you iterate over tactics and you get to test them against them and then you get punished over and over and you see that something is not working, so you have to improve on that. And that definitely makes it much easier to to have a solid performance against uh, other clans. Unfortunately, when we do actually get to play against Band CV, uh, well, we we face we face them directly, so it is it is difficult to to put up a good fight. However, I feel like still today we we did fine, and my teammates played really really well. Huge props to them. I don't think I played particularly well today, and there were definitely things that could have been done much better. However. 
over, overall, just summarizing today's performance, I'm still very happy with what, he ha what we have managed to achieve. If, if I may ask a question here from the off, um, when you, because you do a lot of training with each other, are there things that they keep secret and they only bring out on the day, on, on the match like day? Like a Colbert. You, like, 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 like the sneaky Colbert that they've never let you see in trainings and then they kind of go like, oh, look, I have uh, many guns. <laughs> Yeah, I can confirm there was no Colbert showing up in the training. So this was definitely a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> However, can you really be surprised? I imagine, I, I don't know how it looks like in Band TV, but I imagine it's just, you know, a bunch of insane players uh, just sitting together, coming up with some ideas. So you really cannot be surprised that they, and that they come up with ideas like those and they actually work. It wasn't random, it was well thought out and it worked very well. So no surprise that they managed to win that map. Yeah, it Absolutely. was very sporadic, but um, we did tested you know before the games actually started we made sure it's fast to go there and uh yeah it, it worked out brilliantly it was not really it wasn't a plan that we had going on like already two weeks before these games but yeah i mean we do prepare those things and honestly again going into this preparation it was really stressful because you're really trying okay what have we not shown to them it was really difficult to find something and find the adaptations that you need to do um, but this was one thing that really we were confident about and I'm just glad it worked out because uh, imagine being one game up, you put a Colbert there and gets deleted. Like, how do we look? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah. You would have been the next installment of Great Lake. <laughs> yeah, you would have been on the very next installment of Great Lake of Blood. And now Kinemod is a legend for bringing Colbert in the COTS game, so, you know. Certainly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. That's, that's the that's the future of Band CV. Everybody's name will be something legend. That's how it's going to be. <laughs> Kinney Legend is next up. Um, well, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Conway, unless there's something you'd like to ask these fine lads. Uh, no, I, I just want to add. Sorry, I don't. I, I just didn't prepare something with five people on the camera. Uh, but I want to say absolute big congratulations from my side and from from uh, Wargaming side. You rightly deserved it, uh, both of you and your teams. Very well played, and thank you very much for providing us, us with amazing entertainment. And remember, uh, before we can give you your prize money, you do have to sign the, um, what was it, the the uh, I won't give pens or a Belfast agreement. You, this is absolutely critical. <laughs> Already none of that, that prize money goes to buying a Belfast for pens. We, you used to <laughs> be my team captain, Blood Legend. What happened? <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just won a lot of money, so. <laughs> it's <got me. laughs> <laughs> He's gonna go polish those medals in the mirror for a little while. <laughs> Think about he doesn't have a team league medal. Well, um, gentlemen, go have a great rest of your night, day, morning, whatever it happens to be where you are. And uh, uh, thank you very much for participating. And thank you for giving a little extra time when you could be out partying with your boys to come in and uh, chat with us a little bit and let the COTS audience know uh, what it's like for you. So thank you. Thank Thanks. you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's um, it. I think I think there's yeah. some very important things we need to give out before uh, we wrap up our. Yes, look, I was thinking about because we did this for for the EU finals of having like a long list and shouting out uh, like all the people that were involved with this. But because we have the our King of the Sea International, and um, because the list of people that are involved now is so long, it's it's not not quite feasible. Um, so I really quickly want to say from my side a huge huge uh, shout out and thank you to. Um, the whole King of the Sea volunteer team, you know, from the referees to the adjudicators to the um, coordinators to the streamers that helped, you know, like to everybody that is involved with organizing this and making this like a really nicely, uh, smoothly um, organized and run tournament. Thank you very much. Um, you did a fantastic job. Um, thank you very much to all of the teams for showing up and providing us with great entertainment. It was really, really, really good to watch. And we had fantastic games, both through sorry throughout regional finals and uh, internationals and i am very much looking forward to doing this again uh, with uh, king of the c14 um before we uh, leave um i believe our um, awesome moderator sniping cat is giving away a bunch of bonus codes in chat right now to people who are active in chat so um, if you get one congratulations he will uh, he will uh, take a P pm dm you the um appropriate bonus code uh, when you want it um 
what else? A uh, quick league reminder for, about the Twitch drops. There are two Twitch drop campaigns. One of them is broken, unfortunately, but there is a King of the Sea international drops campaign that would have provided you with your King of the Sea container both yesterday and today. Um, remember that you do have to claim it in your Twitch inventory, and remember that you have to relog in game before it shows up. If it is delayed by some, some um, reason, there are a few technical issues on occasion uh, with Twitch drops. Um, please just wait till tomorrow, and if it really doesn't come and you're sure you've claimed it in the inventory, um, please do feel free to reach out to our customer support team with a ticket and we'll get you sorted. Uh, remember the King of the Sea um, themed skin, the Bane of the Sea for North Carolina, will be available to everybody that completed the King of the Sea collection and received at least one drop during King of the Sea 13. There will be a mission that will pop up in your port with, uh, you know, like shortly after the release of update 0.10.10, which is going to be, spoiler alert, next week. Um, completed and you'll get this awesome memento for King of the Sea and hopefully we can make some more cool content for you guys to consume for upcoming iterations. Um, yeah, big, big shout out to um, all the casters today and big shout out to Painzel for making his way all the way to Prague. Shout out to Sea Raptor and to Statsblow for joining us remotely once again and delivering a fantastic cast. And of course also to Darth Henning, uh, who I can see uh, up there um, for our Quang's Eye of the Pond uh, for providing um, some, some great insight during the cast. And uh, thank you to Bogsy for making the way across the pond. Thank you to Seraphis for, you know, like sacrificing what little is left of his teenage voice. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think at least that is the shout outs that I have to do. There's a guy um, next to you who needs a shout out. This, this guy. Uh, yes, we, we do have to quickly show someone. Um, Rita Mel, please, can you come here? Because Rita Mel, one of our King of the Come on, come on, don't be shy. I mean, he is shy. Uh, one of our King of the Sea <laughs> coordinators, he was here in the background making sure everything runs smoothly. Uh, please come, this is your camera. You can, say, <laughs> you can say one or two words, Mr. Adidas. Hello. <laughs> okay, well, that was a very He flew, he flew uh, all the way to Prague for that. Yeah. For that performance. Just so, uh, that. Big shout out to, like I said, all of the people that uh, work uh, with us to make this happen. Um, we are going to uh, go and uh, consume a copious amount of mixed drinks shortly. But now, um, but let's start off with um, with Painzor. Do you have anything you want to say before we part ways with the amazing Twitch chat today. Uh, yeah, when are you crediting me the bell first that you promised me? You didn't eat your vegetables, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I ate everything. No. That you said if you put the vegetables on the plate yeah, but and you, I eat them, I, then you give me a bell first. You true. never put the vegetables on my plate. I eat everything you put on that plate. But you didn't eat them. Uh, <laughs> there was nothing on the plate. I, I, I think it's better if I don't talk. Oh, your voice seems to have recovered. Okay, thank you. Well, <laughs> Bugsy? Recovered is a strong um, word. I, I just want to say personally uh, to all of you watching that I, I really appreciate you uh, giving me the chance to be here to be your Cox host this time. Um, as you know, I recently joined Wargaming, but that was only possible because I had been casting for King of the Sea previously. I had been given the opportunity to join Mr. Conway and Chris Santos remotely for previous COTS, um, and that was one of the things that led me to uh, a new job and a new career path. So. Um, that would not have happened without all of you caring enough to tune in and watch. So um, from me to you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, before last last little bit of uh, thing before we leave, um, in the chat, you will find a link to a survey where you can tell us what you thought of King of the Sea 13, the King of the Sea broadcast, what you would maybe like to see um, for upcoming iterations of this tournament. And uh, we would very much appreciate your input. Um, I think with that being said, we're going to say goodbye. We will, of course, launch a raid um, on an unsuspecting community contributor at the end of this. So if you want to um, enjoy some more World of Warships content, stay tuned. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and we shall catch you all for our regularly scheduled content next week for the update stream um, here on this channel. Thank you very much. And bye-bye. <laughs>